look.
job, ladies and gentlemen. This is the LG Ultra Gear presents Sky Sports Grand Slam 2024, powered by AMD. Here are four teams, as you said, Aurora, Bad News, Crank Group. We've also got, in God's Reign, of course, the Indian Qualified Team and the Gorada Wingsuit Voyage Squad. One of five frags required to close this one down. Getting that bomb down, rotation's coming through from mid, it just doesn't seem like it's happening. Seven lines up two, gets one of them, Kennedy's there for the closer, and that is series done and dusted for Aurora. It's time to get into our second match. Got their AKs out, back sight spray, very awkward on the AK. Cure to the back sight, slow creep in for one good shot. 13 to one, God's reign. What is up ladies and gentlemen, this is day two and the action is just about to begin. Relatively protected, it's the one on three now for Addict. One on one, AHP for the last individual. This is God's Reign take on Aurora, catches those two fantastic headshots. Four versus two situation, Kenzie is caught for one, Barbie is left alone. And there it is, the 13-0, perfect second map for Aurora. Ladies and gentlemen, after we got Swagate, Kai Sports Grand Slam 2024 in Akrit in mid. Passive crossfire is held, play for contacts. Kill found onto one, transfer in the second. Now joins 16 seconds to the clock. Smokes in the way, spray back on the first, the just was right there! And God's Reign make it happen for 13 to 9! This is what we've been waiting for! The Davids versus the Goliath! Either from short, one man goes down, from the rotate, the back line though, was dark, he's not ready for the man. Smokes down, Ken sees the eagle, gets Rev and fired up, and it's all left to R2B2. The Sky Esports Grand Slam, that honour goes to Aurora. Namma Bengaluru! Are you ready? So I think the main uh, idea behind the Sky Esports Masters wasn't to create a big event per se, but it was to create a sustainable ecosystem for the esports organizations of India. I've seen the esports scene in India evolve. Uh, the first gig that I did was 10 years back probably, and that was very small. So this um, is a testament to the fact that esports is growing and especially for the Counter-Strike to come back uh, and how. It was beautiful to be a part of the whole scene and the stage was a beauty to say the least. Jeez, two crore, huh? Yeah, it's a, uh, it's probably the biggest prize pool for Indian Counter Strike ever. It, biggest in South Asia as well. I think this land it being so big, it being the biggest in Indian history, is going to be really, really important for the growth of the scene. Because you know, you come here as a young kid, maybe you come here as a PUBG Mobile fan, or you come here as a fan of a creator, and you see a huge stage with 
your fellow countrymen up there and they're performing in front of these people and they're competing for such a large prize pool. I think that can only inspire these young kids. I think if we are just making new fans with events like this and just inspiring the younger generation, I think it'll only do good for Indian Counter-Strike and you'll see these young kids come up and aim for glory. Everybody in Sky Sports is brothers to each other. We say Shiva bro, Vijay bro, Nyana bro, everybody is being called like this and I think that's like a family we've built. So it started with Shiva bro ideating it, then he bought in Muthu bro, Nyana bro, Vijay bro, all these people started making, uh, joining hands together and built Sky Sports to where we are here. Uh, you have to give props to Shiva for uh, getting such a fabulous team together. Uh, Vijay on the back end was phenomenal. Hari was fantastic. Everybody knows uh, Lucifer. So it really shows the kind of work culture there is in Sky Sports. They bring their boys up and they give them the pedestal uh, to perform. I don't play so many LAN games compared to CSGO. This LAN is my first and big event LAN. I hope this is my starting career. I have given everything to this team. I stick to it. We made a team. Uh, we dominated three years out of like 10 events. We used to win nine events. So that's how my journey has been till now. But when the league announced uh, Sky Sports, uh, a major, I think an upset happened with me. 2021, I got a proper team in which we pros. Like we made a team at that time, मैं डिफॉल्टर जो मैं अभी मार्कोस में खेल रहा है मैं गिल्स मार्कोस किल्सविच जो अभी मेरी टीम में खेल रहा है और फायर्ड अप जो अभी रेवेनेंट में खेल रहा है और ये टीम ने दो साल तक इंडिया में फुल डोमिनेट किया बट टीम में प्लेयर्स के कुछ तो इशू हुए आउटसाइड द गेम इशू के वजह से हम लोग को वो टीम तोड़नी पड़ी और फायर्ड अप ने वो टीम छोड़ दिया हम लोग चार लोगों ने स्टिक किया और हम लोग ने रेवेन को लिया क्योंकि रेवेन का स्किल फायर्ड अप के लेवल का ही है तो हम लोग ने रेवेन को लिया और रेवेन को लेके भी हम लोग दो तीन टूर्नामेंट्स खेल रहे थे वो भी हम लोग जीते उसके बाद था आईएसएफ का क्वालीफायर वो जो हम लोग इंटरनेशनल गए थे तो ये साल था वो रोमानिया में तो हम लोग वो वो क्वालीफायर का फाइनल हार गए और कौन सी टीम से आ रहे फायर अप की टीम से जो हमारी टीम छोड़ के गया था तो फिर फाइनल आ रहे तो फिर हम लोग बहुत सैड थे कि यार मतलब प्लेयर्स परफॉर्म नहीं कर पा रहे और मतलब वो रेज में हमने वो टीम तोड़ दी तो वो टीम का कोर मैं किल्सविच और रेवेन हम लोग ने स्टिक किया और डिफॉल्टर मेगिल्स को हम लोग ने टीम से मतलब हम लोग ने बोला कि तुम लोग के साथ खेलना नहीं है आई एम द आईजीएल फॉर द टीम आई फॉर्म द टीम आई मेड देम हु दे आर और देन आफ्टर गेटिंग केक्ड विदाउट इवन लेटिंग मी नो देन आई टुक अ ब्रेक ऑफ 10 डेज देन आई थॉट शुड आई परस्यू इट एज अ कैरियर और नॉट बिकॉज़ आउट ऑफ नोवेयर हाउ कैन आई फॉर्म अ टीम बिकॉज़ आई हैव बीन प्लेइंग विद दिस गाइस फॉर लास्ट 3 इयर्स देयर वाज अ केमिस्ट्री देयर वाज अ बॉन्डिंग फ्रेंडशिप एवरीथिंग जस्ट शटर्ड अवे there was mcgills he is a big bro to me we have been playing constantly for last 15 years so i told mcgills we will make a team and we will definitely do something then i contacted org started texting them uh, are you interested in sky sports are you making a team finally i got a team marcos gaming uh, they told me that you and mcgills come in you make a team then we started scouting players but it was very difficult to be honest uh, they are not really good teams uh, or players right now to be honest because the three teams that are strong were seven seas godrin and revenant their roster was already formed we picked rider zero cool and ghost we have never played against them we have never played with him fir bhi humne gamble liya humne team form kiya humne start khelna kiya fir jaise ek tech ka lane aaya hum bombay pahunche tech ka lane aaya humne seven seas ko without practice hara diya aur hum event jeet gaye to usme confidence aa gaya ki nahi ye team leke kuch kar sakte hain when you're playing any any sport for that matter not just counter strike you can't give too much respect to your, to your opponent you can respect the fact that they are a good team you can respect the fact that maybe they have a couple of really good players and all of that but you can't walk into a game you can't enter the server thinking you're going to give them that respect you're going to play safe you need to just kind of take the bull by the horns so to speak and just take the fight to them and that's exactly what crazy gamer and uh, god's rain did yesterday मेरा ना हमेशा से एक पॉइंट ऑफ व्यू रहा है कि मैं ना कोई भी ओपोनेंट के सामने खेलूँ मतलब मैं अगर सी एस गो के बेस्ट टीम के सामने भी खेल लूँ ना तो मैं उनको त्रैश समझ के खेलूंगा मेरा एक मानना है कि जब तुमको लगता है ना कि ओपोनेंट अच्छा है और जब तुम रिस्पेक्ट देके खेलते हो तो तुम तुम्हारा नेचुरल गेम खेल ही नहीं सकते जब तुम डर के खेलते हो ना तो तुम खेल ही नहीं सकते गेम तो मेरे को लेजिट फर्क नहीं पड़ता तो मेरे को लगता है कि बाकी टीम्स को तुम लोग से डरना ही चाहिए क्योंकि हम लोग के पास कुछ खोने के लिए है ही नहीं हम लोग वैसा गेम खेलते you know sounding a little cocky some people might say but i love it though those are fighting words honestly i want to see more from him today i wanted to walk into the grand final to just be like yeah it's going to be an easy to go again
Bangalore, are you ready? An indoor stadium in Bangalore, packed after pandemic, and the worldwide audience looking at the action happening here. सबसे बेस्ट थिंग क्या है कि इन्होंने लैंड फाइनल्स बैंगलोर में रखा है और बैंगलोर हम लोग का होम ग्राउंड है क्योंकि गॉड्स एंड बैंगलोर की टीम है नंबर बैंगलोर इट डज मैटर आई लाइक टू शट द क्राउड रुक जा भाई रुक जा इट स्टार्टेड इन इंटरनेट कैफेज अक्रॉस द कंट्री इन इंडिया and obviously transferring into the online tournament being played in the league format you've got to play round robin it's a very very grueling task to have to play that many games to secure enough points to get here and now it's all coming down to one best of three wow sk wow it's part of a dub four kills what a start it is velociraptor in his hands and he needs to rattle the kills quickly. Here's the first run out of ammo. Defuse is coming through the knife pole. He's got it. He got him off the defuse, and there's no time. There's no time for this. The knife has done it. Surely at this point, oh, just about, just about the last tick on the defuse, and Revan secures it. He would need another one here from behind the cage. It will be the position of choice. A crazy game. Right for the fire. Right for the flames. And God's Rain, just like that, flip it back in their favor. Bomb getting planted as well, and this is everything for Revenant Esports. 3v4, the retake is off. And it's looking good for Gump. Nice shot, but he's alone. He's alone in this world. And he is the only remaining player. And it will be God's Rain taking the first map of the grand final. They are one away from calling themselves champions. Here comes this mid fight, a couple of bits, which is being the point for Revenant, and it's Gump that comes out on the double, but the kills are coming back. It's an absolute massacre inside of A main, and the bomb has actually made it out alive. It's gonna get that cool run room timing perfect for Finn. Well done. He's playing with the food right now, and enables to do nothing about this. Time is ticking on, and so will his chances of winning this round. He gives him a slither of a chance right at the end, but not anymore. Finn closes it, and God's Ray will win the pistol on the second map of the grand final. somewhat of a conversation around who is the better opera, who is that player in India that everybody should be getting behind and getting excited about. Is it fired up on his AWP or is it Revan? And I think throughout today it has been Revan that has yep. come out on top of that. And the shot from Revan, the hero for them steps up, the hometown hero delivering its tournament point for God's Ring. Have to make something magical work with Hillswitch. He's gotta find the first crazy with the second before V3. Oh, crazy start, but it's all coming to a close. Months of Counter Strike. Starting with the WAN cafes into the online stage. God's Way and a team that no one predicted to win this competition. But the local heroes in Bangalore are just moments away from lifting the biggest trophy in Indian Counter Strike history. And for Revan, he will confirm his status as one of India's best. God's win have done it! Presenting to you officially your champions of Sky Sports Masters 2023. Give it up for God's Rain! Hello guys, this is the trophy that we have earned the most easily. We have to do some work for this. We have to kill the dog. We have to kill the dog. Let's go. Welcome to Sky Esports.
a leading gaming and esports organization known worldwide for a top-notch tournament IPs and engaging gaming content. With over 100 tournaments and 10 successful esports IPs under our belt, Sky Esports has amassed over 700 million views and 3 billion impressions. But we are more than just numbers. Sky Esports is proud to foster the largest community and content distribution network boasting over 2 million community members and a portfolio of 200 plus gaming creators. But that's not all. Sky Esports is dedicated to bringing the best gaming experiences to audiences worldwide. We ventured into reintroducing Counter-Strike to the Indian esports scene and have successfully hosted global teams. Our flagship tournaments, including Sky Esports Grand Slam, Sky Esports Championship and Sky Esports Masters, have become synonymous with excellence in Counter-Strike. In 2023, Sky Esports made history by hosting India's largest CS LAN event, Sky Esports Masters. And now, in 2024, we have taken it global with closed EU qualifiers. Sky Esports is more than just a name. It's a commitment to elevate the gaming and esports industry to new heights. In the wake of Sky Sports Masters Ignition last year, the tournament has gone global in 2024. It all commenced with the intense EU closed qualifiers, where 12 teams poured their souls into securing a spot in the main event through a grueling single elimination bracket. Fnatic, Forze, Betpoom and VP Prodigy made it to the top four. In the finals, it was Forze vs Betpoom, where Forze emerged victorious with an insane comeback match with a score of 3-2 triumphing over Betboom to clinch both teams' qualification. Following suit were the Indian Open and Closed Qualifiers, where amidst fierce competition, God's Reign, True Rippers, Grey Fox and Marcos Gaming stood out as the top four contenders. In a riveting final showdown, God's Reign orchestrated a stunning comeback sweeping True Rippers with a mesmerizing scoreline of 3-2 to secure their berth in the main event. In the main event, five invited teams Ents, Aurora, OG, Big and Ninjas in Pyjamas were slated to compete. Joining this prestigious lineup are the victors of the EU closed qualifiers, Forze and Betpoom, and the triumphant squad from the Indian qualifiers, God's Reign. This diverse array of talent promises an exhilarating competition as they strive for supremacy on the gaming stage. The Sky Esports Masters 2024 is set to unfold from April 8th to April 14th with a staggering prize pool of 350,000 US dollars up for grabs and the winner gets a direct invite to Sky Esports Championship 2024. Who will emerge as the ultimate champion? Tune into Sky Esports on YouTube and Twitch to find out. Respect from one expect 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 respect respect from one expect respect from one expect respect from one expect respect
I would love to play against Indian guys, Nib and Big. Yeah, that, that's the three teams I would like to play against. It would be fun to play against them. Who are screaming? Because uh, when you win a BO5 with three insane comebacks, it feels uh, it feels like some magic. It feels like not uh, reality. So yeah. I think the biggest opponent is ourselves, and uh, if we play our game good, we are gonna win this tournament. work hard, we give our best and um, we will succeed with it, I'm pretty sure. And just for everyone who's supporting us, our fan club, um, you're the best guys and yeah, go big. I think what's uh, like, what is good for us is that uh, we have a new lineup, a lot uh, more like new energy, everyone is hyped, everyone really wants to play, wants to win. And uh, I mean, there is no, you can't anti disrupt us, right? From uh, the other team's perspective, so they don't know what they're gonna face, they don't know how we're gonna play, and uh, I mean, that's, uh, that could be good for us. I'm usually not thinking about that at all, because like, uh, it not don't really matter how you played in the past. It's really matter how you you will play in the future. Yeah, like things are looking great, and it's just a matter of time before we get into the groove and start winning things. So yeah. Like these tournaments matters a lot. Even if we get get to play like four to six maps, it will be very helpful for us because we are we are playing against a tier one team, and that's never happened in India before. So, yeah, it's crucial for us to gain that experience, and so we can you know use that in the next two to three years and uh, become like them. Welcome back to the Sky Esports Masters, powered by AMD. My name is Dinko, joined by Bly for yet another day of Counter-Strike, and I'm going to have a nice big old sip of 1x bet, Bly. Mm. It's real good. Oh, real yeah. Real good, and I can't wait to get into the action today. Ah, uh, me too, me too. We said goodbye to a few teams already. Yesterday was a winner's matchup, where so we saw the results kind of go the way we expected, and today, once again, is going to be elimination for a couple of these teams. And I love that. I love to see tears and blood and sweat in a sense. Yes, yes. Uh, lots of sweat, lots of blood, lots yeah. of tears coming up today. Yep. And I think today's headline is go big or go home, because it's elimination. Yep. And our first game of the day will, of course, be big versus NIP, and that, or, or rather OG. OG. 
see. Versus NIV. Uh, but I like what they're doing. Yeah, I exactly. really like what they're doing exactly. there with the big thing. You know, you know? The big thing threw me off. But, you know, we're getting OG versus NIP. This is a matchup that I think when you look at the uh, the matchup itself, these are two names we're very familiar with with the yeah. organizations. But they've had some real recent changes that have maybe brought in some more unfamiliar players. And we'll have to see where that territory now lies between the OG and NIP camps. Yeah, it's a bit of an identity crisis, so to speak, for both the teams. Right? Oh, obviously, for OG, uh, very recently just benching their, their, their primary opera, Regali, getting in Modo, who had a bit of a rough start initially, but it's looking pretty solid right now. They have Heavy God, so yes, yeah, still a bit of a question mark with this team, but they did manage to take down Ents in a pretty convincing fashion overall in a best of three series, yeah, so that was did. pretty impressive, yeah. right? And then again, yeah, the, their opponents, NIP, who struggled yesterday. Well, we have got the format, just to remind you of how we got to this point. India Open qualifiers, which we then seen turn into the close qualifiers. Gars Ray made it through. They are now out of the competition. We had EU close qualifiers. We have Forza and Betboom both qualified through there. Forza we will see later on today against Big. And Betboom won yesterday. So they continue in the upper bracket. So it's time to see how some of the other teams are going to shake out. We had to say goodbye to Ents, which was a little surprising. Not easy uh, for Ents. Yeah, fun. not easy for Ents at all. And then we will now say goodbye to one of you know, big or NIP from the invited size or OG as well. So, you know, there's a lot of uh, opportunities here today for some of the qualified teams to, to pull some upsets throughout this. Oh, yeah, absolutely. And I, and I think it's a good opportunity for a lot of these teams to show, you know, what they're, where the trajectory lies right now. As you can take a look at right, OG and NIP at the moment, yeah, the, that's, that's the upcoming matchup we have right here. On the, uh, on the winner bracket finals, we have Aurora and Betboom, the, the CIS Mini Titans, some people might call them, right? Bed Boom with Naphne taking down NIP yesterday very convincingly. Aurora, even though it was a 2 0 against Forza, their first map wasn't easy at all. It was a pretty close affair, but they are right now kind of, you know, vying to make it to the grand finals in an easier fashion. But that lower bracket, Denka, that looks pretty brutal indeed. For Big and Forza, even though you look at it, you like, should be favoring Big. Forza yeah. have been looking pretty plucky. Yeah, they have. They definitely have. And I think that's the sort of dead team syndrome. I think it was uh, rumors dead coming out recently that we've seen yesterday. Yeah. Um, where you see the, the fours are going to be playing with Smuya, I think, was uh, one of the rumors uh, in the future. So, <laughs> excited All right. to see how that is going to go. Um, um, sure. Yeah. Okay. Um, so, yeah, we'll see what the future lies for them. But that will be the second match of the day against Big. But we'll focus in a little bit more on this matchup of NIP versus OG. It's game one of the day. Two organizations everybody is familiar with in the world of Counter-Strike yep. and two teams that have been struggling as of late. OG recently just making a move, getting Regali out, bringing Modo in. He's looked pretty good, I have to say. And for NIP, it's a whole overhaul. Yeah, it's a complete overhaul. Uh, the, the F5 button getting absolutely smashed. And uh, I, I won't lie, the, 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 the initial... Uh, results we saw from this team, you know, they still have a stand-in, by the way. Blue Phoenix is playing from their academy team. He's still a, 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 a temporary stand-in as a fifth. Uh, and, of course, they have Alex, second try uh, for the IGL, for the Iberian IGL, to try and make something work here with his team. Rez surviving the culling, so to speak. Max are, Max are getting upgraded, which I think has worked out pretty great for them so far, at least in a very short term. And Wrinkle, the new addition, you know, with a lot of hype behind him. And Blue Phoenix is doing his job. The problem for me with this team was Dinka coming to this tournament. They were looking pretty solid. They dismantled God's Reign, but yesterday was so lackluster. Yeah, yesterday looked terrible, we have to say. Uh, it did not look very good from NIP standard whatsoever. Uh, and when you've only beaten God's Reign, it doesn't really tell us a whole lot about the, the potential of this roster yet. And I yeah. think that we're going to find out today uh, against this OG squad, who OG, they played really well against Ents. A very impressive performance against Ents coming into the tournament. And I was really impressed for one reason is because Heavy God wasn't even playing well in the game and they were still able to close. Exactly. And I think that that is the one which uh, really stood out to me, right? Map number three was a map where Heavy God really was, I think it was like 5 and 15 or something. And then you had everyone else step up to the plate. We had Nexus looking good. Fiku uh, on the B bomb side of Vertigo comes to mind. He was so uh, influential in OG having a, a pretty solid CT side and making Ents feel super uncomfortable. Again, Vertigo, a map that the core of Ents used to call their best map, right? They used to be one of the best in the world in that map as well so it's not, not a easy feat at all what OG are able to pull off and it, I think it's a good sign you know I don't know if this lineup this, this five-man core is going to continue going ahead but at least from what we saw in that ends game there is some promise here there definitely is some promise moving forward with this team and Modo's AWP man on the CT side especially just uh, unplayable at times throughout that game and outmatched Hades. Uh, I think going up against Wrinkle today, we're going to see that head-to-head -head and, and see how that pans out. But player performance will focus in on Blue Phoenix. The stand-in, as you mentioned, uh, has been serviceable, I would say, over the last few games for NIP. Oh, yeah, for sure. Like, if, if you go if you go to the, the that ancient game,
game they had against Medboom, right? I think Blue Phoenix was the reason why it even got a little closer. He was being, he was getting double kills, multi kills, seemingly every single time towards mid, where he didn't really have too many resources to work with. Like right? he was kind of by himself uh, on an island, getting a lot of opening kills, doing his job. So. As a stand-in coming in, I think uh, also playing some unenviable positions at times, I think it's been doing a pretty solid job overall, Blue Phoenix. Uh, so, you know, there's not much you can be criti critical about him. Nexius, though, coming in for OG, I feel I've been seeing a much better performance coming out from him recently here, right? Ever since uh, the return of Heavy God to this lineup and they, they, they bench Moto, you're looking at this team and I had my questions, you know, Fiku, Nexus, I need to see more from you guys, you can't just be a flash in the pan. And I think while Fiku can still be a little temperamental in his performances, Nexus has just been so consistently good. Doesn't have to drop a 20 kill, 20 bomb every single time. As long as in 15 to 17 scoreline every map, that could be the win condition for OG. Yeah, the, the forgotten one of the NXT generation, uh, Nexus coming out of that academy. And uh, I think, you know, looking forward to, to seeing the rest of the squad of OG, how they're going to be panning out today against the competition you would say are going to give them a good run for their money. But I think we now focus in on who we think is going to win this matchup. And I got to say, man, I, I think it's quite obviously OG. Obviously, OG. I thought you were like, you know, fanboying NIP a little bit yesterday. That was. Yeah, it was. And it was an imperative word. No longer. Fanship ended with NIP yesterday. Great. Uh, lovely meme, but I, uh, that's my favorite. One of my favorite memes ever. Uh, but hopefully their game's not going to be a meme because yesterday the the amount of two v fives and two v fours NIP lost, which is almost unforgivable. Now I don't want to take anything away from their from their opponents. I think they did a good job to kind of, uh, you know, kind of construct some of those rounds yeah. from what was looking uh, like a, a losing effort. But the fact that NIP allowing rounds like that to slip away looked like a complete failure in communication, complete failure in like. Spatial awareness is what's happening in the map as well, and that is a big problem for me because you're building this new team. I know it's still pretty young. I know you have a stand-in, but there was a fundamental failure in how the team was approaching. Now, I don't know if it's gone down to exist or Alex or everyone else in the team not really calming properly, but that does seem like a, a bit of a worrying factor. So I agree with you. OG should be the favorites. Yeah, well, the head-to-head -head is uh, an interesting one. Not really equal on roles, but perhaps closeness in stats, which is why we selected this one. But Fiku versus Wrinkle. Wrinkle yesterday... Wasn't really around, was he? He was not there in the server, no. uh, which is kind of unfortunate, right? Because he's been looking super, super sharp, uh, at least in his earlier games with NIP in his debut. And I feel like him, I, I, it could be the fact that the team as a whole was struggling as well. He's not really feeling super comfortable to shine with the AWP. We know he can hit a lot of shots, but you can clearly see the way they were losing some of his rounds was affecting him mentally as well in the server. So I'm going to just put that as a way as a bad day in the office. Fiku, though. He's really stepped up here for OG. Yeah, the problem is with Fiku, how long is that going to last, right? You know, <laughs> That's always the question, man. You, you get Fiku every now and then. And I think yesterday, yeah, sure, it definitely looked good. Especially on that Vertigo win where we were mentioning Heavy God was struggling. Fiku wasn't. He was out there hitting some big numbers. So uh, definitely exciting to see Fiku playing at this level. Vertigo seems to be a map he's actually quite comfortable on. We've even seen that the RMRs yeah. is pulling off some big clutches. So maybe map dependent. And speaking of, we've got uh, we've got Vertigo right away mm. here for OG. Dude, OG going to be pretty... Um Okay, sorry, I, I thought it was NIP's pick, but yeah, OG picking Vertigo, no surprises there. And gotta remember, th that game they won against Ents was Heavy God having a very, very quiet game on the B-bomb side, even then they got the win, right? So they're going to be very comfortable here in Vertigo. Overpass pick from NIP, as you said, Denko, it was, it's a classic uh, first pick for NIP, but I haven't seen it much yet with this new lineup, and a decider, if you ever go to it, is going to be a classic. No Ancient Anubis to start things off, it's a refreshing change. Yeah, it is a refreshing change. And here. I like those maps, it's yeah. just, it's just so many, many Ancients and Anubises. Yeah, you're right, Inferno to close if we need it. Uh, question is now, I guess, is do we need it, Blair? Do you think we've got it? Um, ooh, this is a tricky one. I, I think this might go Inferno. I, yeah. I, I have a feeling that a little bit of faith in NIP and their overpass. All right, we'll have to see how that overpass pans out. But Vertigo, we're both in agreement. It should be an OG victory coming in here. We'll have to see what NIP can do. Well, will start on that CT side. Um, yeah, I guess the one shining light is Heavy God didn't play so good on Vertigo yesterday. Mm -hmm. um, so maybe there's something there to, to talk about with, with Heavy God. If he has another quiet game and the rest of the OG squad don't step up like they did, this could end up being a little weakness. We'll have to see if it's consistency or not. Yeah, but that's the uh, that's where you will have to sway the way of OG. How many times have we seen Heavy God have an off performance? Yeah, right, true. rarely ever. So we seem to have had that yesterday or day before rather for for the side of OG. I don't think it's going to be happening here again. So I'm expecting to see the Heavy God off old. All I require from the other members of OG is just 
Just so I think motors look much better in day two as well, so motors gonna be fine. As long as Fiku and Nexus continue to do what they're doing, or even like 70% of that, OG definitely have what it takes here. Well that's our map veto. We know the maps we've got ready to go, and now the only thing we need to do is get those players in their seats. I think I think and, they're in server. Ready, ready to get into the action. So yeah. we'll just be a few minutes away from going live for our first game of the day. We're sending some teams home. We, uh, we've done that already. We've sent Ents and we sent Gods for Impacting, but uh, we're going to do some, some more of the goodbyes today. Yeah, and it's kind of crazy how some of the names are, are there, right? We were talking about either saying goodbye to OG, right, or NIP very early. They're going to be the third team to be eliminated yeah. and later on today. It's going to be a Big versus Four. So we're wild big are the big favorites there. You never know, Denko. It can be kind of wild in the world of Counter-Strike. It can be very wild in the world of Counter-Strike. You can see some results that are topsy and turvy. You can see some huge upsets. But uh, I think throughout this tournament, we are both in agreement that, you know, we're not even looking at any of the teams currently in this matchup to win the competition. And obviously with a big performance today, if there's a convincing victory for the li from the likes of OG, then maybe they are more in that conversation. Yeah, it is. Uh, and I feel like just looking at the way the brackets are shaping up right now, it, it does seem like it is going to be either OG in the current form they're playing in against big batting out at the very end. Now, I don't want to discount like Bedboom or Aurora, whoever's going to, you know, drop down from that upper bracket, but things are looking uh, more, a little bit more interesting right now. I think, you know, we've obviously losing Ents early on was a bit of a rough hit, so to speak. Uh, they were the highest rated team coming into this tournament as well. They look a little very, very flat. Hopefully they should be able to bounce back and have a few tournaments ahead of them as well. But yeah, it is shaping up to be a, an interesting uh, tournament here, especially considering the fact that we just have three days left of play. And again, 350,000 smackaroos, man. That's a, that's a lot yeah, of money. Yeah, it's a big prize pool. And uh, obviously coming into an event like this, the, the big number in, in the cash supply is going to attract some of the bigger organizations into the competition. And, you know, as we have mentioned many a time now with the RMR rankings, mm -hmm. uh, the prize pool does play a huge part in qualification and ranking for the major and RMRs. And it can dictate your seeding down the line. So doing well at a tournament like this, uh, at the, in sort of the middle of the year, start of the first half of the year, you can really affect your next major rankings performance as well. And even like, I think it was Richard Lewis yeah, put out a, a bit of a report or something mentioning how there could be no RMR starting next year, yeah, right? It, this yeah. could be kind of like a, a prequel to what could be the reality where there's just tournaments happening throughout the year and teams how to kind of pick and choose which are the ones you want to attend, want to, you know, want to work on just to get this yeah. ranking point. So, yeah, exciting it's times. Kind of like Dota in that way, right? Uh, I'm not too familiar with it, but I, I imagine there's a system that I've been told. They do have the DPC points which you yes. get through, like, events, but those events are actually run by Valve and it's spread across, uh, you know. But this is more of just an open circuit. Oh, full open circuit. You can pick and choose which you want to attend or not, but if you're a team and you want to make sure that you qualify for the next RMR, you're just playing everything you, you can. Well. You, you got to do, do well. well. Uh, yeah, just put up a shut up. Well, we're about 40 seconds away from getting into the action blur. I'm ready to jump in. Why 40 seconds? Why can't it be 14 seconds? I know. Well, I want to get know, in. The time will take on blur, and we can't start the game until we clink our 1x bet mugs together. That is the rule. So that is indeed in my contract. You get ready? Within a, a few 10 seconds, we will clink these mugs together, and then we will be 10 seconds away from the game getting going. Blur. Before we clink our mugs together, what is your final prediction for this game? Uh, I'm just predicting some fun Counter-Strike. OG are going to win 2-0. Uh, okay. 3, 2, 1. The 1x bet prediction right there. Boom. And we are ready to get into the action, ladies and gentlemen. You are here watching the Sky Esports Masters, and this game is underway. Speaking of 1x bet, they don't only make fantastic mugs, but they are also faster, easier, and better over at the 1x bet mobile application, which is waiting for you. So download and register right now. 1x bet, your esports bookmaker. And it's NIP starting on the CT side, OG on the T side. Plenty of utility available for the T's here as well. So we'll see what Fiku and Heavy God have up their sleeves and ready to go for us. It looks like a mid play is the initial call. Yeah, Max with the duallys. Fires loans him towards B. And a much more heavier lean here from the side of NIP. Uh, this is gonna be a bit of there's gonna be a bit of a pressure here for Maxter. He's gonna be routing through CD spawn. He's all alone, Dinko. He's got a strike here with Dewey. Yeah, Maxter with the Julius Ooh. whipping him, but uh, whipped down into submission by Keto and Fiku. And Blue Phoenix left alone to take that headshot on Keto. Fiku climbing over construction. Now they kind of cut rotations off. It's the flank from Rez that could matter the most here in this scenario. When that bomb going down, 
and Rez is looking to arrive up the stairway. Making a lot of noise. Not alone though, he has got Rinko with him. Nexus needs to step up and stand tall from the white box and that's exactly what Nexus will do, motors with him. So it's just Rez and they know exactly where he is, so OG letting this pistol go. I don't think that's going to be happening, but yeah. Just the, just a perfect call coming in from OG. They're going for the, the mid to beat. And uh, unfortunately for uh, for the side of NIP, they had just the one player, Nexus with the dualies, playing aggressive towards B main. I kind of would have liked him to perhaps just given up the B bomb side and try to duke it out towards B stairs. Maybe there was a chance for the retake to come on in, but instead he decided to take the fight from Jen. Unfortunately, not able to find anyone. Instantly taken down by Fiku. And a good start here for OG on their map pick. Again, they have a map where they looked very, very good on against uh, Ents earlier in the tournament where they were able to take them down in their first lower bracket matchup. And uh, for NIP, just going to be a, a bit of a stack here. Just two USBs. We'll disconnect here for, NI uh, for the NIP side of things from reality with just pistols and a P250. As you mentioned, the MAC-10 will be ravenous to try and get a couple of these kills. Bloodthirsty for the weakened opponent. And it's nice and easy for Kido on the first two. Rez will make quick work of him with the P250, but Fiku is there to respond. And the Blue Phoenix is the last remaining player. I don't know why that I've kind of turned him into a, an object. The the Blue Phoenix of the last few It days. does sound better. But it, but but for me, it is, it's like he, he seems like a superhero. Blue Phoenix sounds like a tier a tier two tier two point five DC superhero, or like a superhero in the boys or something. Yeah, fair. Okay. Yeah. All right. Uh, it's like okay, it's the the boys version of the Blue Beetle. Yeah, there we go. We figured it out. Boom. Just a couple of seconds in the workshop for us, Bly, and we've uh, created a new superhero. We're just we're just so much better. Uh. Bit of a bone. Oh, not really a bonus round no, here. No, not really. But it is about to be a bit of a bonus for Keto if he can get around this corner alive. Uh, not going to happen for him. Maxter stands tall. He's not alone. He had some support and distraction, and it's an absolute massacre here for OG's players. They're down to just two players left. MIP start off the round with a 4v2. Stay committed towards this B side of the map. He's going to try and break through this barrier of defense, and they are unable to do so. So reset, realizing there's plenty of time. A lot of time to work with, and yeah, full control here for NIP. Do you have Rez just uh, jump spotting from uh, from the sandbags, or rather the uh, the ramp position? So for OG, the rerouting has to come on in from ladder room. This contact will be made. Nice molly from Wrinkle. There is no need to take this fight. There's no need to offer a two v one duel for OG. So whichever direction they head towards. NIP have it plugged. It's still 45 seconds on the clock here, Dinka. If they're able to manufacture a duel here, get one kill on the right side, there is a chance they could do a bit of damage, but it looks like it's going to be a save call. Yeah, Fiko, Moto, just hanging out. Having a good old time, saving those AK-47s. And you said it was a little bit of a bonus, and I think that word little is the operative word because there's a few players of extra cash left over but keto does not so these ak's being saved over are essential because they can actually drop those weapons over and then buy themselves and they'll have a full purchase of rifles for every keto player. can uh, keto can be dropped by fiku and resting by for themselves yeah, exactly. right? so, so it's going to get all fun. ak's uh, across the board here so boom yeah still a chance to fight for the next round for og with those safe weapons and NIP will be happy that when it comes to the first round where they get rifles in their hands, they're able to pick it up. Keto on still unable to find a webcam <laughs> in the year 2024. The year for Lord 2024. Although, I do love Fiku's uh, webcam placements, literally in his forehead. It's like, right there. It's great. It's such a gamer position. Yeah, it is a real gamer position. I don't think he wants to be, uh, wants to be seen. Here we go, though. NIP getting the first on board, and now... A bomb site going to be Tessa a little bit early. Utility exchange coming in from both the sides. Smoke will be respected by OG. Three players here. An aggression from Rez. I like I like the way he threw that smoke as well, bouncing it off the floor right in front of him, making it look like he wasn't right next to it. Yep. 
but Keto gets the opening. Wrinkle will fall. Are they aware of Reza's position? Yeah, ramp control is taken here for OG, but they decide to relinquish it and just leave one player at the bottom of the scaffolding. Raz's grenade goes... No, actually, it wasn't Alex's grenade, actually. Uh, doing a little bit of damage onto Nexus, but not a whole heap. Raz is in a really strong spot right now. It, it does feel like Nexus should die to Raz from this position if Raz decides to peek and catch him. We'll have to wait and see if he does that. In the meantime, OG are putting more players, more presence through middle. Nexus could actually just dodge Raz entirely. Oh, oh no. no. Oh. He saw him. Did he? I mean, Raz should have seen him, right? Raz should have. Yeah, he's... Maybe the gun barrel made a block to Surely he saw him step out wide. What the hell? Surely he told his teammates. Come on, here we go. He's got his knife out. He knows. He knows. He, knows. he, he has knows. to know. He's yeah. got that kill. He there did see go. him in the all end. Right. He was just waiting for another. And they all the shut down inside the middle. Oh. Unfolds in favor of Alex. That's a triple lineup against Rifles, blood. Three headshots. Clean stuff from Alex. Gonna see Alex having a better performance. I think he's had some really quiet games. He taught Fraglion's God Rain, God's Rain, though, in both the maps, so that's there. All right. But, yeah, I mean, other than that, yeah, uh, he's had some really quiet maps for NIP. Uh, individually speaking, obviously, as the in game leader, not gonna be an easy project for Alex for many different reasons. I mean, we're, we're talking about an in game leader that has spent his entire career speaking Spanish uh, and not always the in game leader, so. Coming into an international project as dysfunctional as the Ninjas in Pajamas is not exactly the, the easiest first international project you've got to go with. There's a lot of caveats, a lot of little details you've got to be able to learn, and uh, it's probably quite a, a difficult process for Alex. I think a lot of, a lot of, uh, a lot of people really underestimate the Ninjas, or rather, under... under oh, oh, it looks like... Oh, never mind, it's just a replay. A, a lot of people don't realize how much of the language issue, the language barrier, can be a problem, right? Like, when you've been playing at the highest level, especially for so long, speaking a particular language for at, at, when you were playing for like uh, almost five or six years or even more than that, it gets imprinted in you when it comes to your game comms in particular. So for you to switch it up to, to English, which isn't even, isn't even a native language, means uh, you can just ask yourselves, you know, our viewers as well, when you try, if English isn't your native language, and a lot for a lot of people when they try to speak English, they first think of the words in your native language and you translate it into English. In Counter-Strike, there's no time for that. And, uh, it has to be instant. Exactly, and, and you're the in-game leader. You're not just a standard player <laughs> exactly. with the squads. So you have to convey ideas very quickly, very succinctly. And then there's even comes the other aspect of the fact that maybe they don't understand your accent all of the time. And and that can be a bit of a problem too. So, yeah, a lot of time to uh, figure it out though for IP, as you mentioned. You, you know, they got a year. So, so you got a Swedish accent, you got the you got a Spanish accent. Israeli. <laughs> all the accents. Ukrainian. I mean... Flames is Israeli, and he can speak English, <laughs> great. Yeah, yeah, I know. They, they do speak fantastic English, of course. But no, but, uh, but he's, he's got that uh, the British oh, yeah, he is little a, accent. Oh, yes, Daniel Jackson. Daniel Jackson, from yes. From the west coast of England. <laughs> I, I was actually in the, uh, in the airport with him, flying up from the major, and he's the funniest guy ever. He's Yo, every so time funny. he sees me, he, he goes, Wa Guan Ji. <laughs> and I'm like, all oh, right, <laughs> not even from England. But Dude, every time he meets me, he's like, hey, it's my favorite Indian. I'm like... <laughs> <laughs> Out of right. 1.5 billion, you're his favorite. That's, uh, you know what? That's actually a big compliment. I'll take that. With this, though, this is looking rough. Heavy Gods found Blue Phoenix. AK picked up. This is such a huge play by Nexius. Well, let's see if Nexius can make this AK-47 work. Bomb going down, getting planted here for OG. That's already a huge result. That's already far too much. But these AKs in the hands of two ravenous players could That's unravel the round entirely for NIP. Another disastrous moment awaits the ninjas in the Sky Esports Masters unless a retake comes through. There's a great position for that Glock down at the bottom of the beast stairs. If Keto just lets Rez walk on by, but oh, Rez is too intelligent. Checks that corner, Keto dies and falls. Time. But Modo is here with the AK, they're still alive and that time is ticking too far gone, OG. We'll surely pick this round up now. Wrinkle sprints to the site. A cap on the defuse. Time is too thin. Despite finding the kill, Wrinkle cannot win the round. And the ninjas in pajamas have an absolute oopsie. That's huge. Just a save AK-47, by the way, Dinko. And yeah. Heavy God, great entry. Nexus pushing in deep, getting the second kill. A little bit of a mistake there from NIP, being a little too passive towards the B-bomb side. And then in the end, Modo with the retrieved AK-47, getting two kills. A huge win for OG, an immediate timeout getting called by NIP. And, the, and these are the rounds that worry me for Nip. Like we saw this yesterday as well, you know, rounds where you're a 2v4, a 2v5, and you can just see it fall apart in front of your eyes. It can't be a good feeling. 
And IP, yeah, they just have too many of these rounds, don't they, where they find themselves in unlosable situations, and then suddenly they lose it. But it uh, unfortunately can't happen against a team like OG today. But the fortunate thing for NIP is they've got plenty of money, so they can buy again. Money's always good, Denko. Yes, money is always good. I love well, money. not always. There's some scenarios where money can be a little bad. How? Where? When, when you use money for the wrong reasons. What are the wrong reasons? I don't see any wrong yeah. reasons in how money can be used. <laughs> I think you're all right, boy. That's an optimistic view of life. Or perhaps a scary view of life. Uh, NIP. Do have the AWP back out for a wrinkle. Kito, charging up. Fast speed play. Very fast speed play here. The Kito is the tip of the spear of OG. The original gangster, though, is dead, and Maxter, with that headshot, will love the fact that the numbers are now even because NIP could consider a retake. The problem is there isn't heaps of utility. There's three smokes, so there, but there's no flashes, and you would like a flash to get around this corner, and you're held back behind some utility at the moment. Yeah, the only way you can do is maybe try and use the smokes to just play distraction, but it, that's just that's just too much up in the air. So, so save yeah. call, lack of money situation here for NIP. Right call coming Forces in. Forces them to concede, and OG will head to four rounds. OG seems to kind of figure out how these setups are towards B. This has been very yeah, good. they've been able to get in quite easily. Very good pathing, very good spacing. Their Keto leading the charge, even though he got taken down. I was next year finding the player on default as well. Good utility deployment as well from OG. Yeah, OG definitely looking comfortable on the T side of Vertigo already, and I mean, we, we highlighted in the pregame about how comfortable OG should be on this map in comparison to that of the Ninjas. They look pretty comfy right now. Despite losing uh, the first couple of buy rounds, they have bounced back, and now for NIP, just because they were able to save all four rifles, will still be able to eke out a buy. Um, Maxer could drop maybe an SMG for Blue Phoenix. That's exactly what it's going to do, an MP9 for Blue Phoenix. Uh, but Wrinkle... With AWP heading towards B, that's the right call. But OG, they're gonna, they're gonna continue to harass here. But it's a bit of a ruse. Definitely a bit of a ruse. Fire will coat the top of ramp. And the OG players will slink their way through the smoke, starting to come in towards this upper bomb side. Alex sits it short. Red's in the middle of the bomb side itself, but it's just the for Master Red. So we know the skill he possesses and what he can do when he gets that weapon going. Wrinkle. Good shot as Keto falls, and at least MIP currently holding that player advantage, looking to try and extend that as Rez and was close to it. Health is now thinned out by Nexus, and with a minute and ten seconds left, is there a lot of time for OG to make this work? Sure, but perhaps not the resources. And that is looking to be the problem right now with Alex peeking in short. One for one will obviously favor MIP at this point. It doesn't look like there's enough unless Nexus gets a little bit distracting inside of that smoke and he's done pretty well to get one more draws it into a 2v3 and now a bomb plant well that's quite huge just a couple of smokes here for the ct so that's something to work with the next is very very low dq has a lot of work to do here but it's tucked in in such a one and done spot dinko and they should clear this Smoke is now fading away in the middle of the bomb site. <gasps> Miku with the lineup and this disadvantageous situation yet again goes in the way of OG. Maxter gets a free kill, but that time is taking. Fiku gives away his life. So Maxter now realizes with a kill hit. available and a smoke down in the middle of the bomb site. He can try and stick it with a last ditch effort, but off the bomb. Not enough time now. Maxter can't win it. OG pull it back again. And for NIP, the nightmare continues. Their sleep paralysis demon is Fiku. Sitting at the end of the bed. <laughs> As someone who does suffer with that face, that close to you. <laughs> well, he does look much nicer than my sleep paralysis, Stephen. I'll tell you that. Yeah. What does yours look like? Oh, uh, dude, don't. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's, I I don't want to scare viewers. I actually have sleep paralysis, and my, and my demon is a static face. That's oh, yeah, I remember you telling me about that. It's like a TV static face. That's actually kind of pretty cool, though. And then it vomits worms into my mouth. Right. Um, you, hey, you put that we, box, do, baby. Do you, wanna, you know, you want to talk about something, Blair? You know, it feels like a therapy sofa here in the, in the studio. It, it, it does feel very uh, therapeutic as well. Did you used to watch TV static? As a child, yeah. yeah. I also used to watch uh, Poltergeist, the movie, which yeah. had a lot of TV static, and a kid touches the screen Sounds and like goes trauma. inside. Sounds like trauma. Yeah, a uh, lot, of, lot of traumas back in the uh, <laughs> 90s, I'll tell you that. Uh, 
We thought the world was gonna end when Y2K came about. It, you know, all computers gonna fail. Yeah, well, I was ready. I was I ready. I, I wrote my will as well. You were even born back then. I wasn't even born. Yeah. yeah, I wrote my will and everything. I had nothing, by the way. I was just a kid, but I still wrote my will. <laughs> you wrote your will. <laughs> oh, I feel so bad. <laughs> and, I, and then eventually, nothing happened. Yeah, yeah. Well, <laughs> I've recorrect that will now, blah. AWP for Wrinkle. That's about the only thing worth talking about for the ninjas, which is probably more than Blair had to give away in his world back in the day. Five to two. OG, l listen, like this is already such a good T side coming in from them. Um, but for NIP that saved AWP in the hands of Wrinkle and Look, I, I watched a couple of games with him when, when he joined NIP. Uh, he was looking super solid. Even against God's Reign, he was just running amok. But then again, there was a caveat, as you pointed out, is against God's Reign. Yesterday, he was looking a little out of sorts. Now, that could be also due to you know a symptom of how the team was struggling overall yesterday. But today, I feel like if they're going to beat OG, we need to see Wrinkle be a little bit more loose, a little bit more unhinged, a little bit more FPL-esque, you know? And, and, and I feel like... Because there's so much trust being trusted into him as... Oh my god. What? <laughs> Five sevens. Kill Excuse coming me? in. Nexius and Keto both dead and there's a little bit more. They don't want to check this. in store and it's going to be Max. There's 5-7 impaling the heavy god. Now with 30 seconds left, Moto gets ever closer to Maxter, who he knows he's there, but dealing with him is a, a different problem altogether. Tech 9 on 5-7 action. And that is a round that OG should have won pretty comfortably. Yeah, I was talking about the AWPs, but the 5-7s clearly... Uh, some That's great, a disaster. Great for, shots, for by the way, from distance as well with a 5-7. Don't really expect to see kills like that. But yeah, a, a, something going the way of NIP because it was looking like OG kind of running away with this so far. And that's actually going to be a kick in the nuts for OG's money. Now, Heavy God's got some cash. But Fiku's got a UMP. Yeah, what's with the umps return? I don't know, man. Like, still feels the same. Yeah. It's, uh, it's got the range. But it doesn't have the... It's cheap, and it's dead. It's not cheap and cheerful. There we go. Still can be retrieved. Oh, grenade is perfect. Lands in the middle of three. Oof. Softens up a couple of the OG players Come here. on, Wrinkle. Yeah, maybe Wrinkle's got a bit more in him with this off. But you don't want to send it into the line standing against pistols, do you? So, got to be there with Rez. Have some rifle support. Really, we can't see another pistol round work out. But I say that. And Nexius, well, his deagle strikes true. Strikes right, Wrinkle. Rez's swing is good, but Heavy God's trade even better, and it's back and forth we go, but it's NIP still ahead on players and still ahead on weapons. Bomb plant will be huge for OG. Maxer looks to deny that. Spam is good, takes Moto off the plant and nearly removes his life, but 55 seconds left, OG retreat, and as soon as those smokes fade away, their chances of making this happen are starting to thin, but an upgrade from that UMP under the M4, thanks to that kill from Keto, the numbers once again draw into an equilibrium, but a kill from Maxter through the smoke has put NIP in a rather comfortable spot now. But a lot of damage being done to the CT economy. They would have liked this round to be much cleaner for the ninjas. And it could still get a little worse for them because Mono is looking for the plant. Gonna push There's together. no HEs to deny the plant itself. So the what? plant is down and they don't push after him and actually do trade it out. But bomb plant, three kills. Pretty expensive round though for IP to have to suffer. Well, true. But also for OG, it was a full investment coming in, right? So now... Uh even with the bomb plan, I don't think the money is going to be necessarily that great either. So it's another opportunity here for NIP to try and stabilize the resources. Nice. Frag there with the, uh, with the dig. Expensive round, but still, a round is a round. In the meantime, all the way over in Chengdu, looks like FaZe got the win. Yeah, never a doubt. Never, never a doubt. Uh, looked like a pretty competitive matchup over there, and... It's good to see Liquid doing good, you know? Yeah. Even if they're not winning some of the bigger ones, at least. Because there was a little bit of a fear that, oh, you know, this team there could be a change early on. Uh-oh. Man, these pistols, you can never have a moment to just sit back and, and unfold uh, a normal round here. But uh, the pistols have a bit of a, a punch to them in this series, it would seem. Tito Siegel. Resist position known. Again, this is just an eco, guys. Just like Tech Nines and Q Deagles in hand. And the AWP retrieve in the hands of Moda, who we've seen can not just do the CT AWPing, but can be pretty lethal with the... Yeah, we've seen that on Vertigo in particular yesterday, right? Just, just out opping Hades, Hades, dude. Yeah. Peeking at his crosshair and just like out opping Hades. Not something you see that often from anyone, honestly. B-Gather coming in. Blue Phoenix at an early nade. 
after the smoke. It's a little too early. They're also they at least spotted a couple of players and already one T close by. Molotov coming in. Great timing. And he's getting harassed. Yeah, a couple of kills here and there. Back and forth between Alex and Moto. But the bomb is now down. And again, another round where LIP suffer a bomb plant. And this is against some weaker guns again. Uh, OG have a chance to try and win this one. Alex coming in, running out of ammo. Now he's in a tough spot. He has to rely on his sidearm instead. And fortunately for Alex, he's quite swift on that USP, but it's Biku with the AWP. Has he got an AWP clutch in him? Nope. He throws that away, goes to the Deagle, and can't take Alex out of the round, who actually, despite having to go to the USB, made it work more than the rifle. So that's another round for NIP. They do recover the retake. OG's money will start to swell now. On plant and back to back rounds. They'll be back to a normal per round. And the scoreline tied up. This is the kind of game we wanted between NIP and OG, and one that we perhaps anticipated. Keto's got a camera. Keto has a camera. He found it. It's a nice camera. It's a nice camera as well. Maybe you heard us talking shit. You yeah, know? he's like, guys, I do have a camera. <laughs> um, I, I think OG that the four v three, they weren't really able to get into real comfortable post man position because of how close uh, the CTs were. But one take nothing away. Good retake coming in there. Alex with a couple of kills as well. But yeah, for OG, that's going to be a big win again. The money's being kept pretty uh, reasonably honest for the side of NIP. Apart from Max, who is in like six k. And yeah, this this round. Be pivotal, obviously for OG. Your map taking one end is in the seven five, or at least get to six. That's bit of a gap there in the tarpaulin. Moto is trying to spot through, but not able to connect on Rise. Double mid setup here for an IP. Maxter close, wrinkle to take initial attention. Like to call a little bait and switch. I want to switch and bait. You get baited and then you get switched. It's kind of like when you maybe meet up with someone who you haven't seen their face. You get baited in and the switch comes in. Yeah, it happens. Get stabbed maybe. Yeah. yeah. Kind of like that. A little bait and switch. Happens to the best of us. 45 seconds remaining in this round. Here we go. Moto taking the lead. He's been able to find a lot of... Oh, what? Oh. Wrinkle. Wrinkle. How is he here? They just pushed all the way down the ladder. They don't expect two players. All right, he's right behind him. That's just the quickest flank of the AWP. Oh. Second shot is perfect on Nexius. And now we're down to just three That's players for OG with 25 seconds left. Look at Max. This is a kill. Heavy goal walks right into him. NIP shut it down. And yeah, great work from NIP. Pretty interesting and ballsy call to go for that mid play. Get down the ladder. It's a risk involved in that, but they work. They worked it out. Some people call it a calculated risk, Denko. And the fact is, what I liked about that was it wasn't just wrinkle. If it was Wrinkle alone, that would have been kind of insane. But he had a, he had a, he had a teammate right next to him as well. Yeah, true. It's a contingency, uh, and yeah, just good timing as well. The peak, thirty seconds remaining on the clock. Yeah, once and they keep getting space, it's like okay, let's keep going. Especially when you start pushing in, like when forty uh, with forty seconds on the clock, you're like mid's empty, and obviously the T's, even a default mid player is going to be like, all right, guys, in forty five seconds we have to gather up for a hit towards A or B, or whatever. They come down the ladder, thirty seconds on the clock, you can see the execute coming in, so the timing could have been better for that particular play. I think this like might be the first time we've actually seen NIP go for a play like this on a buy round. So yeah, it's good to see that kind of play coming in. And you know, we we spoke about Vertigo really favoring OG um, right now, not to be. And another bad game from Heavy God, man. He's not really finding any impact. Three kills, eight deaths. And this is something that we just mentioned before this game started. What if what if Heavy God has another bad game and we aren't seeing maybe it's a the huge step up from Nexius? Maybe it's called the, maybe it's a donk effect. Vertigo. Maybe, maybe it just doesn't work, yeah. work for Heavy Gun. Maybe it gets him a little woozy, a little dizzy. Yeah, I don't like Vertigo. Yeah, oh. no one likes it. Max with that double headshot. It's a six start of the round for the CT side. For the last round of his half, Keto importantly gets one of the trades back, but it's not going to be enough to make OGs feel super comfortable. Mm -hmm. But now you need to consider some of their options now available to them, because it's not easy to play the remainder of the round with Heavy God only on a Deagle. One flash, one molly, no smokes, and you've got to go into the A bomb site. It's almost impossible to see how they get there comfortably. Alex has the chance to shut this down alone. There, there is a role if Alex, you know, may, plays it a little bit too safe, right? Just gives it they up. Get, get out of the bomb. Yeah, side. get out of the bomb. Side, get the bomb down. But as you pointed out, they don't, they don't have any. That's the Molotov used up. Yeah, he'll call for rotation now. Sure. Yep, yep. And there's so much util on the T on the CTs work with two Molotovs, two nades as well. And it's hearing all of this as it slowly creeps on up to the bomb site. Yeah, Alex is just waiting at Tetris. At a flank. Time to strike. Flank is being deployed from Rez. Blue Phoenix is just worried about a mid lurk and trusting Alex to get the job done. But that plant is starting to come in. They've got the bomb plant. They've now got a three versus four. 
And this could actually start to go in favor of OG because, as you mentioned, the only way they lose this is if Alex plays too passive, which he does. And now Rez's flank is detected, so they no longer have the element of surprise that could have assisted them in winning this round. And so OG have done very well to get themselves into a competitive position. Aggression from Wrinkle is not going to work. Kito and Moto having to step up. And now it is just down to Rez in the clutch from the ramp himself. Has to pull off this retake. Doesn't know where Keto's gotten off to, but now will be confirmed by the utility usage. Rez is sticking it. Keto peeks out, and OG flipped the last round of the half back in their favor, despite looking in a far worse position. Great, great round from the from the IGL of OG. Keto three kills there, and yeah, I, I had my trepidation. If Alex plays a little too safe, once a bomb gets planted, despite the fight is a 3v4. Sure, yeah. Personal-wise, once a bomb's in, time is a friend of the T's, right? And I, I, I don't... No, I was a big fan of that. I know he's trying to play two textbook correctly, get the bomb down, go for the retake together. But yeah, I would rather him, you know, maybe call for the for the rotation a little bit faster, maybe be a little bit more disruptive. He had a bit of utility as well to deploy to try and gather some information instead of just play based purely off a little bit of sound there. So yeah, a little bit of a breath of air from uh, the side of OG at the very end as it tied things up six six and this pistol round BQ to a B. Moto, only one on the Jewel Barrettas, but his B fight is certainly the more poignant point because the bomb is currently trying to get into that B bomb site, and all God. they had to do was get through Heavy God, who fails to do much on the defense. So NIP put the bomb down 2v3 as well. It's in favor of them with that mid flank from Blue Phoenix, but that mid play is now eradicated. Wrinkle steps <gasps> up at his stead, and Keto is hitting some shots, man. He's having a good day. He's having a very good day on the server. And now Wrinkle has to peek, and he's confident. He'll win that duel. Keto dies, and NIP have the pistol. It's perfect cross replacement from Wrinkle, but yeah, Keto, a couple of rounds of heavy impact coming out from the yeah. IGL. And a variety of markets and high odds await for you on 1xBet. Place your bets on the website and mobile app right now. 1xBet, good game, well paid. And that's me clinking our uh, one expect uh, cups together. Yes, the mugs the of mugs. one expect the legendary mugs to start the game. Hell yeah! And now USPs and a P250. That's all OG have to play with here. And it's going to be a bit of a max tan farm, isn't it? Yummy, yummy, Ooh, yummy! I money. love the money. Money for days, baby. Look at that! All the kills. All the money, Daddy's little trust fund. Yeah, little trust fund. Wish I had a trust fund, man. That I would make I life a lot easier. One. Yeah. Maybe well. we can make one for our kids someday. Ah, screw that. I'm spending all my money. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's the attitude, Blood. Like, <coughs> yeah. Die imagine. with zero. <laughs> yeah. Die like, with zero. Even if I ever do have a kid, it's like, listen, son, <laughs> start from the bottom. You it's prove yourself. better that way. Yeah. yeah. It build, builds character. Look, exactly. at, look, look at all these kids nowadays, you know, all the Kadarshians and stuff. Look, look at how they are Just because they had, like, yeah. trust and money. Yeah, well, you know, making their own music, getting all the get a whole production studio. Kind of, yeah, it sucks for them. It sucks for them. <laughs> <laughs> you don't no, you know, it sucks for the rest of the world that we have to yeah, deal with that. Yeah, know? that's true. Well, MIP keeping the Mac 10s is a bit of a bonus. It will be the purchase now coming in from OG. If you guys want a smooth user experience, scan that one expect QR code on screen to download the app. And we'll get into the action now. Plenty of utility here for the CT side. And uh, I'm interested to see how OG is going to fare here on the defense. With NIP having the idyllic start, it would get even better if they are able to win a round with two MAC-10s and Galil still in play. Heavy God. Ooh, good start. He's got one. Traded, though. He's, he's really only going one for one. Yes, yeah, able to get a dink on the res, however. Yeah, that's uh, good. That should be information conveyed to his team. But look at how forward the positioning is from the T's towards ramp. And Nexius. He does have his team in the form of uh, Kido. Getting harassed, though. Harassment. Digital harassment. Get the bully hunters. That was a thing. Couldn't believe that was a thing. I think someone tried to re return to, like, one of those programs is restarted. You know what? I'd happily be a part of it. I'll be the bully. <laughs> You'll be the problem. <laughs> no, that's a good problem. No, don't, 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 okay, guys, it's all fun and games. Don't be a bully. You know, don't be, nice. be a bully. Yeah, you Except to your teammate who doesn't listen to you in a, in a, in a yeah. game. Bully him. Here we go. I like the I like the double push coming in here. Nexius taking over his teammate. But they're not really forging any further ahead. Forty seconds on the clock. Forty seconds. Not a lot of time. Let's get a res. 
Taking that kill up through short. Time is running thin now. Modo. That he could really unravel this round now for the ninjas who try and get closer, but Modo can shot. Kido chimes in. And OG win their first real round here on the CT side. Yeah, no utility remaining there for for OG to try and isolate uh their path into the bomb side, right? Having to just go on in and having two two CTs to a short. If Rez was able to land a headshot onto Nexius, maybe things would have been different, but too many angles to worry about and too many CTs on that side. They had a perfect read. And OG, they get the seventh. Still an IP with a one round lead here. Yeah, it's a close game. I think we're going to see a close game all the way through this half. Uh, you would imagine it's going to be quite back and forth. We'll see if NIP are able to extend into nine in this territory. Otherwise, OG will tie the game up. No AWP spotted on the CT side just yet, but Wrinkle will have a go with his on the attack. Looking to try and open things up, but Wrinkle's instantly dead by Heavy God. And Heavy God this time wasn't alone. He had Fiku with him, and, and none of the defensive players die. So it's a perfect start for OG to take a bit more of a calculated risk and go for aggression on the beast there to take that opening fight. And it's put NIP in a tough spot now because you've got a, the whole round remaining. You've lost your AWP, and you have two-player deficit to figure out. Creeping on up. And again, a little bit of a passive hole from the defenders, Nexius. Let's be careful not to be caught out of position. And yeah, it does look like it's going to be a retake play from OG, and honestly, it's completely understandable here. Oh, timing there. I'm not expecting Alex to be so close by, so a 4v3 bomb should be planted. Bomb looking to be planted. Oh, nice volley. Molotov will clear out default, force them back. And with 35 seconds remaining in this round, And it's now looking like OG are confirmed to win it because the bomb hasn't even been planted for NIP. The one saving grace is they don't have any sort of lethal utility. There's no mollies, there's no grenades to land on top of default. So the plant will come through holding on to it. And watching it tick on over that becomes a difficult part because Maxter goes one for one and that does now leave Alex in a 1v3 clutch, and they know exactly where he is. He doesn't have any flashes to help him. Oh. Smoke deployed onto the bomb, it'll spread eventually, and it doesn't even matter because they just beat, they win the fight, and OG will tie up the scoreline. From a double opener into a bomb plant and a 1v3 closer, too bad for Ninjas in Pajamas. It could have been a lot worse for them, but regardless, it is OG who are now even. Yeah, and keeping three players alive as well. They're winning these rounds in a reasonably convincing fashion. But, uh, actually, I take that back, you know. The money's still not that good. Again, the curse of the CD side, economy uh, always being a problem. Couple of AKs, though, looking good. I did see a round earlier with the, with the phase game where uh, the T's, they won uh, a full, you know, just basically with an AWP and pistols, and had four A1s on the T side with an AWP, which was the, uh, <laughs> something interesting. Uh, even crazy Counter-Strike all over the show these uh, days. Oh. That's a physical start here for Alex, right through Nexus. Sandbags is a position Keto has decided to take in this round, and he's not seen too much commit in towards A yet. So that's information gathered for the defense of OG. Despite losing the player, at least they've got plenty of information. They can stay committed towards B. I, I thought they would have, but it's no one B. I think they're worried about short. I think they're worried that many players are about to attack A through short. And so Heavy God's leaning over there, and that has opened up the B bomb site. And this turns out to be a great call for Alex. The good thing is they do have a little bit of utility here to deploy, so they're going to be deploying, and that should be to tell that Heavy God's immediately re repositioning himself. utility here, too, so if he gets early info, he can maybe deploy that smoke and try and block them and delay them. Oh. Grenade's going to be good, but it's not going to do enough nah. damage. Actually, it doesn't even damage any of them. It looked like it was going to land right on top of their heads. Moto with the AWP. Yeah, that's the, that's the one change up here, isn't it? Missed shot, so tough one to hit, just a pinball in front of him. Not able to have pinpoint accuracy. Second shot is even better, though, and a nice shot for Rez to punish the whack-a-mole. And now it is just Wrinkle left in the clutch alone and it rotations in in time. So OG able to figure it out, piece it together, and now head into the lead on Vertigo. Have you got finally looking a little bit better there? Yeah, he's looking he's looking better for sure. He was uh was been a bit worrying the past couple of maps where he seemed to have kind of disappeared from the server. And he did have a few a little bit of health issues as well, so hopefully that's not something that's continuing to plague him. A player I've definitely enjoyed watching, especially during their uh, the major online qualifier run. I think they were looking very, very solid indeed, and unfortunately falling in the at the RMR. Here we go. Little purchase for an IP. Heavy guard. 
and Fiku. I am actually enjoying watching a heavy gun Fiku combo towards a B bomb site. Yeah, it's cool. They, uh, I think they addressed it pretty early on, which is good because it was just heavy guard going for that more aggressive and yeah. stance down the stairway, and it wasn't too Boom. effective on his own. But getting better now. He has the insurance policy of Fiku. Didn't need it this round. Heavy guard instantly annihilates his opponent. Keto? I don't know about that Keto. Yeah, I don't think that's necessary, and it has been punished. Yeah, that's an unnecessary uh, death for the CTs. Utility going to be deployed. It's and now, OG oh might have to go for the retake. Now, now, now the thing which is going to be helping them out is that, oh, that's a great Molotov. That's a beautiful Molotov to flush out Wrinkle, getting the man advantage back in the favor of OG. Yeah, Modo, good shot. Hasn't been that sort of standout performance from Modo we've seen prior against Ants, but maybe he can get going now on the CT side in the later stages of Vertigo. Three players left here for the Ninjas and 40 seconds remain in the round. It's going to be a tough scenario to pull this one off, but Alex must try and combine the remaining pieces and piece it all together. Smoke out to the left side. will allow a couple of his teammates to come through short and try and get closer to the site for the bomb plant, but going up the ramp itself, a death sentence with Moto's vantage point, but Scott is sent out a little too prematurely, and that does One allow made. Ninjas in pajamas to try and get the bomb down, and bomb down, but Alex follows, and Fiku is good for another, so it is looking very good for OG retake. It's now just Rez, and he is overrun, overwhelmed, and OG with 10, so it's starting to kick into gear now for the defense of OG. They are looking like they are in complete control. Man, Fiku's just staring into my soul at this point. Hey, what's up, Fuku? Fiku? Jendobre. Fuku. Fiku. Jendobre, yeah. yeah. I feel like Poland's my second home at this point. Yeah, I, it, I've been there for so too. long. Yeah, we're Polish shaped down inside. I do like, I do love their pierogies. Yes, them Polski. Them Polski. Polska good home. Uh, ten to eight for OG, and that was a very nice retake, honestly. And they made uh, NIP feel so uncomfortable there. I loved how they're using utility to kind of flush him out from post on positions early on, like we saw how Moto was able to get the kill onto Wrinkle as well earlier on. And right now, it is a bit of half investment, bomb getting planted, allows a little bit of extra cash. Alex with the Galil, rest them on Deagles, and they shoot, have... Shoot, Maxter, go for it. Bang! Do it. That is not normally. If he actually does it, it would be so <laughs> insane. Be so cool. <laughs> so insane. <laughs> I want to say holding for uh, Plotter coming into the ladder room, but... Uh, right now, it does not look pretty for NIP, and it could get a little worse with this Keto jump spotting. Grenade is about to soften them up. A little bit of softening and melting now as Nexius peeks with the right bullet. He's not alone, he's got Keto, remember? They're doing as much as they can to deter NIP from even thinking about taking ramp control. Unfortunately uh, for OG, some of the health has been taken off of Keto, so they can't stay in that very committed position. But I think they'd be happy having the one player advantage already in the grenade. Oh my god, it's Oof. BP. Very heavy onto Maxter. Yeah, he's very lucky to be even be alive here. But yeah, this looks very unlikely. The fact that they have just a couple of smokes is going to be the uh, the default smokes coming in here. But the thing is, for OG, they have so much utility to delay this plant, to buy time. The time will be bought, and, and the grenades. grenades will be sent, and Maxter, ooh, very lucky to take a step back. Very fortunate that he uh, decided to seconds. make the move when he did, but yeah, limited time, but the utility is great. Uh, and Lodo another. has another, and that always going to go down, burn away Rez, and now they're re uh, extra screwed at this point. You and want to I die now, though. Nine seconds, yeah, you don't want to die oh. after the time. Couple of shots coming in, they're doing their best, and they will all die before the time runs out. 11 rounds for OG. So we're now in that territory play where NIP have their last real buy. If they lose this, the game's over on Vertigo. I agree with you there. Thank you. We're polite that ways. Here comes the buy. Wrinkles AWP. AK is out. And the last legs of NIP to stand on. Again, right, it's it's uh, it's really cool to see for OG despite Heavy God. Yeah, he had a couple of good moments, but sure. he's, he's been having a quiet game again. But it's like we saw Nexus being on a CD side being annoying to a short, even though he had a quiet T side. Fiku's being really good. 
Keto has been really, really good as well, despite a couple of rounds where you're like, oh, Keto, why are you doing this? And Modo, sure, it's, it's nothing too spectacular from any of the players, but everyone's doing their job, and it feels like that's enough for OG, and that's always a good sign. Because come the next couple of maps, maybe these are the maps where Heavy God feels a little bit more comfortable, where he's more... He, he has more space to take fights. He seems like a sort of player who likes going the direction of his teammate, of his opposition, and kind of dictating the fights he wants to take, which isn't the sort of place you can do on Vertigo. Dong comes to mind, for example, right? So maybe it could be the map, which is why he's not feeling super comfortable here. As Wrinkle, ooh, big chunk down at 12 so early already, and Fiku's going to find Maxter, and this is looking grim, Dinko. Yeah, it's looking very grim NIP, down a player already, but here comes their last ditch effort here in round 20. It's going to be a commitment into Heavy God, who we've criticized to uh, maybe be in an Ein Curry. He doesn't get a single kill, but fortunately enough, there was a team kill in the midst of that chaos, and it does assist OG in trying to close this one out. 4v3 rotation is in. Eyes are on the prize, and Wrinkle, his eyes are set on Modo. We'll take him out of the round. What a shot from Fiku. And now NIP are forced back down the stairway yet again. A little crazy from Fiku. Yeah. And a 2v2 now off the back of that maneuver. But Nexius is in a powerful position. Keto even better, and Nexius helps to close it. OG up to 12 rounds. Money shot for NIP with no bomb plant. And OG look like they're in pole position to close out map one. Yeah, they're looking very, very clean indeed. Good stuff. And again, Fiku's, he does so much on his CT side of, of Vertigo, right? He's, he's a mid player, he's a window player. He's sometimes a player playing or leading early towards B to help out Heavy God. And if Heavy God goes down, which unfortunately has been the case many, many a time, he's always good for two kills or at least staying alive or delaying the plan from taking place. So great work with Fiku once again. 12 and 8, OG, four opportunities to take us very quickly, very swiftly indeed, to map number two, which is the pick coming in from the Ninjas. That is, of course, Overpass. The Ninjas on the overpass. I think they are going to have to see that very soon, probably sooner than they would have liked. As now they go into the A bomb site. It's quite a passive setup from OG, one that they are not ready for. And NIP, I think they've won the round now. Blood, they were two very easy entries. Uh, OG weren't really ready for an A play. Yeah, they've been, they've been way more. Uh slower in their approach towards A, so many t so many a time that uh, OG caught napping a little bit, but yeah. I think OG is going to be still pretty comfortable with this. You can take a look at the, the money as well. Nexus on $6,250. We have Keto, it's kind of a bit low, but Moto or Heavy God can just drop him a rifle, or even Fiku for that matter, so. All good in the hood here for the side of OG as Nip will find their ninth. It was pretty competitive. It's just the the past few CT rounds which OG were able to do a very good job keeping them at bay, especially in the A bomb site. If that hadn't happened, honestly, I wouldn't be too surprised if NIP were able to, you know, I would not necessarily get the lead, but it could have been a much more closer affair here. Grenade on to Rez at the end, but uh, another round for Ninjas. Rez and Alex both die. Um, well, you don't want to die to the bomb. And they did. So that's two rebuys they've got to go with. And sure, it won't matter for this round. But if you really do want to pull the comeback, you want to make sure you has, have as much money as possible throughout. So OG, they've got to buy right back. So it's not going to get any easier for NIP. And I think that was kind of a wake-up call for OG. I don't think you're going to get away with another round like that where you just dry walk into the A-bomb site, catch two CTs. Not going to happen again. In their hands, right? yep. So it's not, gonna, it's not a sign that things are better for NIP, but uh, it certainly is at least another round to keep them afloat. Some life support, perhaps. Yeah, going back to the default. And this is where they haven't really been finding much success, right? The first time we're going to be going for this Oop, boost. I always flinch physically when I hear someone drop off a boost unintentionally. Yeah, it like makes you cringe a little it's bit. Like, oh, that's like it. The dismount. All right, B lean. Yeah, B look lean at the setup. It's the Fiku Heavy God setup you love so much, Bla. Yeah, and you have Modo nearby as well. They should have. Yeah, they do have a player towards mid, and he's going to activate the moment the the hit comes on in. Are they going to use a util? They have a lot of utility to work with Molotov, nades, which can flush at Fiku and have you got from these positions. Yeah, it does feel like the utility is the key here for NIP to be able to make this happen for them. So first Molly will force Fiku back. Yeah. That has already disrupted the setup. Have you got in a bit of an off angle though? 
Yeah, but he can be cleared if anyone swings out wide. It doesn't feel like it's a multi-kill position unless he's immediately accurate with the first headshot. He usually is very accurate. Fiku, making a lot of noise, being a distraction. Blinded. Oh, Heavy Guard can see. Be detected as well. So now, oh, but they run fast. They don't check. Heavy Guard good for one. But that's it. Fiku dies as well. And MIP do have two entries. This time on the B bomb side. Keto on the rotation. Not a single kill from him from the generators. And now they've got a generator round win off the back of Nexius and Moto alone. Or it is more likely the save call because a 2v4 recovery ain't going to be the likely scenario. So they go back, they say, for a rainy day. We're now looking at 12-10. So LIP are back into this game again and are two round wins away from drawing us into overtime into the bonus rounds on Vertigo. Great utility usage from NIP there. I like the fact that they didn't just go for a creep approach. If they did, I feel like they would have just been slaughtered by uh, Fiku and Heavy God's uh, yeah. crossfire right there. But good Molotov to flush out Fiku. And then we had the uh, the nades and the flashes raining in the direction of uh, Heavy God forcing him out from his p position, being spotted out. And even though he gets to kill, traded immediately. Now, as long as Modo and Nexus can hold on to these two rifles, they still have a buy on the cards. All right, Modo can drop for... Yeah, they both can drop a couple of rifles. I think it was, uh, I think it was Keto could buy for himself. So, yep, yeah, all good in the hood. The problem is, yeah, if he could buy for himself, Heavy God can be dropped a rifle by Nexius. Moto can drop one. They're just going to go for the save here. All right, bit of a timeout getting called. It's a hard call to make as well, right, for OG, because if you go for this full investment right now and you lose and you don't save any weapons, your money's going to be in the bin come the final round of regulation. But if you go for a save here, which kind of makes sense, and you will have to buy for the final round if you, if you lose it, but do you want to push it all the way to the final end? It's a, it's a hard call to make if you're OG. Yeah, this is rough because it really looked fantastic for OG, and then you have that one round where NIP... Make a contact play up through the A-bomb site. The 1x bet odds favoring the ninjas right now, which is kind of crazy. But, uh, yeah, that one round where they dry walk into A, kind of catch Nexius off guard. The team play wasn't really on point on the A-bomb site. It, it might have actually just spelled disaster here for OG on Vertigo. It's not over yet. Alex marshalling the troops. Heavy guard as well, getting some claps going, trying to rally the boys to get them back into this. Close the game. Listen, man, if Heavy God rallies me, I'll, I will run in through a wall He's if I have god. to. He's my god. He's my Heavy God. And if he asks me to lay down the law, I will indeed. I will be his hammer. I will be his anvil. Here we go. The buy is going to be coming on in. They still have a little bit of buffer cash on Nexus and uh, Heavy God to work with. There's still not a lot of money. So this kill is everything, and Modo is going to get the first. Yeah, you love to see that from Modo. Got his mojo back. As he goes for that short peek, and now OG given the opening kill. It's something they have really struggled with over the last two rounds at least. But an opening that isn't traded. And that is the detail that will make this a lot better for OG at the moment. The ninjas in pajamas. Sitting back with just four players. Got to try and figure out how to piece it all together for the T side here to push towards 11. Slip up here results in a loss on Vertigo. Now we'll head to Overpass. We'll hop on that train. And next is going for the jiggle. Smoke it's down fast. out of the site. It's quick. It's explosive. From the ninjas in pajamas, they're already by the scope of Moto. Kido's dead. Nexius, look at him. He's undetected. That's an easy kill for Nexius. Finally taken out, and Moto's dead too. I cannot believe NIP have flipped this one back. Not only did they get those kills, but they are now ahead on players into the post plant. This is looking good for the ninjas. That was so fast from OG. Just sorry, from NIP. Just speeding up to the site. And despite Nexius trying to be a little bit of a, a sneaky little rat in the smoke, just good for one. And Moto, he needed more than just a one kill they found earlier on. Getting taken down. And for OG, these three, these two save rifles are going to be very, very crucial. And no AWP for Moto, Dinko. That's something we had to keep an eye on. Now, Nexius will have enough money for a buy for himself. Moto and Keto, ugh, I, I guess Heavy God, yeah, Heavy God can, can drop one, the other one might have to suffice with an SMG or for mass. It's not an ideal scenario for NIP, though, one round away from tying things up and yeah. taking us to overtime. Overtime, bonus rounds, OG, 
I mean, what more can you ask for? You had the opening kill there. You had quite a, a good setup in the start of the A bomb site. And it wasn't enough to close it. This mm. A side has become the weakness. This A side really does look like it's the weakness that NIP are able to exploit. Moto A1. Peek as well. Thank you. So that's a little bit of money in the bank. The utility will be purchased. There we go. Got kits as well. Yeah, all things considered, couldn't be uh, could have been worse, honestly. The buy is pretty, still pretty solid. That's for NIP. A perfect opportunity to give us the bonus rounds. There's a wrinkle. This time around towards mid. Wrinkle out middle. Gonna be a wrinkle in time, perhaps. Siku. Alex with the headshot. Smacks her on the follow-up. The mid setup is destroyed for OG. And Heavy God comes to try and beat our salvation. But he is traded out by Maxter. And now we are looking at a two versus three favoring that of NIP. And Blue Phoenix so deep inside of the B bomb site. He's all the way at core. He doesn't know that, but it's a fake. He goes into the fight. The bomb is going elsewhere. But maybe it no, might come back. Be. It's coming to the B bomb site. So it is uh, It is going to be a finish at B. And it looks like overtime is uh, surely locked in now. Oh, that's next year. Nope, not nope. going to happen. 12 to 12, overtime it is. I thought it was going to go back to the A bomb site considering... Uh, the A ramp look heard the rotation coming in from the A defender, but yeah. Oh, Alex is looking very animated there. Hopefully it's words of uh, joy and affirmation. A little bit quieter on the side of the OG camp, however. They've kind of let this one slip by, Dinko. It looked like this was a pretty much a done deal. It was 12 and 8, four map points, yeah. allowing NIP to claw themselves, claw their way back into this, and now everything's kind of reset. Everything's... Uh, you let this one go to overpass, who knows? It, it might even be a victory for NIP coming in, so OG need to be careful. They don't let this one slip if they do. About to be a rough old time for them. Money's reset, though. Everybody is back to their choice weapon. Moto has his all back. You mentioned that in the previous round. He didn't have it for the final round of regulation. Mm -hmm. And once again, have the resources to purchase. And the Sky Esports Masters delivers yet another overtime game. This time, it's Heavy God to open up the affairs. And it's Blue Phoenix that has fallen by the wayside. Blue Phoenix is just such a superhero name. <laughs> it really is superhero, <laughs> isn't it? Heavy God versus Blue Phoenix. And the Komodo Dragon himself. B lean again, Dinko. Yeah. It's a B finish. Well, be beautiful, though. They're going to deal with the player at the back of the quad. Heavy God, Molotov there in his spot, so he is able to chill out for the time being. Is the tip of his gun showing a little bit? Maybe. He needs to be kind of careful about that, and Fiku is here with him. Now he's doing construction, and they must now construct a way to get into the round on IV, because Heavy God is about to beat him, about to destroy them. A lot of damage to Floyd. Fiku dies at the generators. Oh, grenade. Going to land on his mark, and Alex is given just a second longer in this world before OG Get a 13th round. They wanted that a little bit earlier, but uh, they get it in overtime at least. All the utility they deployed, Dinko. That's the one place they needed to molly, which is where Heavy God was playing, and they weren't able. They didn't quite uh, make him feel as, in, as uncomfortable there. And despite Wrinkle holding the angle, Heavy God just peeks into it, gets a kill. Good hold from Fiku and Heavy God. And you got to remember, it was predicated off, heavy, predicated off Heavy God getting the opening kill as well. So, G. Gonna be uh, a little annoyed they weren't able to get this round in regulation, but still a good start here on overtime. Pace, pace from Rez. A lot of pace from Rez indeed in Modo. Another big shot, Rez impaled. Sent to the Shadow Realm. OG have got bottom B control with Heavy God's advanced movements as he goes all the way down the stairway to hold from the generator at the bottom. And he's gonna be waiting for Blue Phoenix. Heavy God's headshot is. Exactly what they ordered. And now they're down up to three players here on IP. It's really difficult to see a world in which they recover this round now. It's as soon as, soon as OG got into overtime, man, and got all the resources back, uh, they, they're right back to winning ways. Wrinkle. Wrinkle, wrinkle, wrinkle. With a shot. 
Good. Moto Jet. Second shot <gasps> nearly connects, but Kido is able to take him out. And now the reply from Maxter is essential in middle. This is doable. Yeah, it is doable. Suddenly at a two versus three, and obviously time is certainly of the essence. Five seconds left in the round. Kido, again, dodging. Well, this time missing a shot of his own to the AWP. 35 seconds left. Maxter's still in mid and trying to get Alex to join him. Yeah, the... Oh, in the A play, because they want to try and split this together. And Alex staying committed towards A might be the right call here. If the Spanish in-game leader can get himself into this A bomb site, maybe, just maybe, the Midler can come in at the right time. But Keto stays very patient. Alex will eventually take out one of those A defenders and is a retake scenario because Alex is able to plant the bomb, but there's a flank coming in. And Alex is going to be worried about Keto. Perhaps he'll neglect the fact there could be a flank. And Heavy God is nimble on his toes. He's quick on this flank around the backside. And this should be taking Alex out of the round in just a moment. Heavy God from short. Alex even considered and did some damage. But Heavy God is more accurate. And therefore, OG will win the round. Yeah, a little scary there. Nice play from Alex to at least even get the bomb done, because that looked like an impossibility a it few did, yeah. seconds ago. Well, what a start to this game it's been, Dinko. Like, all the rounds. All the happy rounds. Now we're getting to the point where OG once again are looking like the more likely team to close Vertigo. No op for the ninjas. Wrinkle will play with a Galil. Double setup inside of this B bomb site. We were talking about Fiku and Heavy God. Now it's Modo and Heavy God over on this side of the map. Blue Phoenix is keeping his head tucked down behind those steps. Doesn't want to be detected by the AWP. <laughs> Almost looks like you can see it with the X ray, huh? Yeah. So you cannot. Neither of the players spotting each other out. The opening kill once again goes in the way of OG. This time over towards A. It is Keto to bring down Wrinkle. And maybe Keto can get even more from this maneuver. Alex rips him apart, though. The in-game leader on in-game leader action. And one favor, the Spaniard. Still paranoid about another player towards uh, the top. And now Modo. All the way from Beeble. They'd be expecting the op to have rotated this quickly so far. Modo. He loves a little re-aggression in this stage of the round. It's Ooh. short. It could be very effective. It also could be very risky. Blue Phoenix takes down Heavy God. Commitment forward from Moto is caught by Alex. 27 seconds. NIP in a 4v2. Next case to go big here. He has been spotted out. You can see utility getting deployed. Figu's here as well. Backup has arrived. Great flash. Bomb yet to be planted. 15 seconds down. Smoke's going to dissipate on the right hand side, but Blue oh Phoenix <laughs> has spotted them from behind. Good job from, uh, from, from the side of NIP to be real patient there. Patient there. Win to Blue Phoenix for his flank, but that got a little scary. Yeah, it did get a little scary, but uh, winning that last round is fantastic for NIP because it now opens up the competition once again here in overtime because it was starting to look like OG were about to edge out Vertigo. But as soon as you think NIP are dead, as soon as you think they're out of it, there's always a little bit of life left in them. Overtime, number one, half two, ready to begin. AWP for Wrinkle, once re again returns to his hands. An aggressive flight from Wrinkle, stopped by Modo, and that OG opener, once again available, but a trade against Keto from Rez. I can't remember, uh, the T side from OG wasn't one which really gave us a, very, a lot of confidence. No, it was not. And Alex had, you know, we talk about some of the weaker games he's had with NIP. One hell of a showing here against OG at the moment. 25 kills, top fragging for his team. Maxter closely follows in at 20. And Keto top fragging for his team. Yeah, true. It's a, it's a great game for the IGLs at the moment. The more experienced players. Will we forward the group up towards A, a minute on the clock. Now, we did see NIP go for these mid-pushes down ladder around the 40 sec 40 second, 45 second mark, which did net them a couple of rounds in regulation. Are they going to go for the same again? It looks like that's going to be the call here, Dinko. The longer they take, do OG 
the more information NIP are going to be able to glean and the more slim the chances look for OG. Well, slim chances, slim chickens. So we'll see you with 40 seconds left how OG decided to attack this A bomb site. Rez looking to be disruptive, but it's mainly Alex that poses the heavy threat because he's got a flank in from the ramp, and if he times it perfectly, he might be able to destroy this round for OG. That bomb is going down, sure. It will be confirmed. The grenades come in a little bit too late, and Fiku is dead regardless. But Alex is on this flank, and his teammates are doing a fantastic job. A whiff sprite from Heavy Guard. It's Ugh. not pretty. In fact, it is incredibly ugly. And he will fall. So four players for NIP stay up, and the scoreline is once again tied up. 14-14. And that is one convincing round from NIP. Great, great timing on the flank from Alex as well. He didn't show his hand too early, he waited for his teammates to get the the opening kills and that engagement and that post plant. And the moment their uh, OG's attentions were shifted away from the ram is when he struck. And he struck gold indeed, tied up once more. And yeah, as we uh, as we pointed out earlier, the, the T side woes from OG, which we saw in regulation, seems to be Showing up here as well in overtime. Oh, big shot from Ooh. Wrinkle. Flicks down on the Kido, who's having a bit of a tough time oh. at the moment. And Wrinkle is about to drag NIP through to 15 rounds, unless Nexius gets the lineup of two right here. And he had that chance, but Rez looks towards him. And well, it is straight through the eyes from Rez. It's Fiku and Heavy God left with everything to do, and it looks like it is a, a task they will not be able to complete. Alex is in a brilliant position. Fiku can't win it. Heavy God in the clutch in a 1v5. It's 15 rounds for NIP. Matt Point in this series now. Wrinkle has a little bit of a, of a simple-esque flick, flick, flick movement, right? Like a little bit of a vibration at the end of his shots. Great stuff from him, who is someone who's been kind of quiet in all honesty, considering... Heavy God's found surely in the moment where he's actually been detecting Yeah, but this, Alex. Uh, this is still a done deal. It's uh, NIP getting to map point. Yep, it will be. And of course, OG will have to try and fight on for another overtime, or they bust on Vertigo. And we thought today would be a three-map affair because OG felt like they were going to guarantee themselves a Vertigo 12 win. and 8, by the way, yeah. in regulation. Yeah. Felt like it was already done. They even had chances in this overtime, but not good enough on the T side. And some of these rounds that they've lost, they've even had the opening kills, Blair. Yeah. So that's, that's the very worry. But, but I do love how proactive and kind of fearless NIP have been later in this game because usually a lot of teams would you know as, as the pressure mounts you start turtling up a little bit being a little bit too too passive a little bit too safe a little bit too textbook instead they were being very much more brazen and like you saw uh, the push coming down ladder from Alex in the in the 50 second mark for example which is something we saw earlier where I do believe it was Alex and Wrinkle who did it in regulation which netted them around once again finding success over here so yeah NIP despite some of the woes they, they, they had earlier on Able to bounce back and starting to look a little bit more cohesive as a team. Much better look from what we saw from them yesterday against Bet Boom. Yeah, one X Bet uh, odds are on screen. You guys can use the one X Sky Esports code and get up to 130% bonus on your first deposit over at one X Bet. All right, so overtime number two is that what we're going to see? A run boost for Wrinkle, damn close to landing that opening shot again, but. This time it will evade NIP. Not able to collect it. Nexius makes his way up through short. On the other side of the smoke is Kido. Encroaching upon the position with Moto. Let me try and get a little bit closer to this bomb site. Rez is short. He's got plenty of players here for NIP4. Ready to deal with this A attack. And they want to close out Vertigo right now. Maxer with a first. Heavy guard in Moto though. They show that OG are not done yet. And it looks so likely that we're going to get another overtime. They know where the flashes came from as well. They know there's another player nearby. So Wrinkle has a lot of work to do. Yeah, he's got to land a shot and plenty more. Like shot. Oh, oh it's not enough. And Blue Phoenix will not be able to get NIP through to the round win. Overtime two it is. This game is just delivering on all fronts between OG and NIP. So convincing, Dinko. The first couple of rounds in the CT side here from NIP. But then Heavy Guard just comes alive. I actually like the aggression. The flashes are good. And it looked like it was going to be a mode on. But Heavy Guard with two quick kills. The second especially. So impressive from the Israeli. And there you have it. NIP, sorry, OG rather, tying things up as we go to OT number two. We've seen quite a few. OT, we've seen a lot of 
13 11s. Yesterday we saw our first OT, and now here we go. We got double OT. Yeah. We're about to have that again. Double We're the back action. to old standard overtime now, 15 15. Yeah, MR 15, baby. Let's go. Let's roll with it. Let's see who's going to be able to pick this one up. OG's T side has been a struggle. Well, they're here again on the T side. Kick off overtime, too. Mid-fight looks to go down. Wrinkle has been trying to get openers towards a ramp two rounds in a row. This time changing up, going for a mid-flight. Oh, Reds needs to be careful! Just about gets around the corner, that. And Wrinkle's aggression in mid is still here. In fact, it's getting even more aggressive. And Wrinkle is going to make it pay off against Fiku as he just walks away with that advantage. There was a second player there in the form of Heavy God, but he doesn't want to take the risk. Really not worth it. As OG looking to speed things up here. They've been uh, a little bit wary of how some of these flanks have been coming in from NIP. Molly. Shin is going to be doubling up with Alex. Moto. An extra shot draws the numbers even again as we go 55 seconds. But remember that Heavy God flank, keep eyes on that. In the midst of all of this chaos, Keto Res and Heavy God chiming in together. It is now OG looking strong and solid with that shot from Moto, but Res is detected as short, and for, unfortunately for Res, they are on the B bomb side, so he's got the literal longest pathway to get there. And this gives all the chances in the world for OG to win this one. Crystal could go for this, but he's aware of that Heavy God was so very close by, so many angles to clear. And Heavy God's going to play this one. Up front and personal, he's got Nexus right next to him as well, and the peak is perfect. Now we cheat. We're in the first round here of OT number two. And we're talking about the some of the woes of OG and his T side, Dinka, but winning the first round here in the second OT, that's a that's a pretty solid start overall. Yeah, it is a pretty solid start, uh, and obviously OG has two T rounds in a row, so maybe they've started to find something that's working for them a little bit more consistently. We'll have to see. Obviously, they win a lot of rounds to the T side. Their chances of winning this half or, or this overtime are increased dramatically. Happy God lining up as smoke for elevator. Toss that out now. Fight. Oh, to Reds inside of the smoke. There's always a little gap there. Nexus is very aware of that. Reds was trying to get into it and gets caught by him. So advantage once again goes in favor of OG. A lot of noise being made as Keto is going to be left behind on the look. And that's a huge find to Alex. Alex, get, despite getting Nexus, the trade, they're going to be very happy with this. And here comes the aggression again. But this time around, it's going to be from B mains. And Fiku seems to sniff it out. Shadow. Good shot. That's Blue Phoenix dead. Second kill was nearly there, but Wrinkle doing a quick work off Fiku. It's a two versus three. It's not a favorable spot for NIP, but it's doable. This is being heard by Keto. He heard the footsteps of Wrinkle yeah. coming all the way up towards stairs. He's going to leave him alone. He's going to try and get the flank here, but there is Maxter. He seems to be very wary. So Keto with 40 seconds on the clock is going to try and find one kill, but the hunter could get become the hunted here, but that's information conveyed, and now this should be OG running into the a bombs and getting the bomb down. Yeah, they're going to commit to that very quickly and give themselves the maximum chance to close this one out. Moto and Heavy God, two of the hardest hitters inside of this OG team, and Heavy God has come to life now in overtime. Wrinkle and Maxter have to pull off the retake. They had a few pieces of utility left. They put them in place now. Blow up in that smoke, but Moto hits the shot first onto Wrinkle, and the DQ is not happening. Maxter lining up the kill, oh and it was a no. team kill as well. Oh, God. OG. Oh, no. Oh, man. Oh, that's so rough. Heavy God kills his own teammate, and the kill comes in from Maxter. <laughs> they didn't even have a kit. And they win the round. Oh, it's so... That's rough. That is, that is terrible. Ugh. It looks like everything was going their way, right? It was 2v2, bomb planted. They knew where the both the CTs are going to be coming in from. It was so far away. And then a TK amongst all the chaos. Oh, heavy god. Man proposes, god disposes. Everything tied up again here. Oh, uh, what <gasps> is that from Wrinkle? Uh, the smoke and a yeah, flash. The smoke saved him. 
I don't know, man. He could maybe have got a collateral. The Molotov, it did send someone's toe toes. Ooh, he knows. He knows. There's a flare around that corner. Yeah. Such a good position, but with an AWP? I believe in ring with no scope. Oh, the quick shot. That works too. And the second shot, unable to be landed to the chest. And it is actually effective trading from OG through the bottom of B. Now, the mid plight from Fiku could be the movement that wins this entire round. He's heard one, just not a second. Yeah, he doesn't know the seconds there, but his teammates are coming up into the B bomb site. Fiku just having a little look around mid, making sure that it is clear and he can get that kind of way through construction. But he has to be pretty quick about this. He needs to help his teammates who are now actually floundering inside of this B bomb site. They're both dead, and now this flank comes way too late. Fiku can't make it work on time. He's worried about being spotted from elevator, but there's just got to be a moment where he goes. And I don't think this 1v3 is going to be picked up by Fiku. And it's NIP who will lead the way at the turn of the first half here in overtime two. I thought I thought after the uh, initial jiggle peek, when they knew where both the CTs were, they'd probably buy their time, wait for Fiku to activate. And help them pincer to be bomb side, but yeah. Good hole from uh, OG all things uh, sorry, from NIP. Now for OG. The CD size was pretty strong, Dinko, but then seems to have tapered off a little bit. I don't think they're able to find too much consistent success. Yeah. They haven't been good enough yet. Wrinkle. That round. Alex with it. Right sent forward. Stepping, making noise on his dismount. Nexius tries to make that work, but Brent's had already escaped his gaze, and we now head into the 1 minute 25 second mark in the round, and no player yet to fall. Yeah, just a very default spread coming out from NIP. No one towards mid, however. And that point being found by the ninjas. If they're able to close this one, shot is landed onto the defensive player behind default boxes, but it's not enough damage to bring the kill down. And oh my god, Modo. What a shot on Wrinkle. It's like three headshots, three different players. At the same time. All right. Good luck pulling this one off, NIP. I don't think they even saw anyone, Dinko. No, 5v1, just like that. Blink of an eye. Blink and you miss it. And Maxter can't afford to miss much. Moto's head taken off his shoulders. Maxter is in the carrier's position of having to deal with multiple players around that left corner. And even then, if he had been able to somehow take them out, there was a player headshot waiting for them. So OG confirmed that round in a comfortable fashion. This game is just a war of attrition that really sees no end in sight. It's tied up again, 17 to 17. Decisive round coming up, whoever wins this will be a map point. OG have seen themselves in that position a couple of times, unable to close. And of course, with overtime, we have un pretty much unlimited resources, so it's a good buy again for both teams here as we do battle. And it's wrinkled a sprint for the opening kill. They've really tried to use his AWP as the key to unlock a couple of these rounds. Or actually, more so the battering ram, but <laughs> Heavy God shows him what it's all about. The AK-47 with the headshot, a split second of his head spotted at default, and instantly the head is split open of Wrinkle. It's also the fact that he's an AK-47, which he picked up from the, the previous one round. If it was an A1, maybe it would just been a dink and Wrinkle might have survived, but insta shot, insta headshot from the Heavy God. Should be stymieing any the aggression coming out here from the NIP side. So do you see a complete lack of presence from the T's towards ramp apart from just one player? That is, of course, going to be Rez. Try and manufacture a kill all by himself. Nade and a flash to work with. Meanwhile, the rest of his team making a lot of noise, making it known that the B site is where they want to arrive at. Good kill towards Quad, Heavy God, plays that position very commonly, and it, they, it did cost NIP a lot in the first half, so they learned from that mistake to not check it. Heavy God is forced out of position. Now with 35 seconds left, where does that bomb want to go? Because Rez is pushed up from A. Hito has taken out Blue Phoenix. It feels like A is their only option, so that bomb is coming back over here. Nexus is the closest defending player over towards the side of the map, but he's not in a position to deny the plant. He has got utility to try and make it uncomfortable, but the plant will go through. And Alex will be able to escape, but a shot at wall by wall to Rez? 
Was that through the, the Tetris box as well? That, that looked insane, but Max are trying his best, but he's too committed in the open. And now it's just Alex, so it's OG that look like they're the team to go ahead to map points here on Vertigo once again. Alex, the Spaniard, the in-game leader, and now the clutcher. That defuse is being stuck, and Alex is felled. It's 18 rounds for OG, one round away from victory now on Vertigo. This will be a huge relief if they can take this next round. I really need to see that kill from Moda's perspective from his POV, because it did look like it was through the... Uh like the white boxes. Through two white boxes, which is, uh, I mean, yeah, it can deal some damage through it, but that's like... You don't see kills through that very often. Great stuff from Moto there. It, it was looking very uncomfortable. Also, Double up setup to try and close this out for OG. Not sure about that one, Dick. Not sure about it. Fiku as well. Fiku is pretty good with the rifle. Let's see what they can do with this. Fiku is in mid. It's a pretty good position to try and peel away with an opening move. And Fiku needs to connect. Oh, he does hit the shot. He even gets a chance oh. for a collateral kill there. The grenade goes in. It's not enough to finish off Wrinkle. And, and he that's switches perfect. to the rifle. It's actually really well played. I didn't notice that Fiku. rifle right there. Yeah, yeah, that's great. Yeah, great kill from Fiku there. Nearly a double. This could be it, Dinko. Does feel like it, doesn't it? All directions are pointing towards OG taking a win here on Vertigo. A long and labored battle, but one that OG looked to survive. Heavy God has been sharp towards the B-bomb site, and in particular, this duo, this teamwork between Fiku and Heavy God has been such a difficult puzzle for ninjas in pajamas to figure out. Heavy God will be up first. In fact, Fiku might take first contact now with those peaks out from default. It's a great headshot. Fiku is doing so much damage. A couple of kills now coming through for OG, and it is just Alex left alone. The first map will finally come to a close, and it closes in favor of OG. It was labored, it was a bit of a struggle, but OG doing it in the end, and Heavy God, look at that, look at that from him. Relief, relief, joy, elation, all the happy feelings, Zinko, going the way of OG, and it was looking a little grim, I won't lie, 8 for Lee, sorry, I, I do believe it was 12 to 8, they had map point four rounds in a row, and it comes to OT, and you're wondering, maybe NIP have done enough, maybe they brought this one back, but a stellar CT hole in the final half of the second OT, and it closed it out once again. You know, Fiku, Heavy got starting to come alive as well, looking very good there for OG as we go into map number two. Definitely looking very good, and it's exciting to see OG play at this level. The better performance today from Heavy God as well. You were saying, you know, we don't usually see him have two bad days in a row. Well, that was certainly the case yeah. today for Heavy God. But uh, exciting times going into map two as well. Overpass coming up next. Gotta say, Ninjas and Pajamas probably feel ra rather comfortable with how close that first map was. Join us during help. How does the one expert taste? Taste like victory. Taste like victory. Yep. Yeah, well, looking forward to victory here on map two. We'll see who's going to get it. Whether it's going to be the ninjas in pajamas bouncing back on overpass, or whether it will be OG finding success.
overall in your journey so far what has been the memorable game that you always remember maybe the best or the land victory what has what was it um i think it's two things i really liked uh, that you qualified for the armor with og and mm-hmm. played some games there i think that was like one of my goals uh this year like to at least qualify for the rmr so they didn't make it to the major but i think it was still a memorable like event to be it and um, before that it was when i stood in uh for mouse in sydney and we made it to the playoffs and we made it to the stage and yeah, we played in front of the crowd versus phase it was then i was yeah, that was probably the most memorable you mentioned about playing in front of the crowd right so i'm just trying to take you back a little in your first land from there to playing in front of a big stage with phases you mentioned how was these two different feelings for you yeah i mean in this in the smaller event there was way less people and it just felt different like i don't know it was still really nice back then like it was still like people are watching you know you still had some more pressure but then going to a big event in sydney where you literally feel like the crowd you hear everyone the stage is big like everyone is screaming people's name and stuff like this you know like it's super it's very magical like it's, it's sometimes like i didn't even know what was going on kind of like it was so loud or like it was it was definitely an experience that was like unforgettable that's wonderful to hear now coming to what and all are you still looking forward to right because there are going to be your personal goals achievements that you want to and get to a level so what are those for you i mean i would say definitely want to win like an event with og like uh, this year probably and i want to definitely qualify for a major i think that's what we all want as a player and i haven't done that yet so i definitely want to qualify to a major get my own sticker in the game i think that's the most like the biggest motivation for me right now is to make sure i get that and you mentioned uh, win a title with og as well right uh, so now you're going to be playing with your team at sky esports masters how how, how does the team look uh, where do you think maybe there's still something practice going on or how as you mentioned you want to look at ends and then nip there might be your targets that might cause some trouble so what do you think or how does your team look right now i mean we have been in like a lucky situation with heavy god since he had some health issues mm-hmm. since like already three weeks ago so we have uh, not been able to practice with the full lineup all mm-hmm. the time but we are still working we're still practicing so i think yeah we're still going in with a good mindset and still improving on stuff and still trying to tweak things here and there but yeah we have to take it a bit like a, a step lower i guess like uh, and just see what's going to happen but i still think we have a really good chance at doing some damage in the tournament looking forward to i think uh, og has been a team that everybody looking forward to doing big things and let's hope for that now coming to a support right as you said now when one of your teammate was sick it got a little tough for you to get together as a practice there would have been down times also in your career previously as whenever as you mentioned did not get a chance or did not win a tournament somewhere here and there who has been that support telling you you don't worry you concentrate on the game we'll always be here for you who has that person been or anybody uh, i mean yeah for sure my family and my girlfriend and stuff are really they always there to to support me mm-hmm. and they are a big part of why like it's easier to sustain like a career and like uh, be happy always and stuff like this and i think also just in general the team and the coach and everyone like around og has been doing good like a good job at just making stuff easy for the players and yeah i think we have a good bond in the team and i think yeah like things are looking great and it's just a matter of time before we get into the groove and start winning things so yeah, yeah it's but- looking good I think April 8th is getting near and near and excitement is also getting higher and higher but as we talked about the event coming closer coming to the event itself the first time when we made sky sports masters uh, 2023 ba- last year it was only indian teams participating we had import players uh, it was a good turnout everybody loved seeing back cs back on stage now in 24 we have international teams seven in total who will be playing invited and qualified plus an indian team would you want a lot more uh, tournaments as this and also see a lot more teams uh, that you would want to fight with yeah i think it's always nice to have like international events where you can see different faces and like, like different types of playstyles even and it's always cool to give other teams and and like an opportunity and to face off against more teams and different teams like i think it's a very exciting thing and i think it's something definitely like that people should keep doing and yeah it's it, it's very nice and now coming into uh, as i mentioned the teams that we have right now in masters but apart from them is there any other teams that you would want to like i want to play against them once let's see what i what we can do any teams we might think for them for 25 uh, i don't know specifically maybe teams but i think like to, all the teams that you can play against that are like on good level and everything are always super exciting to play so for me like this seeing just different faces in general would be a, would be a nice thing you know like it's uh, it's going to be exciting to play them now and i think next year with some different faces would be even better you know we'll try to make it even bigger and better than this year but the 
main event is going to be uh, as we said it's something that everybody has been looking out for but as i'm asked about a team i want to ask you when you started your career was there a person or a player that you were looking up to oh my god this guy is insane i want to get to this stage one day be like him or maybe better than him was there anybody like that i mean i think everyone looked up at simple at some point like mm-hmm. just by him being the best player and in general like Nico as a star rifle was always really nice but i would say from the moment i was like starting to like take CS really serious i would say like Ikindar like Patsy like those aggressive riflers were always the ones that uh, like stood out to me and i always took inspiration from like going into the games and stuff looking at similar play styles and just taking them into account and giving making it even to an higher, higher position right wonderful now coming to the last part this is going to be all to you this is a message that you would want to give to all the fans who will be looking out for og supporting in the chat rooting for you guys what would you want to say to them yeah i just hope that you guys will enjoy uh, the cs we'll give to you guys and that you will keep supporting us and yeah um, i'm in, i'm looking very forward to to playing the tournament and i hope we get uh, as far as possible wishing you the best next year thank you so much for joining us i'm excited to see og from april 8 in the main event with the other seven teams wishing you all the best thank you so much thank you bye bye Thing remains the same. Victories with one X bet. Welcome back to the Sky Esports Masters powered by AMD. We're ready to get into map number two of NIP versus OG. What a, what a battle map one was. It felt like two maps in one though. We got so many overtimes coming in. NIP looked like they were about to break OG and then suddenly just a bit of life at the end, they got through it. Yeah, uh, a little bit of uh, resurgence coming in, especially from Heavy God starting to wake up on that B bomb set, especially. But yeah, I don't want to take much away from NIP either. I think they showed a lot of uh, a lot of form, a lot of tenacity to bring that one back. They were trailing 12-8 at one point, able to grind it back into uh, OG's map, looking very solid overall. And heading into their uh, map, which is going to be overpass. Honestly, this could be anyone's game. Yeah, excited to see how that is going to pan out. And yeah, it could be anybody's game. We'll have to wait and see. But this is some highlights, some of the action that unfolded on Vertigo. Early start from OG was pretty decent. But when the guns came out, I mean, the CT side for NIP certainly looked very strong. I got a little bit worried about OG. And I think the T side was continued when we moved into overtime as well. Yeah, like uh, apart from the, like, I think the, when they had a 5-2 lead is when you're like, all right, this is looking good. But I think this particular round where they lost the, the pistols and a one saved off from the side of NIP is when the uh, the T side kind of fell apart here from OG, and we saw the woes continue in overtime as well. But uh, individually speaking, you have to point out both Keto and Alex, the two opposing IGLs, really doing the brunt of the heavy lifting for the respective teams as well. Something which you're not expecting to really see when you have players like Renko, like Maxter, like Fiku, like Heavy God in the server. But in the end, it was an uh, you know, OG Keto and his merry men, his uh, motley crew, getting it done. And heading into overpass, like I, I won't lie, I haven't really seen this uh, this new look NIP on that map. We saw it as a decider yesterday, but didn't go all the way to a free mapper. It has historically been uh, a map that various cores, various iterations of the NIP uh, lineups have liked playing. But I'm curious to see how this one's going to play out for them. Yeah, very excited to see how it's going to pan out for them. And, and overpass will 
certainly answer some questions about this matchup and where how close they are matched. I mean, NIP bringing to the brink on Vertigo is a great sign for the, the remainder of the series. But Keto is a standout player. It's kind of wild. Keto does have maps here and there where he's just really, really good. Yeah, <laughs> it, it, the uh, the Keto effect is used to fondly or rather infamously called it back when he was in Vegas as well, right? He has his one map every every couple of months where he just looks unplayable. And uh, I think this was one of those. Uh, also, especially impressive considering, you know, he is also doing the entire IGLing as well for his team. The fact that Modo just came in to replace Regali as well. Uh, a lot of work having to be done by Keto. And maybe it was the it was a webcam thing, code. It's the first time this entire tournament we saw Keto turn as a webcam. webcam and just as soon as it turned it on, 28 kills like that in double overtime. All it turns out is we just needed some confirmation of life. And Keita was able to deliver. He was absolutely able to deliver. 0.97 uh, KD as well. He's just putting a lot of work. And a lot of the kills weren't exactly you know, selfish kills. He was the one just running at his, at, at his opponents, leading the charge, so to speak. A lot of impact kills coming in from him. A lot of very heads up, raise and plays. And in the end, you know, it, it did lead to that later win coming in for his team. It came down to a little minute details. So yeah, a captain's performance from a captain who's trying to kind of, you know, show what he can do for his team. On the other side, Alex as well, 30 kills. Dinko, even more impressive than Keto, but unfortunately, a losing effort. Yeah, a losing effort, but you don't see Alex at the top of the board all that often. That's a positive to take away, I guess, for NIP, is that Alex is playing so well with a big reason as to why that first map was so competitive. Excited to see if Alex can get more of those performances off this team, because in his time in Mobby Star Riders in the past, he would obviously have these maps where he would call from the front and also be leading in the kill department. He, he is an in-game leader who can brag, but yes. I think the first few periods of time here in NIP, he struggled individually. I remember the series at the RMR, where unfortunately ended the series and got eliminated from the RMR with six kills across the best of three. Dinko, look at Brola and, and how he's performing in Mouse right now, yeah, and how he's exactly. struggled at NIP. I think NIP can make a lot of TL players who can usually frag out struggle quite a bit. So yeah. for the fact that Alex is slowly coming back to his form, I think it's a good sign. Yeah, it is a good sign, absolutely. Uh, and more of those signs need to be seen as we head into overpass if NIP won a chance of this. Searson, in an interview two days ago, said he would love the matchup against OG because he wants to play against Kido. He wants to have that matchup against yeah. his former teammate. And, and I think. And, right and he now, said his good friend as well. His, his good friend. Yeah. So don't forget, it's all about the friends you make along the way. Yes. Um, and I do feel like that's a possibility. Now, I personally got OG winning this series 2 to 0. 2-0, to zero, it's it's ballsy. I did say this might go all the way to a three-mapper. Yes, uh, but, but, but I, but I do want to believe that from NIP, you know, they, they picked overpass here. I want to believe, I want to have a little bit of faith in Alex that this T side from them, they're going to be starting on the T side here. It was a map pick from NIP. OG, if they're smart, should be starting on the CT side. So I'm expecting something a little bit more elaborate, a little bit more methodical, but they can try and, you know, make OG bleed out a little bit. We're going to be finding out here, but... I won't lie. I, I don't think I've seen enough from NIP so far in this event. And sure, the God's Rain win comes to mind, but you know you don't want to read too much into that. Yesterday, they kind of completely disappeared. And here in Vertigo, sure, they put up a fight. But is it going to be enough? We're going to be finding out here. Is it going into map number two? Yeah, you guys can turn your casual viewing experience into a whole new thing with high odds for tournament matches awaiting you on the OneXBet website and mobile app. We get into the action, though, and NIP have the majority of the forces, in fact, every single player outside of the B-bomb site, ready to try and attack. This could be a quick connector response, but the smoke is up currently, and Heavy God going short is confident on his own to be able to fight a couple of these ninjas. And he's taking out Rez first, chasing down the second. That's the bucket of utility in the back pocket of Alex. And Phoenix getting involved, kills across the board. It's Wrinkle who will find the multi, and Keto, the MVP of the previous map, win for OG, has to win this clutch alone, and he won't. He's dead to Alex, and it's NIP with a great start on overpass. Yeah, just a flurry of kills going the way of NIP. A nice 2k as well coming in from a Wrinkle and Alex. That's why Heavy got him in the opening. So yeah, no time being wasted, a very fast start. And for for NIP, starting on T side, overpass, it's, uh, it's a bit of a cliche, but uh, every round on the T side does matter. As for OG, it is going to be Full eco here. No time being wasted. I'm actually looking forward to tomorrow's games as well. Like this, three games back to back to back, and then a best of five grand finals. Yeah, it's gonna be a, a lot of excitement coming in tomorrow. Plenty of Counter Strike here in the Sky Esports Masters. Three best of threes, then a best of five. 
Oh, a lot of action. Nice shot for Fiku. Three kills there would have been brutal, but two still pretty good. Yeah, it's very good, considering the situation. And in the end, it is the round collected by the ninjas. So a decent start here. Now we get into the rifles. In fact, we get into the off right away, Modo. You really want it that bad. You're willing to go without Kevlar. Glass cannon. Yeah, the off conversation is always an important one on overpass. And Modo CT offing two days ago, we mentioned it was really, really strong. So if you can do that on overpass, you can maybe take over the server here. And he's decided to get that out early. Risk to his own health because he has no Kevlar. Nexius and Modo. It is interesting, like how a lot of he heavy guards positions uh, on a CT side seems to be, you know, where you would rather have Nexus, right? Towards the A side, you wanna. I feel like having heavy guard, especially the way he takes a lot of fights, would be towards bathrooms, towards a long position, towards fountain, or whatever, wherever you want to keep him. And of course, playing alongside Modo, I think would be a much more defensive setup, but they do keep him in some of these small side anchor positions a lot of the times. Where he has found success, but I feel like he could find better success in other parts. A missed shot coming in from Moto and Maxter with two quick kills. Okido has a lot of work to do. Yeah, this could be an absolute disaster to allow the Mac 10 to do most of the damage, so Okido needs to clean up on aisle A, and it's just one from the FAMAS. Fortunately, Heavy Gods, quick rotation, but Blue Phoenix puts him in the ground, and now it's Fiku against Rez, and Fiku will win the clutch for OG. You know, that was a bit of a bonus for the ninjas, and the fact it comes down to a 1v1 isn't pretty for OG's money, but at least they've got the result. Yeah, the trades were <laughs> looking very, very scary indeed for OG. What a huge 1v2 coming in from Fiku. Last two T players were kind of low as well. Yeah, as you pointed out, Dinka, it was a bit of a half uh, bonus round because, bear in mind, round number two, they did lose uh, two players to what was just USPs. So that means a couple of pistols, MAC-10, MP-9 out, everyone's blinded, but Heavy God doesn't need any vision. He's going to find the first Blue Phoenix will fall, felling his countrymen. Yeah, just feeling his divine senses to take that kill, Heavy God. What's your favorite mythology? Greek. Oh, that was quick. Why? I think he's just very... You like what Zeus does? Yeah, I think he's just absolutely crazy and barbaric. He's a bit of a pervert. Yeah, well... I think it's, you know, there's just so many, like, whoo, crazy things in it. And just like this, inside of the toilets, it's Rez and Modo going blow for blow, but Modo! Okay, Modo! That's why you get the AWP out early! Shutting down the attack of the ninjas in pajamas, and this is starting to look a little rough. They may be in the pajamas, and they certainly haven't woken up. And Maxter's on the other side of the divider. And Moto is about to divide his body in half. No, Moto. Okay, Moto. Don't go further. All right, let's get it up. Here's fine. They can chill out now. Well, that looks so <laughs> iffy for a moment, but, you know, Moto finding his stride. All right, he's got Keto as well. All right, Maxter. Biden his time. He's hoping for a big mistake from OG. There's the first. 23 seconds. That's the problem here. Not a lot of time for Maxter, and now he's got two players to worry about right in front of him. And a flank. And a flank as well. That should confirm the kill. The Maxter even turns back, and Modo decides to peek out for a 4K. What a round from Modo. That is what you like to see from the Dragon himself. Not Regali. That is, in fact, Modo. The Komodo. Modo the Komodo. That was, yeah, some really good snappy stuff. And despite losing maybe a few too many players there, because it was a 4v1 at the very end, yeah. uh, it will still be pretty much a full eco here for the Ninjas. Just one deagle for Maxter. The cool thing about the Greek mythology is you can go to a lot of the temples that are still there. True, but yeah, fair. I can see that. I do... I do personally like Mes Mesopotamian uh, mythology. Yeah. It's a little creepy. A lot of like demons and stuff. Yeah. It's pretty cool. Always just interesting stories. What about Egyptian? Egyptian's great. Egyptian is pretty sick too, yeah. isn't it? Oh, we're about to have ourselves a little Nexus. Bit of fun at long. I think these NIP players will be around for long though. They're 
Drop for another opponent. Zero Kevlar. And the white ball ready to chime on in. It's LG. Kind of crashing down upon the ninjas to take the lead on overpass. 3 to 2 here on the CT side. I did do something pretty cool recently, though. Mm -hmm. I sat underneath the Parthenon in Athens mm -hmm. and read a philosophy book on my own in one of the gardens. There was no one around, no tourists, just me chilling out. Was it a Greek philosopher's book? Yes, it was. I don't know who could read Greek. It was in English. <laughs> <laughs> of course. Maybe some things are lost in translation. Do you feel wiser now, Dink? Uh, I actually do feel wiser. Do you feel yeah. a little bit more philosophized? Yeah, I feel philosophized. Falafel. Falafelized. Falafelized. Caramelized. And uh, the only philosophy I'll look for is in Counter-Strike. The Counter-Strike philosophy is win more rounds than your opponent. And currently OG winning more rounds than that of NIP. Yeah. But the problem is, on the T side, you don't actually need all that many on overpass a lot of the time. Yeah, if you, I think if you get four an IP, you're going to be like, all right, boys, something we're going to work with. But uh, yeah, the past couple of rounds have looked pretty solid from OG. Uh, the money still hasn't really stabilized all that much because they did suffer quite a few casualties in round number four. But I like this. Aggression from the CTs early on. Keto with the MP9. Still going to be poking and prodding to its connector for Maxter. Utility, kind of clearing out close angles. Keto, he's on a bit of an island here. Good timing from Keto. Yeah, good timing indeed. Uh, that's going to be Blue Phoenix and Fiku going blow for blow. 3v4 now at this point. OG favored in this fight. A lot of time though for NIP to figure this out at 1 minute 10 seconds. Keto has connector control. He'll clear out water. He's gathering so much information from this and now he can actually position himself perfectly over towards B, which is where NIP are currently shifting. And if they go into this B-bomb site, Moto's there. It's going to be pretty difficult for them. Oh, Makita's falling all the way back towards A here. A couple of smokes towards Long, not really giving too much of vision for the CT. So they need to try and be a little bit more proactive, get a little bit of information going their way, because very, very quickly, Moto is going to be pressed in the next 10 seconds. And you can see immediately the CT starting to rotate back from A. Moto gets to first. Oh, oh, oh. Moto's on for more! From the site goes for the no scope and couldn't quite capitalize on the third, but the damage was already felt. 19 seconds left, and Wrinkle will not be able to get this done, surely. Smoke into the middle of the bomb site, worried about short, worried about far too many positions. And Moto is their reckoning. OG up to four rounds off the back of that. And we said, when Moto's on the CT side, man, he can take over the server on the AWP. And he goes ahead and does it again. Looks super cool, Common Collector as well. Lovely stuff. Good for one a second, especially. I like a little zoom effect here. Lovely, lovely stuff from Moto. I like what OG's doing, are, are doing on his CT side. They're being so very disruptive. Keto to its cons there, just uh, making life miserable for Maxter. We saw the double push coming into its monster as well. They're mixing things up quite a bit, leaving NIP just guessing as to what the play might be. Heavy God? Singeing his toes a little bit. But he's got himself into a comfortable corner. And the corner might be a position of power to bring down a couple of players on NIP, buddy. It's very committed, and he only gets one out of it. Yeah, I'm not a big fan of that. I thought he probably might have his teammate right next to him, because there were three players towards B. One could be watching towards Monster. And uh, he could have let, like, Keto make con take contact initially. That's a rifle retrieved. Still, no player, no player advantage for both these two teams. But we do see the lead coming in towards A, but Nexius drops the bomb at his feet. Now Alex and Wrinkle. Oh my god, he quick switched for some reason. As he crossed into the bathroom angle and instantly gets punished for that, so the numbers are now from... 2v4 to 2v3. Still NIP struggle with 30 seconds left. Fire keeping them at bay. That's going to burn even more time off the clock. And time will slowly expire. Moto. Oh, I think he is about to strike again with his AWP. Good position. Spacing's not good enough for NIP to stop that AWP from getting two easy kills. 
And I actually, it feels like OG are even more comfortable on this map than they were on Vertigo. Yeah, the CD side is looking very, very solid indeed. Uh, I still wasn't a fan of uh, Heavy God's position there. Just very tucked in, especially when you know the buy was going to be light from NIP. You know it's going to be a few pistols, maybe a MAC-10 coming into play where they will be swinging out to a short pretty loudly, pretty fast. But apart from that, good recovery. Next is getting the double, double kill towards long as well. NIP, 5 to 2. I did say 4 rounds is something they could be happy with, but they're right now stuck on 2 here. Breaking the smoke, and Alex gets the kill. Keto to reply back. His heavy early A starts, and that should be the call for NIP to just rush towards B, because they know they're only two defenders, but Fiku's gonna find Maxter, and Fiku needs to stay alive here. Oh, well, heavy guard. This time position is graffiti. Whew! A, B, and what a flash. C with kills. It's just Rez left 1v4, and NIP are not really getting into any competitive positions in these rounds. They're just getting absolutely destroyed. 6-2 now. If you're Moto, you're feeling very happy with that flash all the way from the A-bomb yep. side from short as and well. And it's effective. And it's effective. It's a classic of playing like a face-it game. You're playing uh, in, in premier matchmaking. Maybe not premier because of the cheater situation right now. And then, you know, you throw a flash. Your teammate gets a kill, like, was he blind? Was he blind? Was he blind? He's like, yes, yes, he was blind. He was indeed blind. Six to two, looking very much like a reality here. A great, great hold coming out from Fiku. And that wasn't necessarily a bad call from NIP, right? They, they took the fight towards uh, Fountain. They realized that they kill Nexius. Keto gets a trade. There's a heavy, heavy likelihood that only two defenders at B right now. They go for the fast play. But Fiku does such a good job, not just staying alive, but getting a couple of kills. And Heavy got with the trade as well. And look at the re reposition as well. Such a good reposition from Heavy God towards Toxic. And with that, it is going to be 6-2. to two. OG looking... Just, just like a rock, like a mountain, like an immovable object. Designed by the heaviest of gods. Yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. Not a lot of money left for NIP, and at this point, OG are at risk of falling asleep because the game's become so one-sided and easy for them. So that's probably the, the one threat that they have going against them. But a uh, moment to try and figure out how to get two more rounds out of this half for NIP. That is the minimum goal. And still a possibility. An AK-47 for Alex. Based on his previous map performance, you wouldn't put it against him having the hero AK. Not have a battle of time here. It kills for him. Most of his teammates on upgraded pistols. Yeah. Uh, I, I know it's not necessarily desperate times yet, but it is starting to feel a little, a little uncomfortable here for NIP because very few of these rounds have come really close. In all honesty, aggression from Heavy God helped out by plenty of utility. It's a full commitment towards B from NIP. Heavy God detects some early presence, and the one player who did have that hero AK in the form of Alex is the player that gets softened up. He's lost half of his health just over. And now they're going to be trying to come through short. Heavy God has relinquished control of short. He's dropped back into the bomb site instead. He'll play from water. He's got Fiku at the barrel. So this B commitment is staying focused for NIP. They've got a couple of flashes to get through this bomb site defense. I don't know if it's going to be enough. There's too many players here for OG to feel really confident that NIP are going to be able to break through this. I don't know, man. A Tech 9 Swarm can always be scary. A missed opening kill, and suddenly things can go wrong. Great flashback. Fiku's blinded, here they come charging in, spamming through the smoke, and Blue Phoenix blinded, still gonna find Fiku, but Keto and Heavy got to reply back real quick. Nice and quick indeed, Heavy God and Keto shutting them down, Ooh. Heavy God with another headshot, it puts Alex and Wrinkle into a tough spot, but that Tech 9 from Alex is actually doing more work than the rifle he once held, and now he's got an M4, start the round with an AK, looking to close an M4, and a missed shot from Moto. Oh, the corner is so damaged on health, and Alex has got it down to a 1v1 clutch. Now he goes to the AWP. Alex is having a game of gun game in this round, and he wants the clutch in heaven. He's got the read, he's got the scope, and the spam going down for Nexius. It takes Alex to 21 health. Flash goes out, it's perfect. And Alex rounds the corner, but now the problem is limited time. Limited time for Alex. Nexius commits down into the water. Alex hears it, misses the shot, and damn close, but not close enough. It is OG that survived that scare. That was, uh, that's, that was an NT if I've ever seen one. Oh, so very close. 
And I said it as well, Dago. The Tech Nines up close, a swarm descending upon you. Can be quite hectic. Reminds me of finding, fighting the uh, the Tyranids and then Helldivers, I'll tell you that. <laughs> no, sorry, not the Tyranids, they're, uh, they're called the, the uh, they're called something else. I don't think you'll war before I just call them bugs. Or the bugs, yeah, there we go. Fun game. Well, for democracy, does OG continue to battle? 72. And despite the previous round being a bit of a nail biter, majority of the rounds have been looking very convincing here from uh, Kido and his men. Yeah, it's been looking great, but uh, a change up here. Fiku dies first, so OG suffer. The opening kill going in the way of NIP. Nexius is advanced down long. He's playing in front of that stone. Hoping that this position can net him a kill. But in the meantime, NIP are now getting in a position inside of the bathroom. So they've got pretty solid control over this side of the map now. And they want to stay committed in towards the A attack. AWP and Moto is here though, and even though they've lost a player, when that is still around, when that weapon is still available, OG always have some sharpness to their defense. Yeah, Nexius here though. This flank could completely ruin NIP. Oh, the timing indeed. Oh, it's not the cleanest spray, but it still works out for him. He gets that kill. Moto's off. Strikes from the truck. And from Optimus, he will optimize the round for OG. And with the flank, it seems like it will shortly be summarized as Alex crosses to the stairway. Shadow spotted, headshot delivered, and the AWP should be picked up and saved over OG with yet another, and that's a great 4v5 conversion. Yeah, uh, just the fact that it's being so proactive in Nexus towards long, not just playing passive, Turning around, and you can see how uncomfortable they were. Again, Mo uh, again, Moto, man, he does such a good job on the CT side. Not only just hitting the shots he needs to hit, nothing too crazy, but also does such a good job buying time. There are a lot of newer, fresher operas playing at like the upper echelons of Counter Strike. Could be like who wants that th that little itch comes in to go for a hero play, to just you know go for a swing, go for a repeat. And they're doing a very good job there, just biding time, waiting for backup to arrive. Yeah, this is uh, this is looking, it's not looking great. For NIP, tactical timeout getting called. I do believe the second of this game thus far. And 8 to 2. Their uh, options are dwindling. Options dwindling. Tech 9's out again. Yeah. To be fair, I think one of the closest rounds they've had have been with, with the Tech, tech Nines. nines the yeah. Bomb site. yeah, you're right. And, and they do have a pretty decent uh, like set of utility which you throw towards B, which uh, did catch OG off guard. But this is different, though. We can see Nexius playing a little bit more aggressive towards, uh, towards Jail. Sorry, Fiku playing a little bit more aggressive towards Jail, but he's fallen back to a more passive position. And it looks like it's going to be more of the same thing, though. More of the same, absolutely. But look at how much information the CDs have. Because they're pushing a little bit deep towards bathrooms, they realize there's no presence whatsoever from the Ts towards the bathrooms, a long part of the map. That's going to allow three CTs to be playing from the bomb site. Strength in the defense based on information picked up earlier in the round. And strength from Heavy God from short as he takes down two, holding on the monster play. It is very good from the CT defense again. NIP struggling to find anything on their T side. They will not be able to get those four rounds we said they needed. In fact, it looks like it is about to be a very comfortable 10-2 half with no signs pointing towards NIP grabbing the third. OG might come to play in the series today, knock out NIP in quick fashion, actually, all things considered. That first map was a double overtime, in fact, with a 19-17 victory for OG. But overpass is a different story entirely. And we did see OG have a tough time on the T side of Vertigo. I don't think they're going to have many T rounds to have to win going into the second half of, uh, of Overpass here. So that might be enough to get them over the side. Moto that's getting found. Opener. Yep. Yeah, and it's Moto too, right? You're, you're correct in that. And that's, uh, that's <gasps> a fantastic kill to find. Dude, Nexius is pushed in. Yeah, Nexius is in the back line again. It's just such a threat. Maxter's on high alert, but the problem is he's being sandwiched right now, and I don't think he enjoys being the meat in a sandwich. 
Uh, it might get a little too heavy for him. Swinging over the door is Keto. Short kills in. Maxer takes that pick and is so focused on ladder, but Nexus is intelligent enough not to go down that ladder and give him the fight and give him the trade. So he's going to hang around. And here. they're going to take so much of time clearing out all these angles because of Nexus. Yeah, and now he's immediately vacated the premises. He's going to be holding a forward position as well towards Fountain, but now he's like, all right, 50 seconds. He's going to give it up. Doesn't want to give a unfavorable deal to himself. And now NIP clearing out all close angles. They're like, all right, guys, we're going to be hitting towards B. Guess who's lying in wait? It is the god himself, the one who has the weight and Fiku. In Fiku. Yes. Who's honestly been the best player for OG yeah, so far in the tournament. <laughs> right, here goes NIP. 30 seconds into the B play, desperately searching for a third round at okay. the end of this first half. This angle. And the angle from Fiku is unpredictable. It's not exactly safe for him. They're waiting for a flash. They are waiting for their time to strike. Contact? No, here we go. Strike they must. As we head into the final few seconds, they get rid of Fuku without a single kill. It's Heavy God down in the water. The trying solo. to keep his feet. What? And he's gone. That's the sight taken with just enough time. No time! Alex is nuked out of it. And the time is over. OG with a last second grenade from heaven. It is a Kobe and a half. And that will give a 10-2 half to OG. A 1v3, and all he had was a nade to save the day, Dinko. A nade straight from the heavens. And you can see Alex, oh, his head in his hands. You hate to see that if you're a dip fan. You hate to see it, but you love to see it if you're OG. That is a sick maneuver. Last that second. That was so low. A combined HP below 30 on his three players. And the dunk lands perfectly. NIP, it goes without saying, if they lose this pistol round, this map is over, this series is over. That's a and buzzer NIP beater. NIP are out of the Sky Esports Masters. That's a buzzer beater if I've ever seen a buzzer one. Buzzer beater, absolutely. An NIP beater. And now they beat around the bushes, making their way through the park, past the fountain, towards the party. And ever closer to the A bomb site is where OG have their eyes set in this pistol round. NIP with a passive setup are gathering no information. And the contact play for OG is getting better and better towards this A side. Sprinkle. Spots a player. Spot a couple, in fact, and now too many. That's going to call the rotation. Rez spotted towards Long. He's unable to get anything out of this until that shot lands. Alex and Rez combining, keeping the site in control of NIP and allowing the rotation to come up. It doesn't look good for OG here. Fantastic work for NIP in the pistol round, and that is the first step of a very long walk back into this game. Yeah, even though it is heavily CD sided, Dingo, it's, it, feels, it feels impossible. It right? does. It but does. Uh, but one thing. To have a terrible T side from OG combined with a fantastic CT side from NIP. Yeah, but but then again, you know, if you ever need something to happen, it's it's magic. And one thing we know yeah. about magic, nip magic, it, it was a thing a long time yeah. ago. It you was. Know what also, it's also magical the variety of markets and high odds that await you on One X Bet. Place your bets on the website and mobile app right now. One X Bet, good game, well paid. Well paid. As a full eco from OG, and I'm okay with that, right? No bomb plan. Might as well just take just take the take the hit. You have so many rounds to play with, so much of buffer space to work with as well. Oh, aggression. Oh. <laughs> I mean, you're against pistols here. I'm, I'm, I was, I'm not a really big fan of this from uh, Nip, you know, especially when you know just the pistols. Why, why do you want to risk it? I think this is going to be quite a comfortable round front, IP. Yeah. Blue Phoenix there, just on a soul man mission. But uh, round should go their way. Huh. Oh. 
the corner. Max threw at the ruddy. MP9 good for one. Heavy got able uh, to step up. The Glock's doing far too much. He now rises out Glocks. of ammo. He's gone to the USP. No. He gets a second kill out of it. Blue Phoenix on the back flank. Bomb plant is huge here for OG, but of course now they've recovered weapons and now have a shot at winning the round on Glocks. I said I thought it was going to be a comfortable round for NIP, but this is anything but comfortable. This could be absolute disaster. This could spell the end of their Sky uh. Esports Masters run, but Blue Phoenix does get that kill on Moto, leaving it all on VQ, and you've said to be the best player here for OG. Well, he's not able to win the clutch. He is taken out, but the Glock should never get into a winnable it's round. Three, it's just called Glocks, Dinko. Yeah, it was a flock of Glocks. Flocks of Glocks. They were flocking with a Glock. And and clocking some heads. Yeah. You ever play the instrument? The Glockenspiel? Gessendite? <laughs> it's a uh, Glockenspiel. The Glockenspiel. It's a wooden block that you just kind of hit with a stick. Sounds like a made-up instrument. Look it up. It's Glock. like a it's like a xylophone. Yeah, but just one block. The Glockenspiel. No, it's a xylophone. Oh yeah, you're right. I'm thinking of something else. It's a metal. I think I'm thinking of a wooden bell. Yeah, no, I'm thinking of something else. But the Glockenspiel is a metal, a metal xylophone basically. It's virtually a xylophone. It's a steel steel bar. Xylophone. Oh, actually no. The Glockenspiel is sometimes erroneously referred to as a xylophone. The xylophone has wooden bars, unless the glockenspiel, which has metal bars. Yeah. But it's still not what he described. It's not, but I knew So it was you're a, wrong. Uh, yeah. It was uh, my, my decades of musical studies. Do you play any instruments? Did not work out. Yeah, I do. What do you play? I play the flute. That's pretty cool. Yeah. Flute's a hard instrument, man. Played in the orchestra. Damn, Denker, I'm out of many talents. So what are you doing here in Counter-Strike? Uh, this is this is where I want to be. This is where Rez wants to be for oh. just a second, but he's no longer standing, no longer has his fleet uh, his feet planted in this round, and it looks like it is fleeting for NIP at this moment in time because three v five. Where do they go from here? This is such a well done round from OG as well. They're just like uh, the, the spacing is so good, the awareness is just perfect, and it looks like you know they, they look like I've seen a better T T rifle round from OG in the first one than I've seen from NIP in this entire first half, honestly. You know, should be careful. Moto being so very patient, knowing that NIP have to go for a play. Maxter able to find two quick kills though. This is do doable. This is winnable. But Heavy God says no. Takes him down. 11 to 4. OG to continue to march ahead. Yeah, they do. And it does feel like it is going to come to an end very shortly. The, the instrument I was confused about is literally called the wood block. <laughs> You just had to make up a, a fake German name just to make it sound cool. The woodblock. Have you played a woodblock? Yes, yes, yes I, I have. I have think of. I've played the woodblock. Look it up, everybody. At home. Maybe I've, it's an instrument for you. I've even played the the triangle. Twang, I've even played the twang twang instrument, which is uh, some people call it the guitar. Yes, the guitar, otherwise known as the wooden stick. Wooden stringed instrument. <laughs> wooden string. Which is a lot of things. Enough. It could be a violin, a cello, a, a sitar. Piano. A piano as well, yeah. Keep keep forgetting, you know, whenever people talk about piano. Piano is actually a, a. Is piano a string instrument or is it yeah, a it's per, a per, percussion instrument? String. Is it though? Yeah, it's, it's all string. But it's percussion as well because you're, you're hitting it. Yeah, but the strings, they make the noise. Sure, buddy. And now the UMP and the Mac 10. Yeah, this is a force buy, and uh, this round is everything for NIP. They're going to require a bit of a miracle as well. The A1 and the hands of Rez. Sees that. Oh, timing there for Heavy God. Lucky. And Rez pretty much alone on an island. Robinson Crusoe with his M4A1. Yeah, Modo walking his way downtown with his teammates in tow. Fiku. UMP, a little bit of fight in him, but Rez will take out Fiku. And now, well, we're looking at Modo to frag out on Rez, and he'll do that. He hasn't been missing much today. 17 and 9, looking very good indeed. NIP throwing everything they've got back into this retake. It's either that or they save. And it won't be a pretty save, so they run in through the smoke. You to save. their deaths, Kikto and Nexius taking them out. And now Wrinkle and Alex are not in a round that they can win. It's 12 to 4, which means it's map point for OG, series point for OG, and elimination point for NIP. It's kind of grim for Nip, and look, I know it's the 
we're aware of the entire situation with you know with Blue Phoenix being a stand-in coming in right now, uh, and Wrinkle did get recently picked up. But they have, you know, they've had a few reps here and there, but overall it's been kind of deflating. I think the only convincing convincing showing we've seen from them was in a Vertigo fight, right, where it was looking like they had some fight inside of them. But overall, this has been a very, very unimpressive overpass coming out from them. Uh, especially, look, in the CD side, obviously when you're, when you're trailing by such a massive margin, you don't have the money working your way, you know, I'm not going to really criticize that, but the T side looks so unimaginative, and if I'm looking at how OG have played their T side so far, even though it hasn't been too many rounds, they seem to have a more uh, good understanding as how to maneuver around the map, the, the defaulting looks way more cohesive as well, and they're not really telegraphing things as obviously as I feel NIP did on their T side, yeah, so yeah, yeah. I still feel that it is a lot of work in progress, a lot of work remaining to be done for, the, for this NIP roster where we don't even know if this is going to be the final lineup. Uh, but yeah, this could be the final potential round where we have NIP in the Sky Esports Masters here. Well, we have got an upcoming match later today as well, and that's Forza versus Big. Everybody's excited about that game, and that'll be coming to your screens just after this one concludes. And it looks like we are going to be concluding matters here between OG and NIP very shortly. Double scouts, five sevens for the rest for NIP to try and stay alive. It's not been the outing they would have wanted for this new roster, but it is the beginning. And not even really truly begun. Heavy God, Elfter Monster. 5-7 gets a glimpse of Heavy God and decides it wants to try and fight it, but Heavy God and Keto now combine and they clear out the first two players of the defense. Keto actually doing absolutely everything. He gets three kills that rise and wrinkle the last two remaining players, and this one is all over. NIP about to throw in the towel. 13-4. We thought overpass could be the bounce back story for NIP. Turns out it is domination. Oh. A one-sided street. OG will eliminate ninjas in pajamas from the Sky Esports Masters and OG will continue their run. I like how everyone everyone in OG are like really rejoicing and see the next is standing up and heavy got do his usual celebrations and Moto just like smiles quietly, like in a very content fashion. Yeah, good showing from OG. That that was such a, a very solid map of uh, overpass. I really like what I saw from the CT side. Aggressive, in your face, never allowing NIP to feel comfortable for any setups. Right, NIP obviously a new team. They haven't had too many reps on this map as well. Ob obviously. They were waiting to, you know, maybe pull off some, some, some execute, some fakes or whatever, but they never really got the opportunity to do so with how uh, abrasive OG were being in their faces. Yeah. And then, I mean, like a 10-2 scoreline, it was going to be a donezo right there. Yeah, well, that last second grenade came in, I knew it was over. That's beautiful. That was it. That was the final blow. I actually knew it was over when it was like 9-2. Yeah, I know, but I mean, we kind of we kind of could tell, but uh, that was really the, the cherry on top of the... The nade on top. Yeah, the yeah. nade on top of the poo cake. <laughs> yeah, it was it was really that nice for NIP. <laughs> the poo cake, yeah, yeah. of course. Yeah, it was not good. But, uh, you know, looking forward to the future. We'll see what roster they bring in uh, for the future and what they decide to go with. Maybe but this might be the future. We don't know. We don't know yet. Uh, but, yeah, it's uh, it's it's a bit disappointing, I won't lie, right? Obviously, you're looking at the, the name value of NIP. You're looking at Alex and Rez who survived the, the purge, so to speak, post a major uh, debacle for the team. And then you have... You know, the wrinkle getting picked up who, again, I don't want to point too many fingers. Obviously, he's a new kid coming into the team, and it's a symptom of, you know, the team struggling, which is why he would struggle as well, being as an sure, offer. Yeah. But, yeah, I feel like there are some positive signs, but I do have to kind of squint a little bit to find them. So, hopefully, over time, the Snip lineup can do something. Yeah, definitely hoping they can do something for the future. But it was great having them here at the Sky Sports Masters for the short amount of time that we did. Uh, they took a win versus God's Reign, and, and that was kind of it. So, um I think plenty of work to, to do for this team, obviously, for the future. But for OG, man, we can focus in on some of the positives there. This is a team that's looking very yeah. good, actually. I, they, they Heavy Gods, obviously a great player. I don't know how long they're going to be able to hold on to him. But this Moto pickup seems pretty good, man. He's, he's playing better than I seen Regali. Like, so. Yeah, I think the most impressive thing for me from Moto is, look, he was playing on the TSM lineup, which, you know, a lot of, sometimes I wake up in the morning, I'm like, wait, TSM still have a team? What? Like, yeah. I, I don't even remember it. So I didn't have a chance to really watch him play uh, in that team. But him joining into this lineup, we uh, it was, again, a very last-minute announcement, Regali being benched just before Sky Esports Masters started. And on day one, you could see he was, he was kind of missing a lot of shots. He was feeling super uncomfortable. But the past 
few days, the next couple of games they've played, he's been looking so very solid, especially as we pointed out on his CT side, he just seems to be very good to uh, do not miss those sitters, right? Get that opening, get that uh, opening kill, and even get, you know, multi-kills like this and does a very good job keeping, staying alive and keeping the T's at bay. And, you know, if, if that's more than you can ask for from your CT side offer. Yeah, definitely more than you can ask for, and we're just going to see uh, a highlight reel of It's OG just going to be OG CT highlights, yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's mainly just going to be OG winning rounds on the CT side here and, and not too much else, but I think for NIP, a couple of positives, certainly the fact that Ma Alex had a couple of better individual showings, I think, in this tournament. Yeah. Um, and I think Maxter has been a good pickup. Rez was a thing he didn't miss, man. Uh, it's, it's for, for us, it's like, you know, when, when he hits those shots, when you see the kills he's getting, it's like, holy hell, that's that's like some, you know, dong to simple-esque level sort of kills, but it's so, just just so sporadic. And and again, it's the same thing we've been saying since 2019, it's yeah. too bloody sporadic, and you can't afford to have that when, you know, you've been one of the guys who have survived this entire uh, refresh of this team. And then, uh, for, yeah, for, for Wrinkle, I feel we're going to see more from this young kid. I think he's got the, the mechanical ability. It's just that he, obviously, when you're part of a, of a roster which is still trying to find its feet, it's not going to be as easy for you to shine except against the poorer opposition. And this OG lineup looked pretty good. I think Moto, especially the fact that he came into this team just a, a day before the event started and the fact that he's starting to really get look better and better as the tournament progresses, I think it's, uh, it's, it's really cool to see from him. Definitely, he's a standout player presented by 1xBet, uh, 1.46 rating, 18 kills on a very, very convincing map of very few rounds. So, great work from Moto. CT Alpine looks fantastic and excited for his future as he's obviously had some time in some decent organizations already with TSM and, and OG. And hopefully this can be a bit more of a stable home for him to get to see more of Moto at some of the bigger events down the line but I mean we're looking at the if, the rest of the tournament now OG do gain that next matchup in the lower bracket and we actually ha are maybe getting that matchup between Big and OG that Sirison was wanting to play against Kito uh, obviously they got to get through fours first yeah that's going to be exciting right now obviously the next matchup um, if Big would still be the favorites right yeah. even though fours have looked very plucky they've looked pretty surprisingly Solid despite his entire, you know, dead team walking, uh, the label they have over their over their lineup right now. I think big as a team are just overall. They have all the pieces they want. They've been on the grind nonstop. Yeah. They should potentially be getting the win. But yeah, I'm, I'm actually looking forward to it. If Big do win the game later on today, Keto versus his ex-teammates, uh, that's a spicy affair. Yeah, 13-4 win for OG. Moto topping the charts. Keto close in behind at 15-11. Another good performance from Keto uh, today. He had two good maps. I'm very excited to see if he can keep that up throughout the tournament because, again, a big criticism around Keto is the fact that sometimes he can be inconsistent with his performances. But when he does have a good day, he can be a great fragging in-game leader for this OG side. Look over at NIP side of things. Wrinkle, not a quiet day for him at the office, man. Yeah, you, you kind of hate to see that, right? But I, again, I don't want to... It's I've, I haven't seen him too much, uh, in all honesty. I did see one or two of his games before this tournament with, with, his, with his particular lineup. But I feel like for Wrinkle, again, right, it depends on how your team's doing. You're the primary opera. If uh, the rest of your team's going to be... If the rest of your team's going to be struggling overall and you don't have the op in your hands, your weapon of choice, things can look pretty grim, right? So I'm not going to write him off quite yet. I just feel like overall, uh, when you talk about synergy and just comms and just, you know, not throwing away so many man advantageous situations, which is not the case today, but we saw that yesterday against Bed Boom, for example. I think there's a lot of work still to be done. But hey, they said, they said, they said, they said 2025, so they still have some time. Well, a standout player of the day presented by one expert was Modo. Now we've got a chance to have an interview with him with Lucifer. Hello everyone, welcome to the post-game interview. We have Modo joining us from OG, winning, winning right now in a very close map, first one, but then the second seemed an easy PC game. How does it feel, Modo, winning the game and now continuing your series in the Sky Sports Masters? Uh, I feel really good. I think we should have closed uh, way earlier on uh, Vertigo. We kind of choked some rounds, but uh, overall we played uh, really good CS. The overpass was um, finally good for me. And um, I felt uh, like uh, we played the best this game. Oh, you were uh, indeed, but I I'll bring it this question back uh, where you came in as a stand-in for the game with OG, right? In Sky Sports Masters. Um, initially, everybody was looking around, is it going to work out or not? First game didn't work in your favor, but now you're performing, showing everybody and proving them wrong. And I mean, just now you were the MVP. So how does it feel? 
Uh, I feel really good like um, um, like first um, first day with Aurora was uh, obviously a nightmare for me because like um, I want to say for every player guys don't read the Hustle TV comments put it on sport don't don't watch it so it got a little bit into my mind but now I have uh, different emotions I'm uh, I'm really confident with the guys and like I'm I'm a different man. Good to hear. And now your next game is going to be maybe against Peg or Fosse. That's going to be tomorrow. So, what are your plans for that? Who do you think can come up, and what would you want to do next? I mean, obviously, we need to. We want to go further, and like uh, we're gonna play like we did today, and the best uh, will win. Wishing you guys the best as you have showed the form being an MVP. I mean, we've loved your op plays and looking forward to a lot more. Thank you so much for joining here, Modo. Maybe another interview and another win. Thank you, guys. Thank you. See you.
Back to Sky Esports Masters, powered by AMD. My name is Dinko, joined by Bly for the second best of three of the day. I think this one's going to be a real matchup that tests how good Big really are in this competition because it's Big versus Forza. Fours, obviously a team now that is kind of a dead team walking, as we've said. But they have the dead team, dead team energy. And they are actually fragging out, aren't they? So for, for Big, I think it's like clear they should be favorites in this game, but whether or not it's going to be an easy battle for them is yet to be seen. Yeah, if, it, if you're bringing up an analogy for a dead team walking, you know, you th you're not thinking of uh, Night of the Living Dead slow zombies. No, these are the zombies from 28 days later, 20, 28 hours later, just like in your face running at you. Uh, and I feel like fours have that a little bit of vibe going with the uh, pep in the step, so to speak, right? Even yesterday and the opening game as well, they had a big upset win. Uh, th they've been a team, I think, performing way above any expectations right now, considering not even a real team. They're basically a core of bunch of uh, bench players with a stand-in as well. But I feel like looking at players like Tanir, for example, like Kellyan, who I believe is a stand-in, they're just performing, they're just fragging out and just seem to be having a good time right there. You can take a look for us. Uh, they, they took down Ents initially, which is a massive upset against Aurora. The second map was a bit of a wipeout, but the first one was very competitive. So, in all honesty, they've been playing better than, I guess, half the teams we have here in Sky Esports Masters. Yeah, definitely. Uh, so, moving into the lower bracket, Ryan, we're just going to be at that matchup at the bottom of your screen. Big versus Fours. The winner of this goes on to play OG. We had OG obviously defeat NIP 2 0 just mere moments ago in a very convincing second map victory. And uh, two days ago, we had did an interview with Searson, and Searson was saying he wants to play against Kito. He wants to get that matchup against his former teammate in front. Uh, not former friend, uh, current friend, former teammate. <laughs> yeah. Uh, not to be confused. And of course, that matchup could happen. In fact, it is the most likely outcome. But I think you can't doubt fours as much as you probably did coming into the tournament. Yeah, I mean, if you look at the uh, the matches we had today, the NIP OG seemed to have been the, the more, you know, up in the air match, more 50-50, but it was OG come winning it pretty convincingly. And yeah, I think fours have been a bit of a surprise for me, especially uh, I'm looking at Tanir, I'm looking at Kelly, I'm looking at Stinix. I think they've had some light type performances coming out, considering the fact that the teams have had to play were Ents and then Aurora, right? Two of the, the favorites coming into this, uh, in, into this tournament. So I think they've really put up a commendable effort effort uh, and uh, I think Big would be doing a big mistake if they were to take things very uh, very lightly. Shalfi as well looking pretty solid. Overall you look at all these players you know they, they could be uh, a couple of these players have been around the, the block for a while and a majority of them could be potentially I feel over the over the next couple of years the uh, the future so to speak of uh, of CIS Counter-Strike. Well the future mixed in with some of the legacy of German Counter-Strike currently occupy the ranks of Big. It's Tabson. Obviously, the OG now of uh, of Big. He was there when Big was formed with God B, the coach standing behind him. And then we've got Crimbo coming in for the Big Academy over the last few years. He's been really stepping into his own and becoming a much more mature, well rounded player. Process coming in, one of the more recent additions to the roster. And Searson making his return. JDC, after his time in Maus, played with Double O Nation and didn't really find too much success there. So I'm sure he's happy to find himself in a big seat. But we've got Stinix as the player to watch here. His uh, rating so far, 1.02. Didn't know much about Stinix before coming into this event, if I'm honest. So pretty good to see him having a decent showing. Yeah, I think Stinix uh, was uh, quite a surprise for me because considering the uh, the fragging output he was putting out alongside Kelly and as well, a lot of heads up plays. Also really helps and when you're a lineup like Fours right now where there's 
a lot of uncertainty and clouds of uh, of doubt about where the future is going to be. You you're also kind of allowed the the freedom, just be a little bit more YOLO, a little bit, just be a little bit more free flowing, a little bit more unafraid, right? And that I feel has been the reason why they've been able to kind of perform to the level they have so far. Yeah, Taps and uh, obviously having a great tournament here as well. 1.13 rating. I mean, this guy could have been in the face clans of the world. He could have been in the top organizations but no. of his career, but he's decided to stay with Big. I can, I can respect it in a way. I, I don't necessarily agree with it, but he decided he is going Tapsin to be... I think could have a lot of trophies in his career if he had decided... It's to kind of like the Case Serato story. More, more recently, we talked about Case Serato and how, you know, he's just languishing in that in the Furia jail, so to speak. And the same was a discussion with Tapsin for many years. But right now, I think he's kind of uh, accepted the fact that he's going to be kind of like the, you know, this IGL role model talisman for German Counter-Strike. I think he's very content with that. And so be it. If that's going to be what leads to uh, the resurgence of German CS in the near future, I think that's, uh, that's already... Going to be a good sign as we do see the map beaters coming in. Fours are going to be picking Ancient. Big with Anubis pick, no surprise once again. And of course, Nuke, if you do see it, will be a decider. It's a great, great trio. Some people might even call it the best three maps we have right now in a rotation, and I wouldn't necessarily disagree. That being said, once again, Dinko, Ancient Anubis, here we go. Yeah, I feel like this does look good for a, a big 2-0 possibility. They're very comfortable on Ancient. We've seen that already. So, you know, getting Ancient is the first map when your opponent picks it into you, and then obviously being able to fall back on an Anubis pick. I, I feel like Big will be very happy with the vetoes they've been seeing in this tournament. Oh, yeah, for sure. I think Big have... Apart from the first game, when two maps where they just look very deflated, they were looking very clean. Now, again, I don't want to... Again, it feels like I'm just stomping on God's Rain, but that God's Rain game, game they had, they didn't really have to do much, right? But what I liked coming out from Big in that game was they weren't playing loosey-goosey. They were playing very structured, very solid. The fundamentals kind of treating like a scrim of sorts, so to speak. So they're looking very solid, and I do believe... Dinka, we have everyone ready here in the server. Yeah, we do. And JDC was a big player versus God's Reign. Had a lot of fun inside of middle. We'll see if that transpires again. It's big to start on the CT side. 1x bet, though. It's faster, it's easier, and it's better. The 1x bet mobile application is waiting for you. Download and register now over at 1x bet, your esports bookmaker. But we're going to book it through middle. R4s. They've got plenty of players here already. It's a bit of a spread. One outside of the B bomb side, one outside of A through middle so trying to keep as many options available to themselves at the beginning of this pistol big yet to detect anybody they've got more of a stack towards the b-bomb side but two inside of a Searson will see those players Ooh. sprinting through donut good for a catch shot for Searson doubles up unfortunately for Searson though his teammates didn't do anything and it is big collapsing down to just two players coming back in in the three take fours have the bomb down nice shot from taps and even better from JDC and just like that, it's Kelly and Luck alone in a one versus two. He's got to come back into this. And that is a clean shot on the Julies. He knows that defuse ain't happening. He knows it isn't happening. But Tapson doesn't care. What a shot from the in-game leader. Kelly and will fall. And Big will find the pistol round. I don't think Kelly even did anything wrong, though. What a shot from Tapson. And what a retake. A 2v3. Bomb planted. No hesitation whatsoever from the captain. And Big... Again, this is predicated off Searson hitting a couple of nice shots at an A-bomb site because it looked like for a moment he'd just get run over without getting even a single kill, and that would have made this retake pretty much impossible. But big, the two veterans of this, of this German team and the German side, Tapson and Searson, coming up big, and with that, and it's going to be the first round going the way of big. Force though, bomb planted. Force by. Four Galils as well. That's a lack of utility, a distinct lack of utility. Yeah, it's not not going to be too easy for them to actually get into the bomb sites. They're kind of hoping for a mistake as well from a big player. Perhaps this is the one process, though. Water tight hold. Jiggle. Gather information. Call that smoke out and keep these forwards players at bay. If you're forwards and you have lack of utility, you almost have to try and draw more and more out of big. You want to try and even the playing field here. Smoking two flashes. I'm not too sure what they're going to do with this, honestly. Um, bomb. All the way towards uh, B double doors. And JDC. We saw how. Oh, that is. Okay, that's, a, that's something. JDC. Feeling uncomfortable. Goes for the peak, and suddenly. Things have turned around here. M4 can be picked up. There is a player inside a donut, though, and Crimbo can do everything. He's hearing the footsteps. 
They're not checking him. Gonna get the first. Second player is so very low. Finds a kill. 3v2 still looking for more. And he's gonna find his third as well. Last list left standing. Salta in a 1v2. Seltzer doing what he can to pull this clutch off. He goes into the bomb site, limited time, 25 seconds. He'll start that plan and commit to it, and instantly that is his death sentence. Grimbo to peak, and so far, so good from big. That's a force buy that does not pay off for fours. They do not get even a plant, and gopi has got a huge wooden pole for some reason. Uh, not quite sure why <laughs> he's got. God, they're doing some construction. Maybe it's a musical instrument, Dinka. Yeah, maybe. The, the wooden stick, we call that one. <laughs> It looks like a master splinter walking around the back there. Did I ever tell you that, uh, that TMNT was basically a bit of a, a tribute to Daredevil? No, I didn't. No, you didn't. And I'll tell you how. Have you, have you, have you read or watched Dare Daredevil? Yeah, I watched the, the show. And you know a little bit of TMNT, right? Yes. Yeah. So, uh, it, the original comics, because there's going to be an equal round, just do a little bit of storytelling. In the original comics of Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, when you see the, the 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 ooze drip down to the sewers. It's actually you can see a blind guy, a blind kid crossing the street. So it was the same time, the same ooze that gave birth to Daredevil, Matt Murdock, was the same ooze. Give it to the turtles. That gave it to the turtles. Oh. Also, uh, Daredevil's teacher, his mentor, is sp is not splint. It's stick. Ah. What do you get from a stick? Splinters. Massive wow. splinter. All right, that's pretty cool. The more you learn. Blood educating everybody at home. And now we will see a fours. The only thing I know about is Counter Strike and comic books. Counter Strike and comic books. It's quite, it's quite a good combo. And uh, AK 47 is out for fours. Finally a buy on the T side. And that made. That was very quick indeed. Big just melting them. Again, process. Process. Sitting at the top of the B round. He's going to be pretty careful. He's going to try and set up utility for taps in and. Obviously it works out very well, and, and that's something Big have always been very good at, is just being able to have great team play off of utility. But that's going to leave the A-bomb side completely empty, and that's going to allow force. It's a pretty good call as well, knowing how much pressure is being exerted outside of B to get the bomb down. Not too far off that one, Searson, but the bomb will be planted regardless. And they must feel comfortable playing retake if they're willing to go for this setup, but JDC is died for the smoke, and they're smoked out a donut. This doesn't look that comfortable for Big at all, does it? Yeah, Taps is looking for uh, a late flank towards Elba. There's no one there. They're not going for it. They're has saving. Has to be to save. Yeah. Interesting scenario there for Big. And even a bomb plant coming in from Forest right there, they didn't go for the corner plant on the bomb side because that's exactly what Sirson was shooting at with his AWP at Deagle, and he could have prevented the plant from taking place. And steps a little bit closer towards Donut. And uh, a good reaction, a good call coming in from Forest there. Deciding that with all the pressure being exerted outside of B, all the utility, all the tension being drawn there, the A bomb site could be a point of entry, a point of egress, and they will be able to clinch their first. There he is, look at it. Look at that huge metal pole he's got. Doing some stretches. <laughs> yeah. When you get the old age, God B, I understand it. You're uh, I mean I, I mean, don't you use that when you like have like a push day or like a shoulder day? Yeah. I so you like it. stretch out your back. Yeah, yeah, and his shoulders warm yeah. it up a little bit. So he's getting ready for the gym. I, I could use one for my back. <laughs> God, he's such a legend. Dude. All right, hold up. Fast B. Fast B, fast jet for Kellyan, but they're already through on the default. And plenty of attackers still already deep into the bomb site. Good huge. work from Stinex. That is huge indeed. So very quick. Molotov's going to prevent him from pushing down any further. It's going to buy a little bit of time. A little bit of space for his teammates. It looks like another call for the save here. Not feeling super comfortable are the CTs. And despite the fact that JDC is present towards Jaguar, I like the switch up from Forza. It's fast, no respect play. And Process, not aware that a player had crossed in straight towards the bomb site. And that's Stinix. A player we pointed out as well, Dinko. Like when it comes to Stinix, and, uh, and between Stinix, Kellyan, and to near, the fragging output is pretty high on this team. Yeah, that was a 45. Like, they lost the first kill, but because Stinex got so deep into the bomb site without being detected, he was able to be sort of an element to survive the big one ready for. Wars are able to get their second round of row. Uh, three safe weapons, though, obviously is good for big because he can obviously keep buying. Uh, it doesn't get any easier for fours, but it's good early signs that they are going to be able to compete with big here on Ancient. But it's a map pick, so considering how proficient Big have looked at Anubis, I think a map went here 
front engine would be uh, an essential here for Forza. But because Big have gone for these uh, back to back saves, they still have enough money to work with. But uh, yeah, Forza is definitely pressuring Tapson and his men. No real fight being taken towards mid this time. Red hits JDC waiting for that little shit. Flash is good. JDC, fortunately for Big, is still able to get one out of that. It looked like the worst case scenario was about to unfold and JDC was going to walk away with nothing. But Krimbo is worried about them bursting through CT now. So he's covering Temple, but Stinex is looking sharp. And Krimbo could not stop that from happening. Searson, oh Ooh. my god, fours. Okay. Save. Looking so, so honed in right now. And that's tied up three to three. I mean, there's nothing big can do that. Like, they I mean, are what, what, it's the headshot. What do you do when you're getting peaked like that from Stinix and I think it was Shelfie there? These teams are so hard to play against. Like, when you play against these like Eastern European sides, you just get headshot, and you gotta just accept that sometimes. I think the closest uh, ex the closest experience I have is when I'm playing face it here in uh, in Asia, and I just look at the the opponents. I'm all right. This guy's got like 90 ping. I wonder where he's from? Mongolia. Oh no. And then I look at a click on his profile and it's like playing in the Mongolian uh, league, MESL, and then I'm like, alright, this is gonna be a fun time. It wasn't a fun time he for me. It just, like, the there's nothing you can do. It's like, <laughs> you're doing everything right and this guy insta just taps you. Yep. Something about a Mongolians in Counter Strike, man. It just seems like they have a, like an infinite supply of players. I remember, uh, I think it was, or was it, uh, I think it was Red Eye who, who had an interview with, uh, was it Mara? I forget, but the manager to coach for uh, for the Mongols back in 2016 and I am Taipei when they won, and it's like, you know, what's with the Mongolian pairs and like shooting so good? You know, how are you guys so good? And he said, well, there's fucking nothing better else to do with Mongolia. <laughs> That's what he said. Which <laughs> <laughs> is such a great answer. That <laughs> is amazing, yeah. Literal quote from, uh, I believe it was Mara, but I could be wrong, but uh, one of the Mongolians. Oh, that is really cool. That's a baller answer. So far, fours have been dominating big in the gun rounds. So, let's see if that changes now. A lot of success yesterday for big on Ancient was the fact that they were able to get this mid play working out pretty well from JDC and Krimbo. Where it takes Kelly out of the round. Captain committed to the Jack War. He needs to be quick on that kill. First couple of bullets missed, but he's able to sink it regardless. And Tamir trades out, but it's still big ahead thanks to their early success in the middle of it. Fours are trying to pull that one back, so they'll stay committed in mid. Donut out. Searson does not allow that to happen. Mm -hmm. Strikes with power and fury. Yeah, the first convincing uh, round coming out from big here. It's the rifles. Shelfie. Couple of warning shots in the direction of JDC. John DeCastro. So far, a kind of a quiet start here in the game. Near. We'll find Prosus and Prosus! Not expecting a second player nearby. But with time running out, Shalfi has to make up his mind. Just does he go for a Hail Mary play towards the B side or just hold on to his AK 47? And I think he's going to go for the right call to have enough money anyway to uh, go for a full buy. And even though he doesn't get any. Lost bonus, still $6,300 is quite a bit of money, Dinka. Good to see Big bounce back, though. Starting to get a little worrying for them. Mm -hmm. But a good gun round, regardless. And it is more success for middle. And sort of this advanced cave setup that Tabson likes to try and get away with. Searson had the strike and perfectly did so. The process. Yeah, not ready <laughs> for the second play. Yeah, uh, all things considered, should be happy with the way the round panned out. Again, uh, the money is a precarious position for big. So swinging a couple of rounds needs to be the imperative here. Tanir, well ahead of everyone else. Lurk smoke, but the CTs are aware as Pros is not going to fall for it. Not a good start round here for four as they're down two players just like that with three for many inside of the bomb site. They're ball planted and oh, it's a headshot up the towards bomb. B lane, but the second player then peaked. The bomb fortunately had a, a good roll 
over towards the bottom of the B ramp. The boys are able to collect it again and try and finish this round, but it looks like they're about to be finished off by Big, who will push themselves into the territory of a 5 3 scoreline. Grenades dumping on default. Damage being done across of it. And it looks like Shelfie has no hope in hell, but he will cling on to life. And unfortunately for him, Searson's going to rip that out of his hands. Sad seeing JDC's table there behind Crimbo. And unoccupied, man. Just chilling in his green room. <laughs> A very green room. Maybe scared of uh, Goppy's stick. His <laughs> Goppy's <stick>. beaten stick. <laughs> Player over peaks. Whack. <laughs> <laughs> it reminds me of Sura Scoot's uh, DNP bat. Yeah. The do not peak yeah. bat. Or the somebody cattle prod. I wish I had that. You know, cattle prod or a cricket bat or a baseball bat, you know, back in the, the early days of Asian Counter-Strike. I think it would have really fixed a lot of teams, I'll tell you that. Yeah, but it wouldn't have given us the moments. That's true. But I can imagine there's somebody holding that B-bombs and a dust tube pushing tunnels every single round for 15 rounds straight. I've seen this happen, Dinko. I've, I had to live through that nightmare. <laughs> I remember uh, just casting those PGL RMRs for Asia with you. And, uh, during, uh, the, during the COVID years. Yeah, yeah, it was just like round robin infinite matches. And somebody would just not take some of those games very seriously. And why this is great. But that's why I love him though. He would do the same thing even if it was a major. Ooh, mid fight is JDC's. This is much better from uh, Big as well. Like, you know, they're playing together right there. And yeah. Searson up close, up in hand. He hits these. Very uncomfortable. Seriously, no, nope, I don't. I no longer feel good about Seriously, but he gets back to Donut. Just the one AK and Galil. No utility left for the teeth. This More of a rotation from the A for Big, though. Yeah, it's going to be tough for Fours to break through this heap of utility that Bigger mm -hmm. throwing at them. I forgot who, I don't know why, why my memory's failing me. It could be the old age, I think. But uh, the major, the team. Who are cooking this uh, the Molotov for the boost right there um, from the T side? Do you remember that? No, I don't remember that. Uh, I should remember that I was working that game. Sirison, <laughs> uh, patience this time from the temple. Forwards try to uh, pump the brakes and try and get big to second guess themselves. Uh, they feel pretty comfortable leaving Sirison here alone. We'll have to see if that gamble pays off because there is actually nobody inside of the site with him. It is just. <laughs> He's now spotted the bomb. It's down on the floor. They got to pick that up and they got to push into the future. Because there's no utility, there's no peaks. He's confident to go forward, but he misses the shot. And now JDC was barreling Ooh. back through middle of the donut. He gets there in time, but Tanir what? is tenacious. And a second shot on the deagle. It taps him, it falls, and then bomb in hand to death. Expensive. Won't be Tanir, but yeah, expensive in the end. But big still picking up rounds, advancing their CT side campaign. Very, very expensive round there, but yeah. Still big, going to be reasonably happy. Nice shots coming from Tanir, who's honestly been just hitting some crazy, crazy shots this entire tournament. Stick will slowly but surely start to expand their lead. It's going to be yet another eco coming out for Forza, but more of a, of a light investment. Equalize the money out a little bit. Have a he hero AK-47 in the hands of Stinix. And why not? He's been kind of crazy with the openings. <laughs> and Kellyan trying to edge the smoke, Dinko. But sometimes when you edge too much, it can lead to a problem. There was a problem there for him. Pull it. Now Process able to rip apart Stinex and now they're into the bomb site. Forwards looking to plant that bomb without issue and he will be allowed that mercy but holding on to the bomb to see it explode is almost impossible at this point. Process with a follow-up headshot. Seltzer realizes proactivity is needed and Searson, yeah, well, he's just ready for that, isn't he? So seven rounds for Big. The CT side is starting to look very strong. There was a period of form there for Forwards but Big woken up almost instantly. And the reality is setting in that fours aren't comfortable. Mm -hmm. Some of those hero plays, the fast hits towards B. Well, I was netting them a few rounds earlier on. It hasn't really been uh, so good since then. Still, two more opportunities here, Dinko. Maybe four or five rounds. Yeah, two more opportunities. That's what they've got. Down the oh, rest, beautiful. through the fire, Full. through the flames, and Kellyan is the victim of the Searson sniper. And Big are just looking so in control right now on this CT side.
That is so in your face. The Love it. Oh, is still here. Stinex with the headshot. JDC taken down at red and oh, what? A disastrous lineup. Seltzer gets a sweeping double. And the fours, they are now completely in the driver's seat for this round. Nothing. <laughs> Nothing Sirison can do. Gets the opening down to 13 HP, running into the fire and flames, and yeah. The mid kill and then a double from from Salta. Beautiful stuff. Yeah, if we can just get one more round, Dinko. I think four is still something to work with. If you get to five, I think they're going to be pretty happy with considering it looked like big we're going to be running away with this. Yeah, big definitely looked like they were going to run away with that half, and I think probably this round I'm not really going to say is going to stop them. Uh, this seems like an abnormality. The lineup in Cave was very unlucky for big, but they were able to make it work there. Seltzer in particular, obviously. And you got to take those if you're fours, you know? You get chances like that every now and then. So, 7 to 4, last round of this half. Big looking to exit the half with a 8 to 4 scoreline. They're going to do it against AKs, and they actually have Prosis down to an MP9. He has to get the extra utility for the team. In control, being set up early. Good utility. Secured. It's the smoke and Molly's in behind. I'm trying to force Beeway to be an uncomfortable area for Forrest to occupy. Well, JDC! Okay, Kelly, and that is massive. Now, Susan has so much work to do here, Denko. Can't afford to get traded. Yeah, Susan coming back out of there alive. He has picked up that kill and now stands on default. Flashes in towards Donut. Searson is blinded. And unfortunately for Searson, no one was chasing after him with those flashes. But he was in position to close this one. But Prosis on the MP9 getting spammed down, but is still able to retreat just about. But he's taken so much damage on board. We shouldn't have won that fight in the middle, but Kelly walks right into him. Oh, Searson's gone. Tabs and spotted. This round surely cannot this. happen, but Tapson gets a double kill, and now it's up against Kellyan. Tapson, the Inkim leader for Big, could win this. And give Big their eighth round that they so desperately want, and Tapson with one hell of a clutch to close. I thought they'd done enough, Denko, enough to steal that one away from Big. Taking down Tapson, actually overlooking the lurk towards mid, but two kills. On the B bomb site, huge fragging found by the captain. Eight to four. F favoring big, I won't lie. But you know, win the pistol, and suddenly things can easily turn around here for the side of fours. Yeah, definitely so. Process, you see this shot really shouldn't have happened on that MP9, but he was able to make it work, maybe able to make it sing. And I think he'll be very happy with that kind of performance. But this taps in clutch, man. It's uh, Forge just looking hands busy, coming out of cave, falling asleep. Thought the round was done. And taps and gives them a rude awakening. Pistol round about to start here for the second half. It's big on the T side now. We'll see what taps and God B can cook up for Forge to try and swallow. And there seems to be a little tech issue to kick things off here for the second half. So hopefully they can get into back into the action as quickly as possible. But in the meantime, you guys can go over to, over to 1xbet. They have a variety of markets and high odds awaiting you. Place your bets on the website and mobile app right now. 1xbet. Good game. Well paid. Crimbo's left a building. Peace, Crimbo. Peace is out of sight. All right, I'm done. I'll be just saying... I'm I'm just so always like scared of speaking words in German because I feel like I was just gonna butcher it. I love speaking German. You know, there was a uh, I went to a fortress in Salzburg in Austria, mm -hmm. and uh, I think it was called the Zugzimmer or something like that. Let me figure out. But it basically means the thing, the room of things, and it's where they kept their armories. Word for... I do love how an ambulance is called Krankenwagen. 
Krankenwagen. Yeah, that's that. Sounds good. aggressive. Call the Krankenwagen. I'm just like, yeah, no. A pram, a kid's, a, a stroller, as Americans would call it. Kinderwagen. Kid's wagon. <laughs> yeah, but imagine, like, you know, you're injured. Like, call the Krankenwagen. I'm like, no, no, don't call the Krankenwagen. It's such an aggressive language. I love it. It's very metal. Here we go. Heavy, heavy stack to speed. This could actually work out here for fours. Four CTs lying in a way, but great utility. Oh, Tanir is burning alive. I don't even know how he's still alive and kicking, but he will escape on a measly eight points of health. Three for Kellyan, but they still have the player advantage. Cynix is getting hunted down by the T's, pushing in, still alive with the Duelies. Three kills for him, and Tapson left alone in a one versus three, able to find just a two before he will be found out. That is just such a massive run from Stinnick Stinko. I had no idea how he stayed yeah. alive and gets three kills. Yeah, that is uh, quite incredible from Stinnick. And that is now four is needing a round that is given to them. It's uh, Zook House. Zook House. Zook means uh, stuff. So stuff house or stuff room. So what do we call it? Museum. Old Zook House? <laughs> what it's old It's very gem. literal, isn't it? Yeah. German's very literal. I mean... I guess most languages are literal, except English. It doesn't make sense sometimes. Yeah, but uh, a lot of words in, you know, like hospital, hospital, spital, yeah. German, Krankenhaus. Well, to be fair, English does find its roots in like multiple, uh, like you have the Indo-Aryan languages, then you have like uh, roots in Latin, obviously, in, in Greek, in Greek, Roman, even uh, Eastern languages, actually. Yeah. Like I said, you know, no can do comes from how Chinese used to translate actual Mandarin directly into English. Yeah, and well, now we, uh, most, a lot of people talk it, you know? Yeah. Well, here we are. It is going to be a little bit of a tech issue, so we'll resolve that one. And it seems to be done because the time is ticking down, Blur. Yeah, that's a good sign. Full eco for a big don't know bomb getting planted. I, I think they were like, so unlucky to uh, not get the early kills there in pistol round because the utility deployment was so very well done by big but uh very fortunate for a couple of forest players to stay alive and combine hp of 11 i believe it was between the two of them and of course stinix just a hero performance his, his top fragging for his team 12 kills while everyone else are seven and below so he's really doing putting in the work here shelfie m4a1 in hand sorry mp9 in hand i do believe that is Salter, beg your pardon, my eyes have failed me. Oh, understandable, Blow. We're pretty far away from the television. I'm pretty old and blind as well. Big taking the time. Waiting for a little stroll into the bomb site. I think it's about to be a stroll that they wish they didn't go on because Seltzer's MP9, plaster with a unicorn, is ready to go. I think a lot of money about to be made from this little SMG. This little Velociraptor. JDC got boosted up. Seltzer now spots that. He's got to realize, okay, if you got a boost going, there's got to be more than one. And the smoke goes down. The bomb plant. The kill from Searson. Bomb plant denied. And that is kind of exactly how you want it to go if you're forced. And uh, they keep it all nice and clean. Nice and clean. I'm looking to close things up here. They would have liked the bomb plant, but even without it, they're going to be uh, pretty happy. It's pretty much a full eco, apart from that one smoke. Purchase. Glockenspiel. I just love the way it sounds. Yes. The chimes are big as they make their way into battle again. Coding the V lane in fire. He is force. and assert some dominance towards Elbow. They got that MP9 close to the smoke. It's going to be an XM 1014. It's hungry. The alligator only able to feast on one. It's Tabson that goes down. Crimbo replies. Now the climb up heaven. Will it be ascendancy to glory? Uh, it looks like it. Crimbo caught not expecting that flank. And an AK-47 now into the hands of Kellyan. 
upgraded from the SMG. Shalfi covers his backside and elbow push from Process is punished. And we are now looking at 8-7 to seven, unless JDC and Searson have something magical up their sleeve to pull this round back. Searson's got deep but long. He's got a chance, but loses the fight against Tanir, putting it all on John DeCastro, the international man of mystery, looking to pull off a mischievous clutch. And with 45 seconds, there is some time to piece the clues together. And he'll check to his right to near his first victim. Caught it now, though, and the mystery is unraveled. It is discovered. And seven rounds for fours as they are one round away from tying up the scoreline. That felt that felt a little discombobulated from Big, right? You, you, get, you get the first kill over here, and then Krimbo. No one is just going for the boost while Krimbo is just pushing into its cave by himself. There's no potential for a tr for a trade. And while, you know, it was a great call from fours to go for the double boost up to its heaven, that's something that Big should have been aware of, they should be wary of, considering the fact that Utility was deployed by the CDs towards mid, you should notice someone there, and JDC was so, he was smoked off from elbows, there's not much you can do, so, yeah, uh, not ideal from Big, and oh, that's gonna, that's gonna sting, bullets, fires, and flames, yeah, like a fresh poster. Big left into the D-bomb site. And are now dead. It's all tied up at it. And just like that, fours are in the game again. It looked like Big were going to be the far superior team in that first half. And yeah, you're right. The gun round previous is not a good look for Big. It looked disjointed. And I think it's quite worrying for Big now at this point. Yeah. Uh, CD side was looking much better. And so far on the C side, apart from the pistol round, which did come down to a little bit of a lot going the way of Forza, apart from that, they've looked pretty solid here, but Big have looked pretty... Well, they haven't had too many opportunities either with the rifles, but that first rifle, ri rifle round was uh, a bit lacking, if you ask me, so hopefully this one should be a little bit more convincing. Op, purchased, handed towards Searson, who has a magnificent beard going for him. I think Berlin might be one of my favorite cities. Yeah, it depends what you want to do. Want to party, have a good time. Yeah, I'm going to see the place. Enjoy a little bit of history. It's, a, it's got a lot of history. It's very diverse, so I'll say that. It, it, uh, it's, the it's, different it's, sort of areas it's, of it. It's Mita, a very colorful, it's a very colorful city. Uh, maybe not visually, but... I'd say the east side is pretty pretty visually colorful with the graffiti. Yeah, that's what I like. I, I, li I like the entire juxtaposition between the old, you know, the Cold War era buildings, but also the, the modern day culture that's there in Berlin. Yeah. Great time there during the... Uh, and they've also got lots of international gaming. Yeah, indeed. Some like to some call it uh, Berlin International Gaming. And yeah, and they got God B with a big stick. And that's what everybody's here to see. Is there, if there's a man I trust with a big stick, it's, uh, it's God B. Yeah, and Kenny S. A hunter. Okay. Well, the big wine bottle scenario. But um, right now, big taking the time. It's a slow enough T side at the moment. But Ooh. the flash into mid is they want to try and retake it against Shelfie. This is inside of the cubby. His no Molly. Tanir is trying to distract and set up attention to Donut instead of the cutout. And I don't know if that's going to be too effective, but we'll have to wait and see. But it doesn't even look like they're going to round that corner. And that's information being picked up here for fours. They can start to cheat a few more forces towards that B-bomb site. And Shalfi can even deploy a flank now. This could be the devastating move for Big. Yeah, this is just disastrous, right? 38 seconds in. Oh, Jake's up. Shalfi <laughs> gets to kill Stinks as well. Finding Searson. And this one's just stopped before it even got started. Yeah. Over. There's nothing you can do. This is not a pretty T side from Big. These, these T sides have been extreme. I mean, the buy rounds in particular have just been very flat. Where's Crimbo? Oh. My boy Crimbo. <laughs> I don't even know how the bomb is stuck in there. Barrel scene. Oh, uh, the shining light right now for Big. Yeah, but it's it's kind of like, you know, the sort of light that gives you a little bit of warmth, a little bit of hope, but uh, I don't torch. think it's enough. Yeah, it's not enough. Yeah, Krimbo not having the kind of performance that we've seen from him in the previous version of Big yet. Obviously, you'd expect there to be some growing pains to this roster. That stick's getting closer and closer to Tapson. Yep, yep, it is. He's going to start beating him with it now. <laughs> Every time there's a timeout, just uh, <laughs> let's give him a whack. We call it the Asian, the Asian parent teaching style. <laughs> One day we had this, uh, obviously when I was a kid, you weren't 
teachers weren't allowed to beat kids anymore. But we had this Victorian... <laughs> I wonder where this is going. Go on. We had this Victorian-themed day where we had to come in dressed as, like, British Victorian. Okay. And the teacher came in with a cane. Okay. And was, like, pretending to, like, slap kids with it. Well, you guys are cosplaying, yeah, you know, the, like, school, teachers yeah. beating kids. And my teacher was kind of sadistic, I think, because she actually hit people with a cane. Oh, by accident, of course. Oh, sorry. Ah, did it again. Well, back in my day, thank God, we used to get the... Get the cane quite a bit. Uh, the cane, the fist, the slap, everything. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. You clearly see it worked out. Look at how I turned out. <laughs> Absolutely <laughs> fine. <laughs> Absolutely <laughs> fine. No problems, no issues. <laughs> Round 18. I'm sorry, just trying to imagine the idea of kids dressed <laughs> up and the teacher going, stick out your hand. Ah, that hurts. <laughs> yeah, I dressed up as little chimney sweeps. All right, it's going to be a, another uh, bit of a half five to save the AK-47 in the hands of Karimbo, so quite a bit of utility as well to work with here for Big. And because there's not much information here to, to work with for Force, it's going to actually work out. It's going to be a passive hold towards the A bomb site. Only Shalfi and Celta with an AWP. Flash for Selter does not go to the mark that he would have liked, and now he's kind of missed his timing to be able to peek out a temple, so it's uncomfortable at the moment. Tanir is out of the site, could take on that site push, and Bomb is going to go down. Big have a 3v3 off the back of this, and it's actually winnable thanks to those kills from Tabs. But now there might be a shot to close this one at nine and tie things up. Big breakthrough. Coming through with the AK-47, just one instant trade from Tabs. Second player at CT can't win the fight, but does a lot of damage and puts it all onto Crimbo. And we talk about his clutch factor. We've seen it many times over the last year, but this one, oh, the defuse, it's already through. And Crimbo can see the big get away with a bomb plant, but not much else. And that is now 10 rounds for fours. Yeah, like uh, the moment they knew Crimbo was the last guy alive, rounds pretty much done right there. They knew exactly where he was and. Tapson needed to win that duel towards elbow, get a double kill. I guess this might be the, the closest round we've seen from Big Ash on this T side. It's being otherwise as four is a fully in cruise control. Six in a row, I believe now. Yeah, it's suddenly turned into a very one-sided game in favor of fours. Aggression, punish, Crimbo ready for Kelly and to walk down B ramp and a great opener for Big to have. So never look at Elbow. Down, so, oh, has to take a different angle. And I thought he had it, but he must have been moving just very slightly. Yep. But he's able to get away with that kill. Tapson should have lost that fight. It feels like Big should have lost a lot of the fights here. But they're winning the majority of them, and it's now down to just Tanira and Shelfy. Big are looking for nine. They've got it just like that. Especially, uh, I think once they got the first kill to Kelly, and I, I do believe they've been struggling getting these opening deals going their way to T side, right? So the moment they got Kelly in, they're slowing things down a little bit, and Forza, they felt very uneasy. They're like, all right, we need to go for these uh, for these fines. We need to get a little bit of space back, a little bit of information back our way, and that's what Big were able to punish. So all of a sudden, it's <laughs> just like Big winning the round without losing a single player as well. Now, fortunately for the side. Of fours, they have uh, ample money to go for a buy, but I don't know. Like this round, it's more about fours getting over eager, looking to uh, get a trade back, which allowed Big to snatch it from them. But haven't seen anything too convincing yet from the side of Big. JDC with the cave smoke, Jag smoke. I I I, I get so pissed off people that call it cheetah, by the way. Yeah, you're uh, you're just wrong. You're playing wrong. There were no cheetahs in South America, guys. Could even be North America. North well, America. Ooh! Shelfy! Double kill! Seriously, and Pro's is dead just like that, and now it's. Oh, taps him! Makes it even better! Big shot through red, pulls it back for big, but it's still favoring fours, and Tapson looks to do absolutely everything on his own. A kill through elbow rings out, and he sees the second player there. They cannot deal with Tapson, who is having one hell of a hero performance today 22 and 11. Here on Ancient, and he ain't stopping. The bomb needs to be retrieved, however, but they have a lot of time to work with it. Tapson is going for a a bit of a, a rotation here. What's to play? What's to plan?
I say they have time, but it is dwindling away, slowly but inevitably, as we will have Crimbo and Tapson grouping up together to get towards mid. If you look at the CTs, we have Kellyan going to be patrolling towards an A bomb side, looking for a late play towards A to be coming on in. And Stinix playing towards B. So the CTs are separated. Big though, where did they head towards? 25 seconds on the clock. It looks like the call's been made. It looks like it's going to be the play towards A here from Donut, perhaps. Well, Tapson has put Big in a position to win, but 15 seconds left. That's all the time they have left to get into this bomb site. Smoke's going down. No secret now for the Temple player of Kellyan, who dives out to try and deny the plant. And he's got that headshot. Not enough time. And that is Kellyan that has won the round for the side of fours. Tapson does everything he possibly could to try and win the round for Big. But the denial of the plant with the limited time, and fours will push forward to 11. Especially with the, uh, yeah, just a few seconds too long right there. Two more seconds, Dinko. He would have got the bomb down as a 1v1 potential for a clutch, and yeah. It's been a day of heroics from the IGLs from all the teams we've had here today. We saw it from OG earlier in the day as well. We saw it from Alex on the side of NIT. And now here from Tapson for big, despite, I mean, albeit it's looking like it's going to be losing effort. Uh, the spy coming in from big. They still have money for the next one, even if they lose, lose this, but they are running out of opportunities. And fours, one away from getting to map point on their map pick. Again, this dead team walking energy, they feel like it's looking good. They really are looking fantastic. They win this round, it does feel like it is over. Next to Nubis. Uh, it's a comfort map for Big. They like to go towards it many times in the past. Now with this new roster, it'll be in that same vein. It'll be interesting to see if they can bounce back on that second map. Or if they can find some life here on Ancient still. Okay, fight. Good shot from Krimbo, but the double setup confirms the trade. Stinex just realizes once they see the front cave, it may be a weakness for them to try and exploit up the ramp. Mid play for JDC does not go as planned, and JDC's having a real tough time. 9 and 15, not winning any fights. And now this last ditch effort for Big for the final 30 seconds. They're coming up into the ball site, and they have stopped Searson and Tabson will follow it up by Process. They all topple as fours head to 12, and Shelfie is hyped up. Yeah. They didn't look good on Anubis uh, yesterday, though, fours, did they? So they they did. I still feel big. Uh, definitely have the edge heading into map number two. But also, like this has just been a, such a a flat T side from big, right? Just trickling into sides, getting absolutely mowed down. I guess uh, not a map where a lot of prep has been has been put into. I feel this T side. I want to take nothing away from Forza as well. I think they've been playing very solid on the CT side, apart from a couple of mishaps. But yeah, you clearly see for big. This T-side is not something uh, where they seem to be quite ready on. You said it was like, what, 8-4 on the CT side? You kind of feel this one should have been a, a done affair. Yeah, definitely should have been a better performance for Big here in the second half. Just one round. Well, fours have uh, pretty much strung almost eight in a row. Twelve to nine. Chance now for fours to crack open big. Elimination on the line all the way through the lower bracket. Taps it, not stopping his prowess today. Going to start on Shelfie. Spam down through the smoke inside of Cave. It's Kellyan to catch JDC unaware again in the middle. He's gone 960. That might be the scoreline he finishes on because Kellyan is fragging out. And it's 3v3 off the back of those engagements. Kills away. Yeah. Seen off this map. Yeah, three v three, but still, captain so very low. It's not like they didn't even have utility. It's just some of the the protocol seems to be missing for clearing out some of the usual angles here on on ancient. A number of times I've seen players tucked inside of the cubby, getting away with murder. Stenix. Lone. Defender now towards this B bomb site. 
And backup is far, far away. It's going to be a heavy lead for with A for fours. Molotov going to rain in, and that should be calling for the rotation, but not yet. They're not budging at all. So Stinix has a lot of work to do, and he has only one flashbang to work with. Yeah, Stinix, 25 seconds. If he can be disruptive here for big, it could spell the end of Ancient as the rotation is starting to come back over towards this B-bomb site. Big yet. are planting now behind the pillar. There's no grenades to stop Tapson from planting, so he's able to get away with that. And we'll see a post-plant fight. Tapson good on the rifle. AWP right beside him, but Tapson's now gone, and he needs to rely on the two teammates of Searson and Krimbo to keep big fighting here on Ancient. It has not been the kind of performance we have come to expect from these kind of players of Sirius and Krimbo. Maybe they can change that, but a missed shot from Sirius and instant death. And Krimbo, he's been missing in clutches, but this could be one that finally goes his way. Tap on the defuse, tapping away at the head. Now the stick is there. Krimbo stops it from happening and gets himself into the beehive. Seltzer is running out of time. There's none left for this clutch. The round is over in favor of Big. And they will push up to 10 rounds on the board. Dreams of overtime, perhaps, if Big can string the last two together. Yeah, huge round there from Krimbo. Again, again, Dink, I just don't feel any confidence right now in his Big T side. Like the, the, apart from the one round they won earlier, which is a little bit more convincing, came down to fours, maybe getting a little overeager with the, uh, with the fights they wanted to take towards mid and towards heaven. This one came down again to Krimbo in a 1v2. Apart from that, it's been uh, pretty dire straits. But still, because of the pretty solid first half they had, they just need two more rounds. Two more rounds to take us to overtime. We've already seen a couple of overtimes today. Yep, we did. And this is a good opportunity here. Okay. The full investment coming out from fours. It's either they win this now, or this could get this could be the worst decision they made. Yeah, this could go all the way to OT. Couple of uh, couple of M4A1s, two MP9s, an AWP for Selter. Look at the utility: three smokes, an incendiary, a nade, and a flash. No kits in play. Uh, I'm I'm not a fan of this. Not a fan of it, but perhaps the fan will cool down the round completely here. Forward. Sprinting into the open, Krimbo's got the kill. Overtime now is coming possible. We're going to break apart this defense. Shalfi with one on the edge of that smoke. The bomb plant not yet through, but now being committed to. They climb the cave. Four, that flank could be pretty detrimental to the big post plant. Shelby at long is even more so. Krimbo taking a risk to flank is good, and the turn back. Oh, fours have won it, haven't they? They've come in, they've looked strong, they went for the full investment, and it has paid off. It's about to be a 13 10 victory. Fours coming out looking solid. Big will fall on Ancient. They have to do a battle on Anubis if they want this series to be evened out and even have a dream of staying alive here in the Sky Esports Masters, but that is not the kind of performance I was expecting from Big and probably what they would have expected of themselves. Yeah, just a very rough T side coming out from Big. It looked like they really weren't ready for this, uh, in all honesty, despite the fact that, you know, for the side of fours, it's a map that I guess they have been picking quite a bit, uh, quite often. We've seen so far Sky Esports Masters, and yeah, just a deflating T side coming out overall, despite the heroics of Taps. And, and, and I think that the final 4v4 in the post plan was just indicative of how uncomfortable they look right there. You know, Krimbo just taking the fight towards uh, towards long over there with no flashes to help him out, not peeking together, just separated individually. And on the other side, I feel like fours they just look more cohesive as a team, and even the individuals look way sharper here. Yeah, they definitely look way sharper. This fourth side, I think everybody uh, sort of underestimated them coming into this event. I thought we wouldn't really see them make it past the first couple of days, but you can never really count them out when it's an online tournament because they, yeah. they seem to really pop off in this kind of environment. They've had countless repetitions. Countless, indeed. And, and also, like, you know, there are rumors that, you know, like you pointed out, Smuya might be joining this team. Yeah. And so maybe everyone's like, no, I don't want to leave this team for Smuya. So maybe everyone's like stepping up to the plate, perhaps, right? Uh, on that note, we're going to be going to a very quick break, ladies and gentlemen. And then we'll be back with more action here in the Sky Esports Masters 2024. Yeah. <laughs>
Now, winning. You mentioned that you're getting to a spot, qualifying. Fair, you felt good. But which was which was the first title as a team that you won, and you went cloud nine, and you're just like, oh yes. First title, I think it was the very first title. It was I think in London, Moscow. We won like uh, maybe five thousand dollars for a team. It was a show TV. It it was a LAN from. Uh, uh, like some uh, Russian guy that organizes uh, once in uh, Moscow. I was with Magnus from Bad Boom in team with Chiron, uh -huh. Railway Bad Boom coach, uh -huh. and uh, Ilian, ex uh, Entropic sniper. Uh, this was our team, and we won it. And uh, I think this was my like very first win. But the most important and emotional, I think, it was our first CCT win with the Aurora back in the 2023 at the start of 2023 when we had our 16 games win streak oh yeah i was just looking into it so before that there would have been uh, that 16 win streak felt really good but before that there would have been some losses you would have felt a little bit bad how did you cope up and then that 16 streak happened mm, no it was like i felt okay maybe sometimes i to be honest, I felt uh, not really frustrated about the losses before I got to Aurora because uh, I was playing at a much lower level, so I didn't expect much from my team, previous teams to win. So when I lost, I was just okay, another loss. But when after the 16 weeks thing happened, after qualification for the Arma, not qualificating to the major, I think I started uh, to take losses more serious, maybe analyze more after losses. Yeah, I think something changed in my mind for sure. And uh, you mentioned about the change as well, right? Now you were with Aurora and the start of this year, you moved to Forza. So how was this transition for you? And uh, you also won a tournament already and you're now going to be playing with other teams. So how was this transition for you and how do you feel now? To be honest, after we lost 0-3 on the Marcos qualifiers with Aurora, we everyone knew that we need to change it because this result is uh, like unbelievable. So we had to change something, and our ex and their ex coach Hooch just made a decision that uh, he wants to continue without me. I was okay with it because uh, I, I was sure that we I was sure too that we have to make changes, but I wasn't sure about uh, who we should change or how we should change maybe our play style. But in in the end, I'm really happy that I, it, it happened because I think I'm feeling much better. First half of Aurora, it was great, but second half, it was uh, not that much pleasure to play. So I think now I'm more motivated and more emotionally happy. I'm more happy just to be on the server with the new guys, I guess. Nice to hear that. And of all the games that you've played till date, right? Is there one game that comes to your mind and is like, yeah, this is a game I'll remember forever? I think this is the game versus Speed on the Blast Armor. Okay. First game of the Armor, I think, 
for Raw, we got the comeback from, if I'm, I, I, I guess it was like 4, 12, 4 to 12. We were in Ancient on City and I had an insane game, some insane into, uh, like clutches and uh, last round I was 1v1s uh, on the 1514 score and I won it uh, so I think this game will be in my mind for sure because it it uh, was my first game on like top land okay. like this some European so and I won it and I had a good performance in it so everything just felt amazing at the moment so I think yeah this this exact game Welcome back to the Sky Esports Masters powered by AMD. Map 2 is nearly ready for you, but before that we've got to talk a little bit about Ancient and Big kind of fell off pretty hard after a decent start on Ancient. Yeah, on their faces, uh, it was not pretty, it's pretty ugly. The T side was very, very lacking indeed. Uh, I think a pistol round and maybe one of the buy rounds is the only convincing rounds we saw from them. Apart from that, just a very lackadaisical approach to what should be, you know, it, it's a map that a lot of teams play nowadays i said it earlier as well in a lot of you know best of threes for example or best of ones we kind of see the deciders and it's a map that you should at least have some few protocols ready ct side was pretty good on all honesty you know i think they were doing a very good job being aggressive but then the t side it just looks so disjointed so many angles remaining uncleared unchecked and just overall a, a miserable time and it felt like even for the individuals on the side of big and i'm talking i'm looking at People like JDC and people looking at people like Process and Crimbo ne never really quite waking up. Uh, the one who really stepped up was the one we weren't expecting to. Uh, it, w it was Taps and trying his level best to keep his team in the game. And in all honesty, though, it, it was it was 8-3 at one point for Big. You feel like there's re a real chance it's going to be a 2-0. They should be taking this first map and then heading into the second half. Yeah, the T side was just so lacking. And I think Gobby's not going to be happy at all with that. No, not at all. I think Gobby's going to have to be smacking a few people around with that stick outside during the break kind of wake people up coming into this next map uh, at least the next map will be in this right and we talked about how this is a bit of a comfort ground for big and yesterday looked extremely uncomfortable for the boys it seemed like they kind of give up uh, in particular shelfie really struggled on that map and i do feel like we're going to be seeing a third map in this series i don't know i feel like you think you're going to win 2-0 <laughs> I, I don't. I don't necessarily think they're going to win 2 zero, but I feel like there is a chance the way fours are playing right now. You know, individually they, they look so much more free flowing, and and the fact that Big just seems so lost, right? And in, in the second half, and we saw this happen in the first game they they had as well. I forgot who it was against, but I, I guess it was against Bed Boom, if memory serves me right. Where the first map looked so very good, and the next couple of maps just completely disappeared. And I believe it was. Tapson, or was it Gopi who who made a tweet saying, "Yo, you know, like we just weren't feeling ourselves. We didn't really didn't have didn't get anything going." Which sure explains a lot of things, but that's not an excuse you can have here, especially when you're facing elimination. And by the way, you've you've dodged the likes of an OG, you dodge all these other you know ends of the world here, and you're going against a team who basically have a stand in and three or four bench players. You should be winning this. Well, speaking of standouts, we've got Stinex as the standout player, but one expert. 
1.39 rating, another big performance in Stinex, who was their player to watch coming into the series, and for a good reason it would seem, because what a showing on map one. Uh, looking forward to seeing more of him as we head into Anubis. He'll be essential if there is to be a victory heading into that second map of play. And uh, Enchant will have to be just put in the pass for big. Try and reset. JDC in particular, I think I want to put that one out of his mind because his Ancient yesterday was incredible against God's Reign and, and today really struggled to find the same firepower. Yeah, it's easy to be looking good against God's Reign as we found out for from even from NIP as well, where NIP are having a good time. So I guess it's not a good measuring stick to uh, see where they stand up. But yes, Tunix was absolutely stand out. So many multi-kills, so many impact frags coming out from the man, but he's just one piece of the puzzle. I think everyone uh, on the side of uh, Forza had moments there. Uh, Kellyan as well comes to mind, for example. We can take a look very quickly at some of the highlight moments here. And yeah, like you can take, th this one comes to mind as well. It's just like when it's swinging at you, as some of these CS players do, there's not much you can do. Uh, the pistol round as well were big. It looked like they had the right idea. They had a good execute towards the B bomb side, and uh, Stinix with the duelies inside of inside of Jaguar getting three kills, doing a very good job just staying alive and denying Big from winning the pistol. Because if the Big won the pistol, uh, there was a real chance that this could potentially have just uh, they could just steamroll Forza and run away with this. But yeah, uh, it, looking at the scoreline, 13-10, winning the pistol really taps does works out. Yeah, it, it's so weird. You see Taps in 25 and 14, and everyone else just kind of. Mid. Very mid. Yeah. Low, mid. low. Low, in fact. Uh, was not very good from big overall as a team. Just imagine, like, JEC has a better performance, or even Krumbo has a better performance. Like, that's enough. You're, you're still 13 10 uh, with barely anybody showing up. So, just a little bit more there with Tabs, and I think they had a, a real shot at that one. Uh, but they've got some time now between this map and, and Anubis to just kind of mentally reset, have a little break, and come into Anubis and just focus up to get this job done yeah and also like i just want to go back to a couple of rounds which really jumps out to me from the side of big would be like you know the, the rounds in a t side where they get mid control when i say mid control they just come out late from elbow they have control towards heaven and they're not clearing out donut they're not pushing towards the cubby area they're just like looking towards the red like, all right there's no one there and they're making a lot of noise or but not too much of noise but it's still they're making their way back to uh, climbing up towards heaven towards b without clearing cubby and there were a couple of the rounds where there was a ct waiting there and it's like oh guys you know they're not really pushing up so for big i feel like on the t side just lacking much map control is something which i mean if you look at ancient the way the map plays out which i'm sure big does and gob e does and taps and does as well the fact that they weren't really executing a basic game plan as to how we're supposed to approach it map is a worrying thing but then heading to Nubis, it's a map we've seen them play multiple times. I, I think they should 100% he heavily be the favorites here, but hopefully they don't get into the mental rut when they're like, oh guys, you know, nothing's hitting. So hopefully they're able to kind of reset themselves here. We'll have to wait and see. We're only a few moments away from getting into that action, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, we're just going to have to go through letting the players get back in their seats. It sometimes takes some time between maps. We know what they're like. Uh, especially online, it's hard to keep them, you know, especially because only two players are actually at the boot camp with got these big sticks. So, you know, it, it would have been easier it, it, to it hurt could be. It could be because way. of the big stick as well. Yeah, you know, might, maybe. They're like, hey guys, I'm not, I'm not showing up today. I can see Gobby with a <laughs> massive... Controlling around. Yeah, it's like, I'm just going to play from home. JDC, yeah. Maybe JDC was right. He's just sitting at home in his green room. Vibing out. Vibing out. not working for him in the server, though. He turned yeah. the green lights off, though, during that game. So maybe maybe that was the problem. Maybe he needs to put that RGB back on. Well, just under one minute left before we do get into that action. And as the ticker does say, two more teams will depart. We've already said goodbye to one earlier today in the form of NIP. Well, look at the names we've lost. We've lost NIP. We've NIP. lost NIP. And now, well, depending on how this goes, it could easily be big as well. <laughs> Literally, some of the teams you think would be in the finals. Yeah, the finals. some of the more known names, right? Uh, yeah. But I think for big... Look, I know they're in this rebuilding phase, but this is a lineup to decide it on, and I agree with you. If you look at the pieces, it looks like it makes sense. And this is just another event, right? But I feel like there's so many the, the issues we saw on, on day one as well. We saw like this T-side on Ancient was very rough. And looking at the coaching staff they have to work with, it's a pretty massive one. It's not just Gobby, the yeah. amount of resources being put in. Uh, it would be considered a, lot, a bit of a failure. Yeah, it would definitely be a failure, especially to start this team. I think they'd be expecting a lot more out of the pieces. That I mean, they are your favorites. Yeah. They're my dark horse as well. Yeah. So yeah. My favorites are currently in the bin. So uh, maybe maybe it'll have to be a Forza Aurora final rematch or something down the line. We'll have to wait. COG's playing pretty well. Heavy God's back in the server. Hard to call the Sky Esports Masters, but we are ready to call map two of this series. Anubis is coming right up, and this will, of course, be brought to you by... 
1x bet. So you guys can uh, be faster, you can be easier, better with the 1x bet mobile application because it's waiting for you. Download and register right now. 1x bet, your esports bookmaker. But with that being said, the action will surely start in just a moment. Pros has got that PlayStation 5 back there, you know, maybe games during the break. I've never owned any modern generation uh, consoles, you know. They are I, I had I had S I had SNESs and I had uh, the, the really old consoles and stuff, but like I never even had a PS One. I just beat a PC boy through and through. So you know those sort of Tetris machines you would play. You would like stack up the blocks of the machine in, in a public place, and then a prize would come out. And they're usually like really rigged. Yeah. So one one day when I was a really young child, maybe like three years old, I ran up and just hit one 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 time on this Tetris machine and somehow won. Okay. And I won a PlayStation Two game. And a game. Yeah, it All dropped right. off, and my parents were like, "Oh no." We, we, we have, have to, a, we have we to have buy, buy PlayStation. Yeah, now. my parents would have just take, took and t taken it from me and sold it off, <laughs> and then yeah. uh, not even giving me the money. Yeah, that <laughs> you wouldn't have known any better, right? So <laughs> I'm like, oh, I it want was something. Finding Bobby Nemo, Dad. Finding Nemo, the game on PlayStation Two. <laughs> How was it? Uh, pretty good. I want. To, I I have something I need to get off my chest. I feel pretty bad about. So <clears throat> I have a younger sister, and uh, we got it out for Christmas one day. She got a door the Explorer game. Okay. And it's a single player like campaign story game. Okay. But uh Dora is followed around by Boots the Monkey the whole time. All so right. um I played as, as Dora, the only character that was playable, and I handed a PlayStation remote to my sister and said, You're boots. So she thought she was playing the whole time. I completed the game the entire time. Then uh by the time I completed the game I, I then traded it in and got money for it and bought a new game and she never played a second of it. Kids are stupid, man. <laughs> she had no idea. <laughs> no idea. I've 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 done the same. Uh, I've done the same when I was uh, playing. Uh, I don't know if you know this game. There's a really old one. It's called Contra. So I think it's it's like a two-player game. I mean, it's a single-player game, but it can also be co-op, basically yeah, in a yeah. PVE, so to speak. PVE, a term that didn't even exist in like in the '90s. Uh, and I used to play with my cousin. It was really bad at the game. So what I did was I'd get the the AI to play the second one, just give it a controller, unplug it, and he's happily playing <laughs> and smashing. I'm like, yeah, you're doing good, little buddy. You're doing good. It's weird how they didn't notice that like they're not controlling anything. Kids, kids <laughs> are just dumb, man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, so, I mean, so are we, by the way, when we were younger. Yeah, of course. That's what it is. Well, we are just moments away from getting. Does, the does your the, does your sister know about this? Yeah, I told her. Uh, we have we've had a, like a trauma since then. So, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> how did you feel about that? Is that where her hatred for you? Comes yeah, from? yeah, yeah. That was that was where the hatred started. Yep, I think it's gonna linger there for a while, probably forever. Uh, that, that, that's the that's a real love, right? There, sibling sibling love. Yeah, well, hopefully... Oh, there we go. I was going to say, we're, we're back. Three seconds away, and now we are. So, 10 seconds till this game goes live. Remember, I just mentioned 1x bet, but we'll do it one more time just to ensure oh, yeah. that people hear it. Turn your casual viewing experience into a whole new thing. High odds for tournament matches await you on the 1x bet website and mobile app. Oh, that was beautiful. QR code. Did you write that yourself? Uh, no. Okay. But here, here we, we go. go. Round one begins on Anubis. Big's chance to try and recover this. They're on the CT half, the less favored side, as fours get to start the attacking side of things. And Stinix is looking to try and rip open a couple of these big players instantly. As Process has come in with that first headshot, though, and Stinix is down. But his teammates are still trying to commit into the safe bomb site via camera. And they'll come charging through that smoke. Crimbo close to his main. It's clean on the headshot, but he's down to Kelly and so bomb plant at a minimum will be confirmed here for fours ensuring at least a force buy in the next round but they want to go all the way they want to win this pistol if we take us on taps and spots a first and a second and that's a little bit delay in the communication there from his teammate to its pillar so taps and just going to be keeping them at bay he knows where one is Pearson. Trying to get back to a main. Held back by Shelfy. Kelly and coming in with a headshot and now taps and left with the clutch ahead of him. Unable to get it done for big uh for big and it is going to be forced to win that first round. The HUD lying to me. This uh this could get uh, a little worrisome for big, right? Because he's gonna be starting on a CT side, obviously. Uh yeah, the the HUD's a little bit flipped there, but hopefully should be fixed real quickly. But yeah, big gonna be starting on the CT side, obviously four is opting to start on the T side. Uh, and winning the, the the round, and we've seen many a time, Dinko, when it comes to Anubis, if it's your map pick, you know, start on a CT side, you don't win the pistol, and suddenly, you know, it, it, things can spiral out of control. Your 
your economy, you're never really quite able to erect one. Uh, things go from bad to worse, and you gotta remember for big, they are a map down. You see the force by coming in, scout for Crimbo, interestingly enough, not for uh, Sirson, and the rest of them pistols and an MP9 for John DeCastro. Yes, indeed. <laughs> Smoke's coming up over the top of mid. Shalfi will be charging through with a flash set up by his teammates. He'll deploy utility into his camera. Tanir will start off the killing affair with the first on JDC. Searson will meet the same fate at the hand of Cynix and Crimbo. Well, there's not much more he could do with that scout, so he's overrun and overwhelmed. And Fours are now looking at two in the bag. I'd like to see that. Tabson coming in with a piece of fish. He's a supernova. Oh, oh, it's pushed over. And it's just process left on the flank from the beach. Supernova looks so good in CS2. I it have, does. I, it looks I have, super nice. I have the same one as Star Trek uh, Factory New. I have a lot of classic skins. The Boom, the Dark Water. Yes, there's a lot of a lot of those that you're very familiar with. Yeah. Process. Just chilling out. This force buy did not work out for big, which means three zero start is coming in for fours. And we talked about yesterday how the CT pistol on Anubis is. The most important round. Yeah. And they didn't win it. They didn't win, win it. So, four is going to win this series 2-0. Uh, <laughs> yes, yeah, Confirmed right there, written in stone. That's all. Chiseled that into in, in hieroglyphs into the stones of Anubis. Damn, that's pretty Indiana Jones of you. Thanks, man. I don't like snakes either. No, snakes are... My, my biggest fear, though, from like animals is uh, rats. Rats? Yeah. I hate rats. I thought he likes Muya. <laughs> He's the king. <laughs> he is a rat king. It's true. I do love the. Uh, like, you know what the rat king is, right? Yeah, it's the tails all. I'll get it entangled. Oh, like, oh, dude, don't even make me think about it. Have you seen photos of it? Yes. It's very gross. It's very gross. It's very it's disgusting. Me feel ill. My stomach's already a little queasy. Iffy, you know? Yeah. I don't want to have to deal with the thought of a rat king. Have you ever been stung by a jellyfish? Yes. Recently, actually. Oh, yes. I, I, I got stung off the uh, the coast of uh, Oman, and I went, oh, man, that, that really hurt. <laughs> <laughs> Jokes aside, it, I did get stung on the coast of yeah, Oman. Yeah, the weird thing about the jellyfish is, like, I got stung. It kind of hurt for, like, a minute, and then it was just fine. And then I, w I went home, and a week later, this thing started swelling up. And a got week later? A week later, yeah, and my, I looked it up, and the venom of a uh, jellyfish can actually affect you one week later. Cool, all right. My mom was like, there was a bunch of, like, baby jellyfish, and I'm like, oh, look at these cute boys. And I didn't know, like, there's a jellyfish warning, nothing. And then, like, it just, it was a really cool, like, design uh, scar on my arm and stuff. And my friend's like, man, and there was no one nearby. And my friend's like, you might need to pee on it. I'm like, no, <laughs> just your take me home. all over your shoulder. <laughs> yeah, I'm like, no, I'm good. Let's just go no, home. Thank you. Well, the buy round's finally in for big. Let's see if this is uh, enough to get them their first round of the board here on Anubis. If you let Fours really get the ball rolling on the T side, momentum might be enough to carry them through this one. Tabson doing his best to clear out near the double doors. Just on the other side is Kellyan. Seltzer's got that opening kill this time on Searson. Not to start big, would look at, be looking for, and Tamsin needs to be careful, he's lost track of the player coming through those double doors, and Kellyan didn't even get detected, so he can now just run through camera. Oh, it's a save call. Big can't win it. They have to run back and save on the other side of the map. And the bomb is nowhere near them. The bomb isn't even anywhere near A, so Tadir... That's fine. He needs to be a little bit careful. Yeah, he's fine. He's a little bit paranoid, of course, but yeah, there's two kills. There's huge finds coming in from fours, and you, once you lose Searson and Tamsin, they're like, yeah, I think the save's the right call. Now... I'll say I'll, I'll say the cliche here early on, Dinko. Just need three or four rounds on the CT side. Now that that's all that Big is going to need here, because you know how solid their their T side can be. But you do need a few rounds. Uh, you just can't try and mount a comeback when you have maybe let's say two rounds on the CT side. Just not much of breathing room to work with. And knowing how aggressive in your face fours can be, they will steal a couple of rounds away yeah. with you. So the pressure is on here for Brother International Gaming. Remember. Searson has a date with uh, with Keto. In yes, the bracket that's finals. what he wants. That's at what least, he wants. But it might be a no-show. He might leave him standing then. You'd hate to see that. Kellyan, the hunt is on. All right, he doesn't get the kill though. 
All right, 4-0 for fours. A perfect start for the dead team walking. I like a little Arabian music. Yeah, playing it's in great. This one. Uh, I was speaking to Krimbo. He has uh, Egyptian heritage, so he loves uh, Anubis. That's what he said. He has an Egyptian heritage. All right, yep. that's Kareem cool. Musa, is his name is. True, 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 true. Sorry, man. I'll just look at JDC's name, and every every everyone all just pales in comparison. John DeCastro. John DeCastro. It's like John DeCastro, Robin Cool. Yep. Finn Anderson. Finn Anderson, yeah. They're all like great names for novels. It just sounds like made up, yeah, made up novel names, right? It's like these kind of B grade thrillers, which I used to love growing up. Yep. You've had me watching some. Uh, a Bollywood movie? I didn't ask you to watch any Bollywood movies. But I've been watching some. You did watch Kung Fury with me. Yes. I, and that was a good time. Yes, it was a good time. Something I hadn't seen before. I was shocked you hadn't. Yeah. It's got David Hasselhoff as well. The Hawk. You cannot hassle the Hawk. No, you cannot. Well, you can definitely hassle B, it would seem. Aggression out. Charging out A. Process finally getting an opening kill here for the side of B. Will it be a 4v5 conversion? Uh, no, not for fours. It looks like it's a shutdown thanks to Process alone. Seriously, there at the back of the platform from the hieroglyphics, it's just Seltzer left, and the writing's on the wall for him. Yep. And off goes the op off the map. As Anubis comes calling for Celta. That was a good call from Big. The aggression after was A main, forcing force to. <laughs> Celta trying to run away with the M4, but his days are numbered. He will be hunted down in the next few seconds. But yeah, from uh, from Big there, they, they go for the aggress towards A mains, and as a reaction, we could see Fours just uh, try and brute force their way in towards B, thinking that, all right, the majority of players are going to be all the way outside towards mid and A, and the B defense would be weak, but pushing into the smoke was not really the right call. Process with a nice hole, even the kill with the P2K as well. Now for fours, despite losing all the players, they have uh, enough funds to eke out a very, very solid buy, and extra funds remaining as well in their back pocket if needs be. But for big, a much needed round win. Yeah. Hellion held back behind the fire of the flames in middle. The good thing for Fours is with such a strong start taking four in a row, they've got plenty of money built up but a few players, so they can continue to purchase here. And Big have to realize that, so they expected a buy on the other side. Searson has a little look between camera and A main. He's got some rifle support in the fountain too. Some form of Krimbo. Taken step here. Searson aggression Ooh. stopped Seltzer with a big headshot. Stinnix even better. And Big might even consider the save call now because of how clean those entries were. Gee, what a peek from Seltzer. There was nothing. And I mean nothing Searson could do. And the spacing as well. Brilliant stuff. Tapsons towards heaven though. Just gotta find one. Oh, almost the second kill as well. This could actually... Surely no. No, they're going for this. Because of the kill. Uh, Tapson getting ever closer to try and get back in from breaks. It's a kill onto the chest of Stinex, but Shelfie off of the rugs. It's good. He's wrapping him up in it, flying away in his magic carpet, but that defuse, it's happening too far gone. What Shelfie a play. Get there and it's sick. It's so difficult for Forrest to be able to win that one in the end, and I can't believe Big recover that. No, no, Tapson recovers yeah, that. Yeah, that's what I mean. Tapson recovers that, yeah. That's so sick. Tabs him once again, the, the lone hero for Big. A 4v3 and he gets all three kills. Yeah, that's that's got to be a bit of a knock, knock a bit of a win out of your papyrus sales for fours. Wait, can you make sales out of papyrus? I don't think so. No, you can make papyrus boats. Still another buy though. Bomb down, bomb planted, as well as a little bit of residual money remaining. Oh, my shot, Searson committed, has to get out of there, has to get to safety and gets around the corner. Well, he might get taken out by that engagement, but JDC off of jail. Is it going to be the step up for JDC we want to see? 
Well, process. Oh my. Once again, getting open of a lucky Kelly, and he slipped in behind. He slipped the net, and he's got through Searson. Now JDC trying not to reveal his position, but he gets spotted from Dark. Process is trying his best, but he's overrun by the might of the Fours attack, who are now in a three versus two. And for many, defenders are split up on either side of the map here. Bomb sneaks across on Nova. They know where Tapson is. And he has been absolutely imperious so far. Oh, I'm getting planted now. 3v2. Long flank all the way from T-spawn from Crimbo. Got a smoke himself and his captain and a nade. Tapson's biding his time. They have Kit on Tapson. And I do believe a Kit in one of the bodies on the bomb site. Tapson, the timing. Ooh, a bit oh. of a labored spray from Celta, but he still gets a job done in Crimbo. The moment Tapson falls, he realizes the jig is up. That's going to be round for five for fours. So despite losing... The round to taps in earlier, they will bounce back. Yeah, and it could have been another two rounds in a row, right? It's uh, very comfortable for fours on average across these rounds at the moment. They should have been 6 1. Yeah, honestly, well, except for that heroic play from taps in there. We'd be seeing a lot more of a comfortable, strong performance from Big here on Anubis, but fours bringing the battle right to their doorstep. Big continue to have decent buys. An AWP again available for Searson, who's really struggled despite putting himself in advanced, aggressive positions. JDC has got to feel very frustrated that there was a push to the smoke from Kelly in the previous round. He gets in behind, he kills Searson, and that point then really panics JDC. He gets cleared out from dark. He's worried about so many different positions. Uh, it's been really tough to figure this one out for Big, and they've got a timeout here to discuss some of the issues and try and piece together a decent enough half. Now, we talk about this every single time we're on Anubis. You don't need that many CT rounds, but for big, you'll want to see them get more than four, I would say, even in at this point. Yeah, I, I'd feel super uncomfortable if they don't get five, for example, five, maybe even six for that matter. But uh, four is looking pretty solid here. Uh, we have the buy coming in once more for big. And this is such an important round. If they can't convert this, we have a fast... Oh, A main duel, the flash is so good! But thankfully for the CTs, they have the Molotov to keep the T's at bay. Only really exchange of utility, a lot of utility being spended by Tapson alongside uh, Krimbo towards the A main position. Again, look at how heavy the stack is here. Towards A with an early initial skirmish. But Forrest not really overcommitting here. Not really. Shall be clearing out middle. Around the corner, we'll have a little peek. And uh, he'll start to position himself for the attack in towards camera, but Tapsy wants to get in front of that smoke, but he's been spotted. And oh, what? he's been eradicated. Shelfie just straight through the smoke. Shelfie on the other kill. Bro. Is there anything big can do? They are not able to compete with the firepower of fours. Once the ball gets rolling, it flattens them. It is six to two. Fours yeah. are dominating the Germans. But what the F was that from Shalfi? I don't know. The first kill was so nuts, and then a second as well, pushing it through the smoke. And they're on the hunt, as they should be. Krimbo and Searson sweating bullets now. Seltzer <laughs> with a shot that rips apart Krimbo. Oh, jeez. And now Searson left in this 1v5, time ticking on that bomb, and it'll be a round for fours that will be very happy to collect here. Searson desperately trying to hang on to the AWP. It's a good kill, but escaping him. They want no mercy, and nothing saved for big. Money's broke. Money's broke. Just, just pointed out as well, right before this round got underway, that this is such a crucial round for Big to to kind of stabilize things. But losing all the weapons. Or, uh, they still have a buy. Go. Are you going for this? Are you guys still going for this, Dinko? I, I don't for it. I, I don't get this buy. Why? No, I mean they're desperate. They're really desperate right well, now. Is Taps allowing this buy? 
Like, he's the one that's going for it. He's like, all right, I'm just going to buy it. Primo's going to buy uh, two hero M4A1s. Rest a few, just the Deagles. Five sevens. Two smokes, flashbang. It could catch fours off guard. You know, they might be expecting an eco here, but still, it just seems so high risk. Oh, the timing here. Oh, big shot from Stinnick. Taps and ripped out of the temple, and this force bite does not look like it's paying off at all. That aggression forward from Crimbo is only good for one, but his four is putting the bomb down, and it's uh, now Tanira who becomes the little secret element that could even find Crimbo and end this quite quickly because they come up the stairway to try and save that weapon in Crimbo's hand. Process is dead. Crimbo should fall, but able to ready and steady himself thanks to the sacrifice made by his teammate who walked in front of him. Well, at least they can try and get away with these two M4s, I guess, but... Yeah, not much... ...going their way. If they lose even, even one of these M4s, things are going to be grim, but they're going to be fine. They will survive. One of the M4s should be... Uh, ...dropped to Tapson. Should be seeing, uh, yeah, Jace is going to be dropping the M4 to Taps, and the rest of them will, of course, have the buy. Searson, op out. Uh, it's uh, it's not a pretty look here, Dinko. No, it's not pretty at all, Blair. It really is not pretty. It's not been convincing at all. And this is a team that it's I not been have close. super high expectations of. Yeah, they were your favorites. Yep. Not looking so good now, is it, Adam? No, it is not looking good. It is not looking good at all. Or's T side of Anubis is looking fantastic, and that is a step in the right direction. JDC struggling in this series is now dead outside of the B doors. Yeah. He's out of there. This dark dark push is about to put the process under getting pressure, and he gets caught looking the wrong way. Stenix just walks in behind him. Fours are driving out, looking incredible. All the kills coming in, and now 8-2. It is Fours forcing the save out of big on the other side of the map, and it wasn't even competitive. Just disrespect being thrown in the way of big alongside with the bullets as well. Yeah, just losing JDC, immediate pressure being exerted by Force. And I got a, I got a credit to Force, and this is something we've seen from them many a times, even against Aurora, even against Aurora as well. Just so much, like, we call them brazen plays, like a little bit insane plays at times. But the way they're approaching this, because they know they kind of like, they have this entire dead team walking energy, uh, they're just going for it. They're just going for these sort of plays, and, and it's kind of like shock and all. And when you have the aim as well, like the likes of Kelly and Tanir, or, or even like Stenix does, you can't get away with this sort of plays. Salter now going for the hunt. Okay, big, we'll solve it to two guns, but right now, it's not a weaponry, it's not economy. They need a few rounds, Dinko. Yeah, they do, they need rounds, <laughs> and uh, they need every remaining round in this half to feel comfortable about a possibility of a comeback. And you look at their faces, they don't look too, uh, too smitten with themselves at all. Uh, it looks like this is about to come crashing down a round pick here at the Sky Esports Masters, a team that have made some changes to become more competitive on the top level. But it's against the dead team, it's not looking like they're even capable of beating them. They're getting schooled right now for by force. That's Kelly again. to start off. JDC dies once again. The first player there battering their way through this deep on site process is so lost, but finally getting one. So confused, so destroyed, and it is so destroying watching this big on the server. It's Bro. going to force just getting rid of them. It's it's just like they're just steamrolling them. Yeah, they're they're just really it's just are. brute force, a vulgar display of power being showcased by fours. Like a Nordic mythological figure of, of old laying down the hammer and yeah there's uh, looks of consternation on the faces of all the big players and sure we said you know t-sided map but 10 to 2 looking very likely yeah it's looking incredibly likely at the moment JDC with a headshot on Shalfie Brokers able to follow up with that kill Krimbo beside him this is much better for Big suddenly <laughs> 
They get a couple of opening kills and they just the, the floodgates open. Uh, it's so weird how they've just gone into winning a round with five alive. I just looked away for a second and it's like 1v5. <laughs> just so quick. It's so crazy to see Big have that potential, but that's the end of the half then. It's, is it a little too late though? That's a question. I think so. I think there would be, if it was four rounds, you yeah. could be like, yeah, cool, that's fine. But three rounds means the margin for error, the mattress, the, the the mattress you have to wear, the mattress for com of comfort you have to work with is very, very thin. It's very slim. It's like one of those two-star rated hotel mattresses. You know yeah. what I mean? It's like yeah. you can like sleep on it. Yeah, but, but it's not comfortable. So there is a chance. And we keep saying the CT pistol, most important round of the, of the game. And we're going to see it next for the side of fours. If they win that, it's a donezo. It's a GG. Now Selter just... Prolonging the inevitable, it feels like. We see 9 3 on the board. Five seconds, he's now in middle. That's it spotted, and now, ooh, going to be taken out, surely. Smoke's going down. He's really doing everything he can to win this, isn't he? But he's not going to. Spots out Krimbo. Grenades should get him. And it will. So 9 to 3. It is big to secure one run at the end there. We'll try and remain positive. Tabson rolls up his sleeves because he knows there's a lot of hard work to be done, a lot of hard graft to get back into this game. I can see like Shelfie and Salter just laughing because they realize they've won so many of this round just rushing through smokes. It's like not of a flashing or, or breaking a smoke, just full on four players that are rushing on in and big wondering, guys, the nine, this isn't Counter Strike, this is not a Counter Strike that we've prepared for, nine, nine, nine. Well, turn your casual viewing experience into a whole new thing. High odds for tournament matches await you on the 1xbet website and mobile app. As we kick off this pistol, CT pistol for fours. If they win this, it's a great step forward, a huge step for fours kind. To try and take this map and eliminate big from this tournament. Is that serious with a very clean Glock fill, isn't it? That's the Glock in Spiel I know. Oh, Crimbo. Yes, it hurt them. Mm, they're going to come through camera into the Zay bomb site. Big trying to attack into Stinix, but he's damn <gasps> clean. Off the fountain, it's a flood, in fact, of kills. Right against the big side. Tabson doing as much as he humanly can. And oh my god, is he human? Crimbo and Tabson, I don't know how they pull it back, but the pistol <laughs> goes in the way of Big. After Stinix gets his three kills. Four just overextend. They're like, oh. Also, Tanir with a knife out, buddy. Like, Tapson was just right there. He was in camera. Like, he was, you know, <laughs> keep your gun out. Well, it's not over yet. Now the buy's coming in. Fours are going to force. So They're going to mess their economy up. So are and fours, yeah. Come back. Yeah, uh, back seven. All right, Salter, we're going to go with that. This force is terrible. They have one smoke. You're literally taking all the wrong steps to win this game quickly. Oh, I don't know. He's dead. Yeah. Well, they've messed their economy up. Well done. It's going to be 9-6 now very quickly. And the gap has shrunk to 3. Immediately. So you win so many team routes. You put yourself in a brilliant position in the pistol. You then uh, mess that one up. Then immediately force by and lose. So we're looking at nine to five. It's gonna be nine six surely in about two minutes time. And Big have now got the first step for the comeback. Indeed they have. Five players stay alive, money building and swelling for Big. They're gonna have another buy even if they lose the next round after this. And it's gonna be nine to six right now. It's gonna be just the the default. You better, bloody eco. <laughs> yeah, I just, I just saw an MP9 right there for a second. I was about to throw something at the uh, at the program feed I have over here. Oh, please. Why, why, why is he... No. No, no, no. no <laughs> don't do it, Stenix. He's, He's trolling, trolling, right? Okay, fine. He's trolling. Jesus. Oh, there wasn't a Gav picked up at the RMRs, though. From Sassanito. True. Let's let's not, let's not pretend that never happened. And... Okay, Stenix. Yeah, needs another one. Can't get it. Right. So first two kills are bigs. Round's done. Yeah, and we over. are now looking at nine to six. The gap is shrunk to three. The big have a very good economy now off the back of this. Another kill. It's even better 
here for Sears, and you'll have plenty of cash to get that AWP out. And uh, JDC's going to help him out. So, yeah, lots of money now for the Germans. They've built it up quite quickly, and it is the idyllic start into the T side. I think this could get very worrying for Forge, and I think they'll be maybe kicking themselves after the start of the second half. Yeah, that, 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 that pistol. How, how did it just slip out of the hands? And now suddenly, Big definitely back in the game. 100% back, and now I want to see what Forrest... No, if they lose this round, right, the, it doesn't matter. If Big do a lot of damage, if Big take out, like, three players, it doesn't even matter if they lose a round. Yep. Big have a perfect find the next round regardless, whereas Forrest will be lacking utility and maybe even lacking rifles. So, Forrest not only need, need to win this round if they want to get closer to closing it, but they need to win it with the majority of their Forrest to staying alive. Very passive hold starting out from uh, Big here early on. Fours. I hate the second CT round force, man. Yeah, it just... Why? Just like, just why, right? You have so many rounds to work with. Yeah, half by, sure, but like... Not even half by, just no need. Just, just full eco. Just full eco. Uh, but by Zeus, maybe? Right, want to do some shenanigans? The fastest way to close it, guys, is actually by playing properly. <laughs> not enough by trying to force your way through it. To be fair, a lot, a lot of the rounds force have won have been by not think properly. That is fair. true, that is true. Live and die by the sword is the motto. Yep, sometimes it impales you. Sometimes it impales everyone. Sometimes it impales us. Forty-five seconds, round is slow from big. They realize they've been suddenly given a golden ticket back into Anubis after being slapped around and made to look silly. Tabson gets to call. A T-side attack into this A-bomb site. Seltzer plays in the fountain, getting his toes wet. And now time to wet the blade of Shalfi. Sharpens. He moves over into the open. Two entries from Crimbo. Round is done. Save the two weapons. 9-7. The gap is two. Clean entries. Clean protocols coming in. And Tapson's already on the hunt. Is so, so deep. Yeah, if they lose everything, obviously we're looking at probably getting to the territory of a tied scoreline. Yeah. He's also trying to ready. hold on to that, and he's got rid of Tanir. Stinix now the last remaining player, and I think the wind is well and truly out of the sails of fours now. Yep. I think that, you know, if they, if they won that pistol, right, then 100% it would have been like, definitely two more rounds can easily get that, but now... Nothing. Not, not only have big stabilized, they're looking good. And again, look at how much money they have. And once they really get into that, that groove of things on the seaside of Anubis, they can get really, 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 really annoying. Yeah. Four is now realizing. You can see a little, uh -oh. bit, little bit of worry. A little uh -oh. bit of worry. Yep. Yeah, they have kind of screwed themselves over here. That four by the second round. And the pistol. And the pistol. Looks so good in the pistol. But MP oh blood MP9. It's a, it's a it's a half it's a half. I, I got a little scared again. It's a halfy. It's okay. It's all right. It's all good. It's a halfy. Uh, this is where they try and uh, where they're given the luxury to be a little disruptive and be a little more YOLO, as the kids like to say. You know the crazy thing about it is they probably are gonna win this round by just doing something crazy. I can see that happening. <laughs> I can definitely see it happening. Yeah. All right. Three player lean towards A main. Rolly on. Flashes utility on the bridge. Searson's already beyond that fire. So it's the play out of A. That has actually been well held by Big. They're very comfortable in dealing with that. And um, maybe Shelfie can get something going here. He has slipped by the eyes of Tapson. Yeah. Maybe they're not ready for this. He has to get a multi kill, though. If he only gets one, then he's gone. And they line up. Oh my god. Oh my god. He's done damage on it too. He can finish him off the USP. So brazen. He's so aggressive. And his aim in player and as he well. he's just seen the bomb. And he knows Seltzer can try and sandwich them and push together. And this could work out. He sees the barrel. That's the shot on the Deagle. And what was it telling you, Blah? They're in a position to win the round now off the back of this. Tapson's coming in to try and clean up. He's got his teammate JDC right beside him. But it still could fall in favor of four. As Shalfi's dead on the stairway. And that does give access back to the bomb. But... 
Seltzer still towards a man, and Kelly in on that flank around the back of the stairway. Seltzer needs to stay alive. It's paramount that he stays alive. He's trying to distract, allowing Kelly in behind, and he's going behind them, but they turn, and JDC doesn't matter. He goes down, he dies, and now taps in left, in the clutch alone, pulls the Julius, gets this chance, but not the kill. Fours win it on the MP9. <laughs> you called it, and it happened, Tinker. Just, oh, the aggression coming out and, and honestly it felt like they'd done enough they'd done in you know big had done enough to keep that a main push at bay but it was that mid flank that push from bridge with taps and watching from b main and it was like a, a five second window dinko a five second window and it just went past he just breezed through that window and just like that everything just spiraled spiraled out of control for big and what a round to win for fours i can't believe they've done this i can't Hey, do we peep for Searson? Good opening on Shelfie, the man that really unraveled the round for Big. And uh, my other prediction is Big are just going to win this one. That last round won't matter. So, we'll see if that is how it pans out. Good bow. Yep, that's a nice little spam, isn't it? Right through the smoke. JDC gets a wall bang, and the round's done. Seltzer 1v5. So, MP9s give them the lifeline, and then they can't piece together a CT round. So, we're still got Big fighting, and that's the problem. They had a lot of money, but... They don't really have a lot of cash left over here, so if damage was done by fours, then that would have been at least a positive. But the fact they haven't got a single kill on this round allows Big to kind of recover the massacre of their money. Yeah, I really like that the play from uh, from Sirson as well, just working with the spawn. Fast work in tandem alongside, I do believe that was uh, JDC, if I'm not mistaken. Just going for the fast play towards A. Nice flick to find the player towards Pillar. And Sector is dead. Nothing saved. And big back to winning ways. Uh, seems to be unstoppable right now. Are you really going to go for a double up setup? Force. <laughs> why, why are you doing this? Please sell. No. Please sell, Tur. Sell, do you what? Uh, <laughs> what is this? Why? Why? <laughs> They're gonna win this one, bud. <laughs> They're gonna win this. No, one. but what? No, I'm just saying. Like the other three guys have some money left in the bank, and, and the other two just gone for the all buys. Instead, they could have just bought like I don't know MP9s, maybe an M4 and Kevlar, equalize the money out a little bit for the next round. But no, they've gone for a double lop, Dinko, double AWP. Which is really not meta right now in Anubis. <laughs> and and the three guys have gone for for an eco basically, upgraded pistols. And and I don't get it. It hurts me. Make it stop. Make it stop, please. I don't think there's uh, an economic genius at the helm of the forest team. Uh, I'll put it put it out there. Just because you guys are benched doesn't mean <laughs> you have to do this, guys. Like we'll show you fours. Um yeah. Selter's dead. Yeah! That's one of them gone. Yeah, how do you like that? Yeah, eat that, Selter. Hard Selser. Taneer, though. 5-7, dead after one. Big just having a little walk, a little stroll. Headshot galore. Where's Shelfie? In dark with his ult. Deagle for two. Three, two, one dead. Uh, shot dead to Brosis. And Shelfie and Kellyan left in a two versus four with 25 seconds left in the round. This one is a done deal as expected and the purchase did not pay off as expected. And it's now 10 to nine. Big one round away from tying up the scoreline. Safe call for Shelfie. I absolutely detest this round. <laughs> Yeah, really shouldn't have been a uh, been a decision that was made. I've had five days of food poisoning, and this might be worse than that. <laughs> Literally been on the on a toilet for like five times last night, Dinko. I'm, I'm, I'm just <laughs> staying alive with Red Bull and coffee right now, and this might actually be worse than that. Yeah, well, it seems like it. JDC will take that off out of their hands. Let's check the four's money. Uh, I wonder what Tabs and Gobi are thinking. Like, what what's happening on the other side? Like. We're trying to be unpredictable with the money. Like, imagine, right, imagine you don't buy the double op, right? Just think about how much money is available. On you the have so the much money right now. Instead, you, you're just handicapping yourself for for that one shot. 
Good job, guys. You really hurt the economy there. Look at this. Now, three guys have money, while Shel uh, Selter has a 3,400. It's you're just handicapping yourself. It, it's unnecessary. Well, download the One Bet app with a QR code on screen. It's a quick registration and a smooth user experience. At least it's a pretty normal body player. Yeah. It's, a, it's okay. Shafi could have had uh, the M4 along with a full belt utility, and Seltra could have had an A1 as well. I'm just saying. <laughs> could have been better. It's 10 9. The score is 10 9. It's very close. You want to have an ideal buy right now. And it was also 9 3. Uh, so we've seen it kind of fall out of the hands of Boaz and hit the floor and splat all over the place, but aggressive water take for Boaz coming in. But it's going to be the opposite call. Bigger going B. So I don't know if they've got the defense ready to deal with this. You thought he's going to come in and negate the Damage, you would imagine, but they peek dry into him. He doesn't hit the shot, goes again. This time it does connect on a process. Tanir takes up position to jail and now patient in this spot. Kellyan's died to Krimbo. Selter making that MP9 sing another chase of Krimbo through T spawn. What is going on here? MP9 finally taken out of the round. Three versus two. Uh, it's it's not pretty. Uh, Counter strike, but uh, big have a full minute left to figure this out. I don't even know how Seltzer was in T-Spawn there with the MP9. This is such, such a mental game so far. <laughs> oh, man. Sometimes I'll, I love watching games like this. All right. JDC's patience is going to pay off because Shelby can't sit still. Free kill. So yep. that's the round. It's feeling super uncomfortable. 10-10. Yeah. Tied up. Steenix so far away. Sirson's uh, want to wait for his teammates to uh, just clear out the, uh, the bomb site, and that's going to be it. Save going to be coming in. I almost can't believe the counter strike we've just seen in the second half. Like, what happened? So insane. Fours just fell off the, the earth. <laughs> they pushed themselves off the earth. Yeah, they just walked off the, the edge like lemmings. <laughs> lemmings don't even do that. That was actually a fake documentary. Well, the lemmings falling off the thing. It was a Disney documentary where they actually forcefully push the lemmings off a cliff just for the documentary. They don't really do that to themselves. Wow. Disney lemming propaganda. Who knew? Yeah. Stinex. I mean, it, it, w it would be it would be kind of crazy for a species <laughs> to just kill them to just uh, just stay alive. <laughs> yeah. I mean, to 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 even be alive now if they just kept jumping off cliffs. So, yeah, four is basically doing uh, the lemmings from the Disney documentary. Tied up. Big have brought it back. I guess three rounds were enough. Yeah, three rounds were enough. Uh, helped out a little bit by their opponents. It's just like, why? Why is he doing that? Like, why is he walking through the smoke? Well, that is literally how they won a lot of their T-sides. I know, but you're in a pretty decent position now on the CT side. Sure, it's fine. I understand it on the T side if you're winning all the rounds. But guys, the scoreline was 10-9 and you were doing that. 10-10 now. It's all tied up. Big are about to take the lead, I would imagine. The only CT round that Force have won is the round where they bought four MP9s and had a D-Eagle. Yeah, that's when you can you know, kind of have the the freedom and the and the confidence to you know go for more aggressive plays and it's not like they're playing rigid blow with the rifles. That's also true. <laughs> it's not like they're sitting up at a super default setup, but Molotov is forcing them into the open. Kelly and Sam behind the pillar has to go into the fight in dark. It's just one for one. Good trading from Krimbo. Tino stepping up here for fours and okay, they're starting to look a little stronger now on this CT half. Much better hold. Yeah, much better hold. That was a lot more standard. That was a lot more procedural from fours. Exactly kind of what you would expect out of a Anuba CT setup. That Molotov is Ooh. to help out the life of Shelfie. I don't know how. He still gets the kill and he survives. I really like that from Shelfie though. Just sticking around the flames. Is that like, ah, okay. I'm just going to catch you off guard and then just go sort of white swing. I'm actually surprised he stayed alive there in the flames, but 
this is just such just such a nicer hole coming out from Force. But that being said, I feel like a lot of the success Big had against the buy rounds of Force was predicated on those A hits, right? Some of the faster, uh, almost Blitzkrieg like hits coming from Searson, for example, towards the A main position, just running on in, getting a kill quickly, just running over the defense. You could think of this, Tomoka acting up? No, it's just, uh, yeah, it's an interesting uh, terminology used there. I like it. Yeah, it's a military term. Yeah. <laughs> A lot of German words being thrown around today on the stream. Da. Yeah. There's Grimbo. Dead to Stinnix who takes that AWP for a little stroll outside of A main. And it blows open Darf. Searson catches Kelly. In. So as soon as you get the opening kill, you offer up the opportunity to get it back with that common smoke construction. It's unfortunate that it goes against Boys then. Double up setup again. At least this time, I'm still not a fan, but at least, you know, you have some rifles in your teammates, so, okay. But it does make retakes way more harder. And Tanir, so much pressure gun on his shoulders here as soon as the execute comes in. It's no one nearby. Teammates need to drop in from water. Tanir at the ready, scope up, and the uh, smoke's deployed. So blow it open to try and catch them as they come on in, and oh, Tanir, he needed that one. But now he's only got tinnitus. And the shot rings right through his skull. It is now Seltzer with a headshot process. Dead shot <gasps> following up, and a little bit of damage being done back and forth, but a bomb is now down. And Seltzer coming in through darkness. It's Stenick stepping up with him, and Searson alone in the clutch, but the German can snipe. And he's got himself that shot on Seltzer. Gets around the corner. Stinnick's up against him. And the Battle of the Operas. The Molotov might win it. Oh, the defuse. It's being stuck, but he's got to come off it. Oh, he's got a kit, but the time is running thin now. And Searson has him where he wants him. That smoke has provided enough cover to allow Searson to change his position to the right side of the position. But the grenade, oh, the weapon swap, that's actually allowed him to know where he is. But it doesn't matter because Searson still wins the clutch of the rifle regardless. A big clutch for Big that keeps them in the round. <laughs> the play from Searson there. And the smoke was a little too deep. It was so deep in the 1v1, allowing Searson to just maneuver behind it. Oh, I can see a lot of the frustration now in the faces of the Forest players. A gargantuan lead they had in the first half, and seeing it being whittled away right in front of their eyes. Searson perfectly played there as well in the clutch. Fortunately for the CTs, they have yet for the buy, but Dinko, the big win this, it's uh, pretty much GG confirmed. It's going to be 12 to 11, uh, sorry, 13 to 11. Because the money is going to be non-existent, and I don't think Four is going to be doing much with just the pistols come to ne come the next round. Meanwhile, fight towards A main. Salter alone just trying to catch a timing. Grimbo's going to punish him. Grimbo's been pretty darn solid all the way towards A main on the T side. As Searson finds Shalfi through the window of the bridge, and another one, and they're just feeding the beast. Four's Give this one up. Fours now down facing map point against them. It's it's hard to explain how bad the CT side is being from fours. Yeah, like I, I also don't want to take it away from big. I think they've they've had some pretty good uh they beat good what game was in plans. front of them. Yeah, exactly. They, they, they've done the job. I think Krimbo especially has been really, really good towards A-mains. They've been going for a lot of like variations in their approach and whatnot. But some of the plays and some of the decision-making uh, from 4 is like the 2v4 uh, loss on the pistol round comes to mind. For example, 2v5, I forget. And some of these buy rounds. It's, it's like so strange. They have a read it's going to be A. The thing is, are they going to be there in time? There's only one defender right now. Tanir finds Tapson. Yeah, nice little MP9 kill. 5v4 established off the back of that as Fours is trying to bring us into overtime. Kicking and screaming. It looks like overtime is on the cards for this matchup. Searson left alone. He won't do it. And Fours do drag us all the way. We've got overtime. If you didn't want more rounds of Counter-Strike in this map, well, you've got them regardless. They win it by just pushing mid, pushing B main, finding there's no one there, and then just having a full stack. And I feel like they still seem pretty happy.
surely big were probably thinking, all right, guys, this is the round. You're not going to play default. It's going to be the A execute early on. Surely, when it's 12-11, they don't push. They don't play aggressive. And 4 was like, nope. <laughs> I kind of respect it in a way, dude. It's like, it's just not, it's constant. constant I don't, I don't even think that's a bad call from big. No. But it works out for fours. And now we're right back into the game. Fours have allowed a reset. Everybody has money now to play with again. Uh, they can go for their buys if they wanted. The AUG has been picked up here for Tanir. That's a little detail that uh, we haven't seen yet. Big. Uh, looks pretty successful in finding some of these opening kills towards A. This time it's a Seltzer solo peek off the table. He sees three players from Big and... Ends up doing damage on Sirius and couldn't quite even get a single kill there, despite having three targets. And that will result in fours being down a player for the rest of this round. Shalfi. He's staying committed. Clear Krimbo into the open. Oh, the missed shot, but the Molotov at least getting the kill on Krimbo. And buys a little bit of time as well, but no one rotating over from fours. Oh, Sirius, if he gets it, if he gets it. Nah, yeah. There's nah, no one nearby. There's no one nearby. And are they going to gamble B? The gambling B. And the gamble might pay off. Defensive smoke for mains. All of the remaining players and fours committed to this B bomb site. But Krimbo, the Krimbo knows it's clear now. Yeah. Sorry, I'm sorry, Proxus has cleared it out. So they're going to bring that bomb back to A. So that's danger averted right there. And that's a really good call from Big, right? In a 4v2 situation like that, you're pressuring B a little bit, and then you send your uh, your extremity player to be like, all right, just scope it out just in case. It might be empty. Tearson catches the near two, so not going to get out of hand here. Four is not going to be able to pick this one up. Big win the first round of overtime. Really good work from the T side of Big. And they need as many team rounds as possible in overtime because their CT side was not good either. But shockingly bad by Big standards. I think they were, I think this T side would have woken them up, honestly. Yeah, you feel like it's going to be better second half. Yeah, 100%. I feel like uh, that ancient loss especially kind of crept into that first half of them. And then uh, it was a pistol round. It was a taps and Glock round. Which I feel like was a catalyst for this comeback from Big. The captain. Terrorists win. Leading by example. As, uh, yeah, another T round going the way of Big. Fours. The CT rounds of one have been pure miracle rounds. <laughs> I don't know the exact numbers, but I feel like Krimbo's gotten a kill almost every round outside of A main. Or inside A main. Yeah, he's he's definitely been involved in a lot of those fights and has been finding a lot of success that whether they be openings or just regular old kills towards A. Why is Krimbo jugg juggling a secondary AWP? I mean, they have money, yeah, sure, but he's juggling an AWP. He was juggling an AWP. Krimbo is having a much better performance, a Krimbo style show right now on Anubis. 24 and 13. And that was something that was missing on Ancient, if you remember. Okay, the A, a hit coming in. Camper, they will run. Shalfi blows up the smoke, tries to get there, but JDC has it covered. Stinnix off the fountain. It's one under the bricks. Krimbo, that's why he's juggled the AWP for that exact moment, it would seem. And all the kills from Big start to come through. It's Fours, who are down to just old Tanir, and uh, he's nowhere near the fight. That was so well constructed from Big. Krimbo doing. Krimbo's been. The uh, the architect I feel for for a lot of these uh, T side rounds from Big right not not only enabling for example when we see Sirius and go for his aggressive A fights with AWP Krimbo's that right there with him is the one using all the utility as well to help us set up his teammates and at the same time like just single handedly you know the utility being deployed by Temple the flashes towards A mains picking up the AWP and yeah I have my question why is he juggling the op that's why that's why. 14 to 12. They won't let fours stealing that final round of regulation affect their mentality. Big, they continue to march ahead. The big go marching on. Nukes on the horizon. It is indeed. Feels like we're almost there. Looks 
that pistol round of the second half, but Nuke has felt like a reality. JDC looking for an opening towards B. It's actually going to be the opening jewel being won by Kelly and on tap over towards mid. And JDC is able to trade back because obviously becoming B main and there's a second one as well. So Forge just giving up free kills. And that's going to be a man advantage instantly in favor of Big after conceding the first man. So Forge now down to three players. It's about to be map point for Big unless Seltzer can have a good shot here and get Forge back into the fight. He will hit that shot on Seriously, Krimba pushes or stops that push rather from Kelly and through middle. So every time Forge do good, some good work, bomb. they push aggressively and JDC had the bomb, yes, but also is accurate enough with a shot to near left alone again in an unwinnable situation and big up 15 to 12. There's the drop down, Tanir hits that headshot and if he stuck around, he might have been able to spot the players crossing over the window, but a quick reaction from Big. They could go through mid to B, put the bomb down and now you should favor JDC and Krimbo in a 2v1 against Tanir. It too is falling for it. Yeah, he thinks it's gonna be A play. It's a good call here from Big. Yep. Just gonna go and clear A and then realize, oh God damn it, I have such a long run. An instant instant decision being made there by Big, not being uh, too slow and just slowing things down, allowing, uh, and then, you know, when you slow things down, even though you're being methodical, it also makes you lose sight of where your He's opponent is. He's running his gun out too, because so, they could be anywhere. And that's obviously costing crucial seconds, which he just can't afford to lose at this point. He doesn't have a smoke either to apply pressure to that defuse. So this one's done. Yeah, uh, Tanir ain't winning this clutch. It's just too strong for Big. Oh, uh, he spots one out towards the back. He's not going to check this left corner. He surely. knows. Oh my God, he is going to check Temple. Okay, Tanir. He had the right read. Couldn't win it against JDC though. Came close. You got to say that was really nice attempt from Tanir. Uh, I counted him out way earlier, and uh, seemed like he had a little bit in him. But it will be 15 regardless for Big. They reach map point on Anubis. We said it's their home ground. We said they should be winning this map. Uh, I didn't think it would be in this fashion, though, Blair, if, uh, if I'm being honest. A couple of rounds, uh, if it gone the way of fours, which, you know, we don't really need to harp on as much as we have already. Yeah, this could have been already the game and the day done with. But Big, they were given that, that lifeline. And they snatched onto it like a hungry, hungry shark. And they've now swum to shore. Or swam to shore, rather. Swam, swam ashore. I think swam, swam a word. I no, I don't. I don't know. Yeah, swam is a word. It doesn't sound real now. Swam and swim and swam. Swim, swam. He swam. Yeah, swam is a word. S W U M. No, when when you think about it, it doesn't feel real right now. Now to check it. <laughs> what am I done to it? Swam. Yeah. Past participle. Participle. I can't pronounce that word properly. Swam. Yeah. Well, you were right. Regardless, bigger back in the game. <laughs> swam back. <laughs> swam back. <laughs> From their swamps. I'm really bad. The gardens. Are you are you good in like English grammar? Like all the nouns, the adverbs and all yeah, that. Yeah. I would say so. Uh sufficient at least. Clearly not with the swamps though. Yeah. Alright. Fours need to win three in a row. But I mean they showed Pretty solid T side, but that was against a big who were looking very deflated. And this is a big who are feeling very fiery indeed. Very inflated. What? It's a move. That's a, I thought it would be a nade or a flash. Just goes in. Comes out with a kill, taps in. It's <laughs> it not works gonna out. be enjoying that at all, but it's yeah. boys back to their old antics here on the T side. As soon as they get over to the attacking side, they look a lot more sharp and honed in, and these aggressive plays pay off. So on the CT side, they look a little silly sometimes, and Sirius and Forge further back behind the cake in the A-bomb site. They have two players currently positioned at A, two at B. A huge hole in the middle, but no one exploiting that yet for fours. And the bomb stays outside of the A side. Good but damage. Quickly go back through water to join at B. Good damage uh, being dealt back towards the T's as well. And I like this re-aggression coming out from Sirius and, and Krimbo, right? Getting so much of control. But they've completely given up B. Now, considering they don't see anyone towards A main, I, I, would, I would imagine the... The B players to actually be sticking with B. This is strange. Uh, Krimbo, good work. Kellyan taken out. 4v4 put off the back of that. So despite Force having the opening kill, they are evened out. But that bomb will go down. And they begin their journey to try and pull this one back to a double overtime. To near six. Starts a deep sight, fending off these opponents. Tries to transfer up to the second, but it'll be Shelfie's work to finish off. And Searson Krimbo, 2v3 retake. 
Still plenty of time here to get back into the bomb site, but whether or not they can do it is yet to be seen as Crimbo gets closer. He'll have to think about Dark, and well, no thoughts can be had. His brain's no longer attached to his body, and it is fours with 13. Two rounds to come back into this and force another overtime, and I mean, it's not outside the realms of possibility. Fours on the T side were so good in that first half. I am a little, a little, slightly puzzled uh, as to the the, the aggression, regression from big towards mid, because once you, they were pushing up towards A mains and realized there's no one there, even though there is a chance that fours that were pushing up towards mid, if you have A mains control, it's still better, yeah. right? And the fact that yeah. just completely relinquished B was a bit of a puzzler uh, and works out for fours, but yeah. First round on board here for fours on the T side. And for big, no alarm bells yet. Should still be feeling very comfortable. Pressure being exerted towards B. Rotation in already in the form of Crimbo. You can see Sirson posted outside of near A main with an AWP. And as long as it doesn't see anyone, they can allocate the majority of the resources all the way towards B where it looks like the bomb is going to be heading. Minute, five seconds left. Four is about to execute into the B bomb site with utility at the ready. Standard smoke's about to come in as we head under just one minute on the clock. JDC's information severed off by that smoke. Process goes to cover off Dark. Good first headshot, traded by Selter. And now they know, Big, that this B split is on the cards. Can they stop it from happening? Crimbo with a Hail Mary play right through the smoke at jail. It's only one for one as they go back and forth. Four is trying to plant the bomb. JDC not in a position to deny that because it's around the corner, but through the smoke, taps and lands the headshot. Nice shot from Seltzer, a better from Tanir, and Searson left through the clutch in front of him. A 1v2 for the sniper. We'll see if Searson can get into this one, but it looks unlikely. 14 rounds looming for fours as Searson actually decides to back away, realizing he only has $50 left in his bank account. He wants to keep that AWP. And this is looking like a real chance now to go again in another overtime. I don't, I really don't know how to keep doing this, especially with the B bomb side, just amongst all the smokes and chaos. Just so good at manufacturing his opening kills. Terrorists win. Lovely work from fours. I kind of figured Big would be ready for this now, considering how much he struggled on the in, in regulation. Doesn't look like that's going to be the case here. One more opportunity for Forza to tie things up and one more uh, chance for Big to just end this game right here, or rather this map right here right now and take us to the Nuke. Seriously, saved off in hand. You can see how rough the money is for Big. The MP9s for Mass. Great flashbang. Taps it. Completely blinded. Ooh. Crimbo standing in the flames. Bros is able to at least find Kellyan. Well, it's uh, at least something here for Big with weaker weapons. They must muster more than the strength of their combined parts. And Crimbo, from the site, it is just one before he's traded out by Seltzer, and even trading is not going to be enough until this point. Process steps up, Shelfie goes down, and suddenly low HP on Cynics doesn't fill you with confidence. It feels like Big might have done it here, Bly. It feels like they've got a real shot with his flank coming in. I don't think Stinix is even thinking about that, and because he's so low, JDC would immediately take him out. Seltzer sees the barrel. It's a big headshot, but he needs to win it, and he's got a double down into a 1v1 up here. It's JDC to drag us to another overtime, or Big are sending us to map three. Seltzer stays at heaven, and he is hoping for a divine clutch. No kit. Smoke on to the bomb. JDC not tapping it, making a lot of noise in the limited time left with no kit. Seltzer isn't spamming. JDC's holding it, Seltzer's got to get the knife out and he can't get it, JDC all the way, all the way, <laughs> and there's no overtime, JDC with a 10 second stick, <laughs> we have to go to Nuke, we have to go to map 3, and that is a heartbreaking loss for Force. That is actually insane, how is it pulled that one off, no kit Dinko, full 10 second stick. I think he even slashed that knife like five times right next to JDC, but every swipe missing its mark. And big, they bring it back. They take us to map number three. It was a comeback and a half. And four is, I mean, they have to be feeling they let that one slip. Oh, that's a tilter. That that's is a, a pure real tilter. tilter. 
Wow, I don't know what to say about this game, but I, um, I, I'm just happy it's over. <laughs> like, it's just, that was some crazy counter-strike. Fours were up 9-3 with, like, the most dominant T-side. Yeah. And we thought, oh, they get demoralized, they didn't do enough in the first half. Uh, surely, like, if they win the pistol here, Fours, the job's done. They get a triple headshot. Like, okay, oh, Fours are going to win the pistol. Then suddenly they throw the pistol. Then they force by, and then it just all falls away from them very quickly. It's it's not even like, you know, like losing the pistol, sure, it's fine. It's just some of the, the decision making coming out from the on the, on the buy rounds and the CD side just being so lackadaisical. But, we, you know, we have uh, time to break that one down, but before that, we're going to be going to a very quick break, so don't go anywhere. started playing and big academy approached you and was like let's go so wonderful to hear that meaning you didn't dwell directly into becoming an esports uh, athlete but as somebody a team approached you decided let's take it on but from there on how so far has it been for you in the journey it's been like i'm 21 now so it's been quite some time but it is like i'm really um really um happy with it like it's it's a thing that i can do i can i can do the thing I, I love, like I have, I have joy, I have, um, I have fun with, and it's just been a pleasure to do what I do. Um, and also, like I, as a human, evolved a lot around the time where I play professionally, like since 16, right? Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, it's just, it's just a gift which I'm really thankful for. Nice. And as you said, you've evolved, right? So I want to know. Uh, looking back to your 16 year old and now at 21 years how what changes do you see not just in game but also outside on yourself i think in general experience mm -hmm. experience of course if you if you if you say like outside of the game or just in life because like in esports if you are like playing it professionally you usually get around quite a bit and you meet a lot of people and so it's like you you have a lot of experience and also of course like when i would say okay i look back at my my 16 year old version of myself and now it's a huge difference it just comes to experience right um in these years yeah would you tell anything to your 16 year old self that you maybe now know when you're 21 or you would relive all of it again i would do the same again i would say just do what you do and uh, keep keep doing it with like have have fun by doing it awesome so you Good said, for the fun. I think gaming is all about fun, right? If you don't have fun, then it's not something that you should yeah. do. Wonderful. Now, uh, coming to Big Academy, spotting you and then telling you to come join our lineup, you would want to play for you. Which was this tournament that they saw you and like approached you? Uh, it was just 
back in really back in the days where I was like 15 years old and stuff, there was like on Face It called like German Pro League where I played, and there I became better and better, and people were like recognizing me a bit, and um, so does like the German scene. Um, and yeah, it was like just playing parks, and because I was I think really good at it, people were like um, paying attention to me. And yeah. So, what was been your first earning when you started playing, uh, and which was the tournament that you won? My my first earning. Yeah. From a tournament, or oh, yeah. I'm not I'm not sure anymore. It must have been like maybe we had a tournament like in in, in Swiss or um, a German league, 99 damage, for example. But I'm I can't really tell. Uh, I don't have it in my mind how how much it was. Um, to be honest. That's all right. And now, as you said, right, you won. How was that feeling of winning the first tournament when you were playing, whether it be with your friends or after uh, joining academy lineups and other uh, TO uh, organize, uh, teams? So, how was that feeling when you won your first title? Really good. Like, I mean, my first big German title when it comes like to, we had like two divisions back then in Germany, like 99 damage and um, ESL Meisterschaft, like the national championship. Um, 99 damage was really, really good. Like, uh, I was very, very young. I also won it with um, Big Academy. It was great, like one of the bigger wins uh, in my early, early years. But, um, and also like not so long ago, like the German championship in Hannover, in front of um, our fan club um, and also the German fans that were there but was like a really nice um how, how, how can you say it like it was a really nice gift to be playing in front of these people and just giving them a win winning it as big academy and it was just just a joy to be honest so you play you win maybe an online tournament you become champions yeah. you get a prize but playing in front of an audience is a completely different yeah. feeling and winning in front of them how is that different i mean I never had like um, the honor to play in front of like thousands of people because mm -hmm. this is my dream and I think this is what every player has. It mm -hmm. just is, makes every everything so much more worth it. Of course, if you win online and stuff, it's also nice and great. But if you play in front of people who cheer for you, it's like it's the best. Especially like when there's family around and you just you just do it for the people also. It's like you play not only for yourself and for the team, but also for the people who support you. Number Bangalore! Are you ready? So I think the main uh, idea behind the Sky Sports Masters wasn't to create a big event per se, but it was to create a sustainable ecosystem for the esports organizations of India. I've seen the esports scene in India evolve. Uh, the first gig that I did was 10 years back probably, and that was very small. So this um, is a testament to the fact that esports is growing and especially for the Counter-Strike to come back uh, and how. It was beautiful to be a part of the whole scene. And the stage was a beauty, to say the least. Jeez, two crore, huh? Yeah, it's a, it's probably really the biggest prize pool for Indian Counter Strike ever. It, biggest in South Asia as well. I think this land it being so big, it being the biggest in Indian history, is going to be really, really important for the growth of the scene. Because you know, you come here as a young kid, maybe you come here as a PUBG Mobile fan, or you come here as a fan of a creator, and you see a huge stage with your fellow countrymen up there and they're performing in front of these people and they're competing for such a large prize pool. I think that can only inspire these young kids. I think if we are just making new fans with events like this and just inspiring the younger generation, I think it will only do good for Indian Counter-Strike and you'll see these young kids come up and aim for glory.
everybody in sky sports is brothers to each other we say shiva bro vijay bro nyana bro everybody is being called like this and i think that's like a family we've built so it started with shiva bro ideating it then he bought in muktu bro nyana bro vijay bro all these people started making uh, joining hands together and build sky sports to where we are here uh, you have to give props to shiva for uh, getting such a fabulous team together uh, vijay on the back end was phenomenal hari was fantastic everybody knows uh, lucifer so it really shows the kind of work culture there is in sky sports they bring their boys up and they give them the pedestal uh, to perform main main itna lan games nahi khela hu compared to csgo ye lan mera life ka first and big event lan hai i hope this is my starting career I have given everything to this team. I stick to it. We made a team. Uh, we dominated three years out of like ten events. We used to win nine events. So that's how my journey has been till now. But when the league announced uh, Sky Sports, uh, a major, I think, an upset happened with me. 2021 में मेरे को एक मेरा proper team मिला जिसमें pros खेलते थे. जैसे कि हम लोग का वो time पे team बना था. मैं डिफॉल्टर जो मैं अभी मार्कोस में खेल रहा है मैं गिल्स मार्कोस गिल्स जो अभी मेरी टीम में खेल रहा है और फायर जो अभी रेवेनेंट में खेल रहा है और ये टीम ने दो साल तक इंडिया में फुल डोमिनेट किया बट टीम में प्लेयर्स के कुछ तो इशू हुए आउटसाइड द गेम इशू की वजह से हम लोग को वो टीम तोड़नी पड़ी और फायरडअप ने वो टीम छोड़ दिया हम लोग चार लोगों ने स्टिक किया और हम लोग ने रेवेन को लिया क्योंकि रेवेन का स्किल फायरडअप के लेवल का ये तो हम लोग ने रेवेन को लिया और रेवेन को लेके भी हम लोग दो तीन टूर्नामेंट खेल रहे थे वो भी हम लोग जीते उसके बाद था आई का क्वालिफायर वो जो हम लोग इंटरनेशनल गए थे तो ये साल था वो रोमानिया में तो हम लोग वो वो क्वालिफायर का फाइनल हार गए और कौन सी टीम से आ रहे फायर की टीम से जो हमारी टीम छोड़ के गया था तो फिर फाइनल आ रहे तो फिर हम लोग बहुत सैड थे कि यार मतलब प्लेयर्स परफॉर्म नहीं कर पा रहे और मतलब वो रेज में हमने वो टीम तोड़ दी तो वो टीम का कोर मैं किलस्विच और रेवन हम लोग ने स्टिक किया और डिफॉल्ट और मेगल्स को हम लोग ने टीम से मतलब हम लोग ने बोला कि हम लोग के साथ खेलना नहीं है आई एम द आईजीएल फॉर द टीम आई फॉर्म द टीम आई मेड देम हु दे आर uh then after getting kicked without even letting me know then i took a break of 10 days then i thought should i pursue it as a career or not because out of nowhere how can i form a team because i've been playing with these guys for last 3 years there was a chemistry there was a bonding friendship everything just shattered away there was mike gills he is a big bro to me we have been playing constantly for last 15 years so i told mike gills he will make a team and we will definitely do something then i contacted org started texting them uh, are you interested in sky sports are you making a team finally i got a team marcos gaming uh, they told me that you and mengels come in you make a team then we started scouting players but it was very difficult to be honest uh, there are not really good teams uh, or players right now to be honest because the three teams that are strong were seven seas godren and revenant their roster was already formed we picked rider zero cool and ghost we have never played against them We have never played with him. फिर भी हमने एक गैम्बल लिया हमने टीम फॉर्म किया हमने स्टार्ट खेलना किया फिर जैसे एक टैक का लैन आया हम बॉम्बे पहुंचे टैक का लैन आया हमने सेवन सीज को विदाउट प्रैक्टिस हारा दिया और हम इवेंट जीत गए तो उसमें कॉन्फिडेंस आ गया कि नहीं ये टीम लेके कुछ कर सकते any sport for that matter not just counter strike you can't give too much respect to your, to your opponent you can respect the fact that they are a good team you can respect the fact that maybe they have a couple of really good players and all of that but you can't walk into a game you can't enter the server thinking you're going to give them that respect you're going to play safe you need to just kind of take the bull by the horns so to speak and just take the fight to them and that's exactly what crazy gamer and uh, god's rain did yesterday मेरा ना हमेशा से एक पॉइंट ऑफ व्यू रहा है कि मैं ना कोई भी ओपोनेंट के सामने खेलूँ मतलब मैं अगर सी एस गो के बेस्ट टीम के सामने भी खेल लूँ ना तो मैं उनको त्रैश समझ के खेलूंगा मेरा एक मानना है कि जब तुमको लगता है ना कि ओपोनेंट अच्छा है और जब तुम रिस्पेक्ट देके खेलते हो तो तुम तुम्हारा नेचुरल गेम खेल ही नहीं सकते जब तुम डर के खेलते हो ना तो तुम खेल ही नहीं सकते गेम तो मेरे को लेजिट फर्क नहीं पड़ता तो मेरे को लगता है कि बाकी टीम्स को तो हम लोग से डरना ही चाहिए क्योंकि हम लोग के पास कुछ खोने के लिए है ही नहीं हम लोग वैसा गेम खेलते you know sounding a little cocky some people might say but i love it though those are fighting words honestly i want to see more from him today i wanted to walk into the grand final to just be like yeah it's going to be an easy to all again bangalore are you ready an indoor stadium in bangalore packed after pandemic and the worldwide audience looking at the action happening here
सबसे बेस्ट थिंग क्या है कि इन्होंने लैंड फाइनल्स बैंगलोर में रखा है और बैंगलोर हम लोग का होम ग्राउंड है क्योंकि गॉड्स एंड बैंगलोर की टीम है नंबर बैंगलोर इट डज मैटर आई लाइक टू शट दाउ रुक जा भाई रुक जा It started in internet cafes across the country in India, and obviously transferring into the online tournament, being played in the league format. You've got to play round robin. It's a very, very grueling task to have to play that many games, secure enough points to get here, and now it's all coming down to one best of three. Wow! SK Wow has fired up a dub. Four kills. What a start! It is Velociraptor in his hands. And he needs to rattle the kills quickly. Here's the first run out of ammo. Defuse is coming through the knife pulled. He's got it. He got him off the defuse, and there's no time. There's no time for this. The knife has done it. Surely at this point, oh, just about, just about the last tick on the defuse, and Revan secures it. He would need another one here from behind the cage. Will be the position of choice in crazy game. Right for the fire, right for the flames, and God's rain just like that. Flip it back in their favor. Bomb getting planted as well, and this is everything for Revenant Esports. Three v four, the retake is on, and it's looking good for Gump. Nice shot, but he's alone. He's alone in this world, and he is the only remaining player. And it will be God's rain taking the first map of the grand final. They are one away from calling themselves champions. Comes this mid fight, a couple of baiting switches being deployed for Revenant, and it's Gump that comes out on the double, but the kills are coming back. It's an absolute massacre inside of A main, and the bomb has actually made it out alive. It's gonna get that cool red room timing perfect for Finn. Well done. He's playing with a food right now, and unable to do nothing about this. Time is ticking on, and so on his chances of winning this round. Begin with slither of a chance right at the end, but not anymore. Finn closes it, and God's Rain will win the pistol on the second map of the grand final. Somewhat of a conversation around who is the better opper, who is that player in India that everybody should be getting behind and getting excited about. Is it fired up on his AWP or is it Revan? And I think throughout today it has been Revan that has yep. come out on top of that. And the shots from Revan, the hero for them steps up, the hometown hero delivering its tournament points for Dotre. Have to make something magical work with Hill Switch. He's gotta find the first crazy with the second before V3. Oh, crazy start, but it's all coming to a close. Months of Counter Strike. Starting with the WAN cafes into the online stage. God's Way and a team that no one predicted to win this competition. But the local heroes in Bangalore are just moments away from lifting the biggest trophy in Indian Counter Strike history. And for Revan, he will confirm his status as one of India's best. God's win have done it! Presenting to you officially your champions of Sky Sports Masters 2023. Give it up for God's Rain! Hello guys, this is the trophy that we have easily earned. We have to do some work for this. He said that we will kill him. He killed him and killed him. Thank you for the Welcome back to the Sky Esports Masters powered by AMD. Fours uh, seemingly not being able to stay composed enough throughout that game to be able to get the job done. But uh, we've had an extended break. Uh, Try to just get that washed out of everybody's brain and uh, get ready to go into map three. Yeah, but if you're big, you're feeling pretty happy the fact that you're able to pull that one off, right? Again, I want to take nothing away uh, from the side of, uh, of, of 
of big, considering what the deficit was. It was a 9-3 nine, nine, nine scoreline and a 2v4 I in the piston round. I don't want to have to relive this I, Yeah, I agree, I agree <laughs> with you. I, I just want to go straight into mount number 3 right now. Like, no more highlights. <laughs> Screw it. <laughs> we've, we've seen too much of this game. Fours, fours have hurt us. They've given us so much pain on the on the way that it just panned out. I, I, I have no hope the MVP is going to be. It's going to be Krimbo, and I think he did a great job. But I don't want to relive it again. It, yeah, it Krimbo just, did very well. He did very well. And I think Big overall just did very well to uh, kind of have the... Um, the mental fortitude to just you know hold on, being like, listen, guys, we're gonna bring this one back and squad it back one round at a time. But man, there's so many questions I have about fours on the CT side. Like, I know CT side hard, Anubis CT side hard. I get it, but fours made it so much harder for themselves. And even the rounds they won were like such crazy plays on these half buys. But yeah, in the end, big get it done, Dinko. And now we head to Nuke. Yes, we do head to Nuke. Uh, I think now I'm just going to favor Big to win the series. There is a war. I, I I would have agreed with you, but there is a, uh, there is one issue with this uh, with this Nuke though. Is the fact that Big. I'm just looking at the numbers. They've really played this map uh, often recently. Uh, fours have a 79% win rate in the past three months, with 19 maps played. They've been on the bit of a grind there on Nuke, and for Big, they've had two played in the past three months. One was in Cato. The other was in uh, uh, spring groups in, in last, and that was a while ago. Yeah, one more. Fair. They they lost one and won one. Yeah. What against heroic? Well, I just think it's uh, pretty difficult to beat a Krimbo playing this well. So he's 29 kills, 1.15 rating, really good stuff from Krimbo. He was given the opportunity in the second half to come back into the game, and he took his team hold. He hit it, it say, you know, he's got the Egyptian heritage it and does. Anubis, and yeah. he popped off. It popped off, man. Krimbo. We'll get to see his highlights now too. Uh, relive that and see all the action that Krimbo was able to present to us, and then we'll get into into Nuke. Actually, we're not going to see uh, what Krimbo's performance here. We're going to be taking a look at scoreboard instead. 16-14. We've got Big just about getting through it. That's a that's a traditional CSMR 15 scoreline. Yeah, I've seen it a couple of times already here today. And Krimbo is just a magnificent performance coming out from the from the young lad. 29 kills for him. The hero's delivery, and he was just such a problem for fours, especially towards A mains and an A bomb side, and just being a constant thorn, a massive javelin in their sides. And uh, yeah, for fours, uh, yeah, you look at his numbers, and you're like, yeah, you know, nice try, Shelfie, Stenix, and Kelly, and Seltern, and uh, and Co. But man, the CD side, uh, pretty grim, all things considered. Now we're gonna heading into Nuke. Um, was looking at the looking at some of the results that fours have had, and yes. Big have played two maps of Nuke in the past three months. Both the maps have been against Heroic. One in the Blast Spring groups and one in Cato. One which they won, one which they lost. And for the side of Forest, they've had, they're on a seven-map win streak on Nuke. Yeah, that's... Uh, but that's none of them are of a good high-caliber team. Yeah, so. well, Big would, uh, would be probably the highest caliber then if they were able to take this one. And we'll see if they can. Coming into this matchup, Sky Sports Masters action. Continue final map of the day. That is damn guaranteed. Well, it's also guaranteed is being faster, easier, and better with the 1xBet mobile application, which is waiting for you. Download and register right now, 1xBet, your sports bookmaker. As you head into the pistol here, four staring the T side, big on the CT side, getting ready to do battle once again. It's an alpha side fight for fours. They're going to be sending plenty of their forces over here, and taps and spotting it out to all drop back further into heaven. And Jason, see what a shot from him. That Stinnick's going down nice and easy. Kelly and also finding success. It's just like that, a flurry of kills draws us right back to even numbers. But Krimbo's had enough, and that's a sent from heaven to hell has resulted in big winning the pistol. Yeah, it's a great hold from out of JDC. Their fours at a fast play. Fast wrap towards heaven. JDC says no. Crazy how many fights were happening in so many different locations. <laughs> yeah. And also the, uh, yeah, the kill and happening. The observer to nightmare right there. Nuke, as much as you love it, can absolutely be a nightmare to observe. And which is why, you know, whenever, whenever someone asks me who are the real, true, unsung heroes in esports, and there are a lot of them, mind you. Like player managers, knowing some of the players, man, like, holy hell, they have to deal with quite a bit. And then as a talent manager, they have to deal with sometimes even more than that. And a production, and all these guys that stay, who come in like two or three hours before we show up like the you know, pretentious rock stars that we pretend to be. And then they do so much so much of work, but I think the observers especially. Uh, just such a good understanding of how... Oh, oh. 
don't want to lose any more players to just Glocks here, guys. There we go. Yeah, Process does very well. Now just Stinix left alone. He's on top of main roof. He will prolong the inevitable. His death will come in just a second. Give him it. Glock drops off. Krimbo with the headshot. 2-0 here for Big. Nice and easy quick start onto the CT side. Now I do see a world in which Big just rack up CT rounds and win this game pretty quickly, to be honest. Mm -hmm. But that world, we'll have to see if it comes through here because Fours are going to be going for the investments. Mac 10s, AKs. Not the prettiest to buys here, but they're going to go for it. Um, their economic decisions led them into a pretty deep hole uh, in the previous map. This one, they've less than cash left over. How do you feel about this buy, Blood? Like, you got two rifles, three SMGs. You leave them some cash left over, but it's not a full party. I'm okay with this. Oh! Especially with an upper boss, but JDC lost open a couple of these forward players. Majority of the kills were going Big's way, but again, once more, we find ourselves even. A 2v2, JDC still inside of the smoke. They've got to know he's close by because he got those initial kills. They haven't seen him, they haven't detected him, they haven't removed him from the round, and that bomb plant is secured. So all that extra money is now available to force in the next round regardless. So this buy is somewhat paid off already. And Stinix, close quarter combat with the MP9. It is rapid to kill and rapidly takes JDC out of contention, which puts it all on Crimbo, and we know he can clutch. We've seen this lag clutch a lot of rounds over the years. And he's got a chance with that grenade that's going to win it. Bang! And that's Perfect. Crimbo with the clutch. That's a huge play from JDC. Again, fast hit coming off of four was trying to use SMGs to afford a little bit of mobility. But JDC, through the hot push, couple of kills, and even the dink as well in the Salta. And big. Solid start here. 3 0. Oh. Of course, uh, four fours with the with the buy, with their loss bonus along with the bomb plant, gonna be a pretty solid buy. AK 47s, tiny utility, and now we got Sirson with a big zoomy. The big big zoom, zoom zoom, boom boom. Let's we'll see if he's able to make it work. Fours with that bomb plant secured themselves a very good AK purchase here with all the utility that they would want. They've gone for that what people call these days the twist smoke at main. And Tanir shot it. Searson has fallen. Outside smoke executors to be deployed in fours. Have players in garage already. Tabson, I don't think he's going to be ready for this. Tanir is so fast about this play around the backside and Tabson slapped on the ass and dead. It's now going to be five versus three and it feels like fours have got their first T round here. Unless well, there's something magical available for big. Pros is trying desperately to gain some control back. We're trying to go for the push towards HUT, but good work from uh, the HUT player. Ah, uh, great nade as well. Smoke providing no cover, and JDC and Krimbo. We're in a bit of a, a two-man excursion to try and find something, but the moment they get the, the side slots, they know this one's a done deal. JDC able to find Tanir. Tanir can rest easy. Job is done. 4v2 bomb planet, not much they can do from this position, and Force will find it first. Nice aggression coming out from uh, Tanir towards outside, catching that initial kill onto Wirt Searson, who had the AWP, crazy shot from him. And then catching Tapson as well, the aggression. Again, ruthless aggression, it just seems to be the uh, the name of the game for Force on a lot of the T sides, right? Yeah. Just like not giving too much of respect, making quite a bit of noise. And being a little bit unorthodox in how they're routing in some of these places. Yeah, Big really struggled to deal with that chaos, didn't they, on, on Anubis? Yes. We've seen a huge T-half be picked up by fours. It was 9-3 before it all went wrong for them. But it, it's, it seemed like Big just couldn't really deal with the sheer craziness of around the smokes. And uh, another scenario panning out almost identical to that of Anubis, where we just seen Tanir kind of getting through the smokes as soon as they pop. It makes the quickest timing to get in behind Tapson, and it was unconsidered. They didn't have anybody from heaven checking towards that, so Tapson was left focused outside and then gets wrapped around Garage. It's something they're going to have to address pretty quickly here, Big. Uh, otherwise, that could happen to them again. And it's going to be an outside play yet again here, and there is an adjustment for Tapson. He's going to play further back in Garage and see if they can spot them coming through the smokes. If they're bold enough to try it again, Tabson will be waiting. And they've got Krimbo switch up towards Secret, and Tabson, oh yes, a great adaptation. <laughs> Triple kill for Tabson. Absolutely rapid to kill. And now it's down to just two players here for fours. And JDC walks through that squeaky door smoke, catches Stinix looking the wrong way. And that is beautiful from Big. And fours just realizing that, Anna, the smoke can be, <laughs> the smoke can be, 
our friend. It can be the friend of Big as well. Huge triple kill from Tapson. And JDC as well just pushing in. Yeah, it's uh, a crazy... It's like a nice little detail there for Tapson to realize, okay, I got caught off by that play where they walked through the garage smoke in the last run, so I need to ad adapt it. And just that instant idea to change into the back of the garage that solves all the problems. Not only that, but he, he gets a triple kill from the one spot. Now, the question becomes, will Fours change up their play into the top site? Well, it looks like they are going to try and put Shelfie out there a little quicker. Because they set the precedent, they're willing to send multiple players outside. They can throw those smokes again. And two players are going to crew down secret. They're actually going to go with a bomb. And Process has opened things up with a kill on Shelfie. Three players make it down B. Is there any rotation from Big to Riz? Process waiting here already. A lot of damage done to Tanira. Not enough to take him out of the round, but Krimbo's up on top of the Raptors, watching the double door exit. It's quite the combo between Process and Krimbo, and it looks like the speed of fours isn't working as well as it was on Anubis. Big are handling it. Handling it very well as well. Salt up. Oh, yeah. well. Oh, fine JDC, but yeah, they know exactly where he is now. And he drops down into the vents. They can prime themselves and ready themselves for what is to come. And Seltzer would have to try and get into this beat bomb site. Deal with a player who's playing in from the cubby, which is Searson, and one up on rafters. Use the smoke to give himself a bit more cover, and it does feel like Seltzer is kind of prolonging the inevitable at the moment, but he is going to attempt this 1v3. We'll take a massive whiff from one of these forward players, uh, one of these big players, to even give him the shot. Swing open, deep on. Now our eyes fixated upon him. Instant kill from Searson. 5 to 1 for big. A really good CT start here. And Force is starting to get to that point where I'd like to see a timeout soon. Uh, money is in a uh, pretty precarious position here. Yeah, should be uh, maybe a couple of Mactons being purchased for Shelfie and Salto. A couple of Tech 9s, pistols being dropped for uh, Stenix. Yeah, there we go. Alright, okay. cape. Oh. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not going to say anything. Oh, that's uh, an investment. The AK-47 Hero AK Tech 9s. Uh, something Forza have tried to go with is just these unorthodox purchases, trying to be unpredictable. Not let uh, God be in and Tabs and get a read of that economy. I don't think anyone can have a read yeah, of that economy. No, not even Forza. And Seltzer, oh, it doesn't matter. There the we AK go. AK-47, <laughs> it, it works out very well. Taps and approaches, push. They think they can get aggressive. Well, they are punished for that. And now Big have to retake the A-bomb site if they want to go for it, or just save their three weapons. Either decision is respectable, and now there is no other option. Unless this kill from Seltzer sort of entices them to go for it, but they're kind of too far removed to think about it. So yeah. Safe call for big and four is, of course, in a round like this, make it work with the AK. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not even mad. Yeah. I mean, it's just to be expected from fours. It's kind of counter strike their plan at the moment. It's like normal logic would di would di would dictate that hey guys you know you have uh, some funds for Mac tens and a couple of pistols here fine you know work with that. So it's like I'm just gonna go for the AK and gets two kills rounds done. Yeah. Well, from the darkness of his room, Seltzer frags out for two. And now Big can focus up again because money is still good for the Germans. They can obviously buy into this again. And they're going to have a decent purchase here at K47s uh, on one player and then M4s on the rest, AWP for Searson. And you guys can have a smooth user experience with a quick registration using that QR code to download the 1xBet app. And we're ready to go into play yet again. 5 to 2. Forza's purchase is much better than that of the previous round. No AWP side to get for the T side. Krimbo getting himself in position outside of Secret nice and early, and uh, Tanir back to his old tricks, trying to make his way through the smoke. Opening kill of the round is found by JDC. Taps him with a big flick, won't be caught by Tanir being a pest in the smokes again. And just like that, immediately the response for Big is swift. They're up two players, and this push down into Searson has resulted in an easy kill from the AWP, but a stupid peek from Searson, and he is down and out. Two players left here for Force. Yeah, he just swung out a little too wide there. He's just gone for Wild, a Wild, not even having the bullet ready. Yeah, like... Uh, it was, the bolt was being pulled. Yeah, like 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 you're chambering the the round, but you just want to jiggle out. But instead, goes for a very very wide swing right there. But still, this one should be done. Four v two. JDC is very low though. But Tapson's position here, and he's been he's been good. Yeah, Tapson has been good. At, and, oh my God, Stenix, what a shot at range towards CT. And now we're just under a minute left in the clock. A kill on Searson and one on Tapson. This has reopened an opportunity, a sort of question that Fours may be able to answer if they go into the lower bomb site. The good thing for Vegas because Tapson did spot both players out. That's going to allow them to like just reposition sure. themselves.
there's a lot of utility available here for the Forge players. So they can smoke out some of the main choke points here. Double doors, decon, window. They have utility to deal with any players that are already down here for big. So it does seem very likely that they're going to get a bomb plant at a minimum. But the timing of process is absolutely perfect. Ooh. Spray isn't, but eventually gets the kill. And now Seltzer left in a 1v3. He is, uh, well, he was the player to win the round in the previous. He's got to do it again here in a more difficult fashion. 15 seconds remain on this clock. Bomb heads to the back of the bomb site, punching in those digits and getting punched in the face by JDC. So 6-2, big now sort of speed running their way through the CT half. Well handled. Great, great kill onto uh, Tapson there to a CT and a forklift. Actually. Yeah, definitely a sick kill on Tapson. He, I thought he was guaranteed at least one or two there, but somehow doesn't get it done. And AK-47 is still available to fours, but only on actually three players. Galil for Stenix and a Tech-9 for Tanir, so not the best purchase here for the side of fours. A little bit of utility though, so something we've learned but fly over the last few maps is fours can win with a little. Fours can win with virtually nothing. Nothing, actually, sometimes, but uh, this time to have something. Yeah, yeah. quick instant smokes. There's no variation in timings of the smokes from fours. It's always just out of spawn. You get those smokes down and instantly take yard. No mind games, just wanting to get into the fights as early as possible. And Tapson's been a bit of a nuisance for the attacking side of fours outside in these recent rounds. It might be Krimbo this time, though. No, aggression not paying off. Seltzer decapitates him, dropping down his shelf. He trades back instantly. Process steps up for big. And there's three plays left here for fours with a minute 10 left on the clock. Yeah, and now they know exactly what's happening here. They know they're two plays towards Ramp, and they know there was one outside. The seriously has got to find Tanir. Seltzer Ooh. dead now. And of course, Senate's now Kelly and left in a 1v4, one that he will not win. And he'll climb up ladder. Uh, he doesn't have the bomb. Yeah, that bomb not on his back, and obviously too many big players. I guess they might not know where he is, and that's an element of surprise that could perhaps work, work with him. But the issue is if he goes into the lobby, there's two players here that can almost immediately trade one another. Uh, JDC, the player with health. And Kelly and now clearing out below the ladder. The lobby, JDC spots him. Oh, the trade's not instant. In fact, if Kelly doesn't walk around the corner, Kelly stays alive with 30 seconds left. They know where he is inside of the bomb site. They know he hasn't got the bomb, and that's certainly a factor that'll help them feel confident in closing this. Once Searson detected, Kellyan's position now reconfirmed towards main, and he goes for the swing. Searson's ready, pulls the sidearm, and it's seven rounds for big. Keeping three alive as well. Money truly. Gold B's put the stick down. I mean, yeah, it's looking good right now. No need for a stick. Maybe that's what the extra 10 minute break was, you know? Gold B had to get his workout in. <laughs> Fulton makes it the thought series would be over in two rounds. Yeah, he's just, just like doing his uh, great Victorian school headmaster cosplay. Yeah. Squatting, slapping. <laughs> <laughs> Attack timeout. Dinko, you asked for it, and here we go from yeah, force. Yeah, I feel like they've needed it, and they've got an AK again purchased, and we know that one AK-47 and pistols around it is the winning recipe for fours on the T side. Although this T side is not finding anywhere near the same success or prowess that we've seen from them on Anubis, right? It's been a lot more of big just picking up strong victories. I think Tabson does a fantastic job at adapting outside, and since then he has just been kind of locking that off. But when you don't have outside, what, what do you have on Nuke? Your, your options are a lot more limited in that respect, and we haven't really seen them get through ramp room too often. So, yeah, Forge just picking up too many early casualties. Uh, so it is a solo AK-47, plenty of pistols around it, and let's see what they can muster out of this. It's Shelfie's turn with the Hero AK. See if he can kind of replicate the work of Selter. But I do think that previous round play was uh, not more Selter skill, but rather big offering up uh, two kills because they pushed through the Luke door. So instead it's ramp, Krimbo, ooh, needs to be careful, Molso goes down, taps to the opening fight, Krimbo readies and steadies himself for just one. Very close to a second kill, but overrun eventually. He can retrieve, but look at how low Selter is. Yeah, that process has already rotated down to lower though, and he's gonna go back very up. good in the control room, and he's going to detect it, no one's even pushing down here. So he can tell Big to stay focused on the upper bomb site. Get now. ready for the A plate. Searson having spotted the player towards ramp. They are aware of the possibility, but there's no one there. It's only JDC. He finds one, and knows pressure's going to be on. 
as Searson hasn't budged from that position and he's going to find two. The ramp push comes in as well and now <laughs> Cynic's options are very limited. Yeah, they're indeed. very limited and I think it's just going to be a easy kill for JDC, which it absolutely will be. Eight rounds for Big, at least at a minimum, confirming themselves an 8-4 half, which is pretty standard as Nuke will go. Uh, I think with the way they've been playing though, it's probably going to end up being more than that. There was uh, there was a world there if, if JDC doesn't win out that duel towards upper bomb side, there could have been a window for Foros to come back into that uh, round and get the bomb planted towards the upper bomb site. But yeah, well handled from big, nice reposition from JDC as well from CT vent to top of hut. Yeah, Franken output not good for Foros. The highest amount of kills they've got is five and that's on three plays near Salter and Stinix. Uh, really tough time from the team upper. Side, so it's a quick play into the upper bomb site. They bust through the door, they just get to the vent, but they're not committing just yet until that flash comes in and the second layer of flash is actually blind to near. So Tabson gets an easy kill, not pretty from fours, and you would imagine this is not going to be going anywhere. The vent dive is down, so once you get a player lower, Krimbo's watching for that, and uh, deals with Kellyan. So options are extremely limited here for And look at Searson. Yeah, Searson's already behind it. Easy kill right to the chest of Shelfie, Seltzer, and Stinnix locked in a 2v5 one. But again, it doesn't feel winnable for fours. This is harassment from Big. Yeah, I think they've just had enough. You know, it's uh, that that second map was a little ridiculous. They warmed up, they got the win, and once you give Big a chance, they are going to just slap you around here. And uh, this is probably the more expected result coming into today. I'm glad to see JDC warmed up, having a better performance. I think he'll be John DeCastro is back. Yeah, John DeCastro, the international, international man, man of mystery. mystery. <laughs> he's here. He's and the green room. And the green, it's back. He's got actual RGB lights yeah, changing. It's changing. great. Feels like every time we're on the cam, though, it's been green. But uh, JDC, uh, I think he would be very disappointed in his own performance from map one, and obviously being able to give him the opportunity to come back into the series and step up and look a lot stronger. It's fantastic to see that. Fours down on Khalil, though, on five players, Blay. You don't love to see that if you're fours. You would love an AK-47 in there at least, but their money has been terrible for most of this half. So everything points towards a 10-2 lead for Big. A little bit of tab set. Senpai, dead. Process trades instantly though. And it is actually quite interesting when Tabson goes down because he has been kind of the nuisance outside. He's yeah. been the strength of big. So when he dies, it does open up a chance now for fours. Their best chance in a while to actually win the round here. This is an interesting with Kelly and it's all the way towards heaven. No well, one's looking at it or no seriously? It's gonna be the it's gonna be the vents up here. Oh, but the timing seriously looks away. And because the teammate's fallen, it's going to be an easy couple of kills but here. But the rotation's forwards. so fast. Yeah, through hut. Process is coming in now. Krimbo's with him. That plant is coming through. It's locked in for fours. Down to a post plant situation. Big shot from Stinex out towards hut. It's just Krimbo left. A 1v3 for the young German to pull off. We call him a clutch master, but not this time. 9 3. Fours squeeze an extra right at the end there. We'll see if three is enough as they head to the CT side. i got to say their CT side on Anubis was absolutely terrible. So I don't know if they're going to be able to uh, pull this one off. It, it does feel like if Big win the pistol, they're going to be in a real strong position to close this one out. And Selter with his head and his hands, not too happy with that first half performance. Yeah, it, it was two things, right? Firstly, Big being super proactive on the CT side. You can see Tapson being such a thorn outside as well. But apart from that, for fours, uh, yeah. You pointed it out as well, right? Not, not much variation. Just a default. Uh, the uh, the diagonal smokes Almost coming no up variation. every single time. Yup, there was no real full fledged execute coming in as well towards upper bomb side. Yeah, two things as well. One X better running is uh, they turn your casual viewing experience into a whole new thing. Hell the yeah! High odds for tournament matches are mm -hmm. winning you on the One X Bet website and yeah. mobile app. So amen, brother. Yeah. And the pistol's about to kick off here in the second half. It's big nine three up. And a commitment down into lower for Tanir already. He breaks that window to try and fake it out, but he's been detected already. So that secret little move is not going to pay off for him. And Tanir must stand and fight with all his might. It's one headshot for Tanir. Ugh. Second, how is he alive? Big, how are you letting him do that? Oh, God, finally, Tanir is dealt with. The outside fight now will ensue. JDC and Tabson stepping up and Big come crashing down upon the forest defense. 10-3 now on the board. That was like deathmatch in two fronts. Yeah, it absolutely was. It was just fights all over the show. And God be, you can see a pat of reassurance on the Tabson. Thank you very much, Tabson, getting that pistol win. He hasn't got the rest of the boys in there, but... I do love watching, uh, you know, just Gobby's reactions on camera. It's so precious. Oh, uh, when you see him on a big land and the camera's on his face, and just seeing the emotions that he's going through, the roller coaster that you go on, the journey you are on with Gob uh, you almost feel bad for him at times. But <laughs> man's only 23 years old. 
<laughs> yep, such a such a young man. Started his career at the the bright age of two. <laughs> Even then, I actually think if we roll back 23 years, he's probably still playing Counter Strike. I think uh, maybe a little too early. I think it started like 2004, which is still like 20 years yeah, ago. Okay, yeah, yeah. Should be nice and easy here for big. Decent start. The risk nope. is the lobby front. Which does have no one upgraded weapon, but Trimbush handled it. That's a wild spread of aesthetics. Yep. 11 3. We'll get the last sort of legs that Fours will stand on here in the Sky Esports Masters. They'll be able to buy, show us something, have some weapons, but that's not coming until the next round. So it's about to be 12 to 3. There's a decision here. At fours like a force buy. They live by the name of their team. So they go for the force instead of playing for overtime. They go for this. And Blair, it does not look good. Yeah, it looks like the writing's pretty much on the wall here, like the graffiti in, the, in some of the older walls in Berlin. Yeah, the Berlin International Gamers come out in force. John DeCastro with that first on Shelfie. And that's going to be an easy opener. Kellyan stops the hot push, but Krimbo's instant there to the trade. The fact that Susan even gets a kill before Kellyan's able to even land a bullet on him. Yeah. And yeah, this one's done. Yeah, money's in the bin now, too, for fours. This is everything invested. Full investment, no money in the next. And, and I can't even blame them for going for this force fire, no, right? I can't allow Blink yeah. to get to 12 rounds this early on. Exactly. So you kind of have to, but it's never going to be a comfortable position. Big have come in the nuke and they've sped around the end of the day. Yeah, they're just like, have had enough. Like, let's just end this and they've done it in style. All right. Did you know Gob B is, was the first German CSGO player to sign a full contract? No, I didn't, but that's I, I now can believe it when you tell me the fact. Uh, He's been around for a very long time, even went out to North America yes. for a while with NRG. was with Tapson at that time, if you remember, and then they came back to big. Which is kind of what a wild yeah. timeline that was. They had Legia too, right? Yes, yeah. that is true. Uh, for, for me, Was it with Tapson or was it with Legia? I've, I've I think it was Legia, now yeah, that Legia, mentioned it. Not yeah, not Tapson, yeah. Tapson was Penta. Yes, that's another name I haven't heard in a while. And like speaking of like uh, Goppy, for me, my favorite, like for me, Goppy will always be the line of uh, the the part that Mouse puts line up uh, back in two thousand and nine. Yeah, uh, with six, right? With well. six, yeah. yeah. Rest in peace, what a legend. Yeah, oh, great to see his head up in the uh, obviously his poster up in the uh, Hall of Heroes in Katowice, memorialized him. We've got Seltzer getting that first kill on Tapson. This would be the most forward round to win, wouldn't it? You get pushed to the brink, you you bring pots and pans in the last round of play and step up and prolong your life on the server. Seriously decides to see if that to be the case. He gets that trade back. Avengers is falling in game leader. Krimbo with spray. Can't handle the MP9 push into the lobby. And it's now looking pretty decent here for Foys. They're up in players still, even though Process has got another kill. It's a three versus two with a minute, 10 seconds left on this clock for Big. Not a comfortable scenario, but Sirison and Process, they do have the possibility of turning this one into a victory. And that is going to be a free kill that draws the numbers right back to an equilibrium. There's another player floating around, both of them, in fact, towards lobby. Now the bomb on the back of Sirison. He's going to time this peak with process. This could actually work out for big. They could just close it out here. Yeah, Sirison's going into the lobby now, getting ever closer. Should be able to pick up something here, but Tanir's headshot rips apart Sirison, leading process into the 1v1. Has he got the right read? It doesn't look like it. He's going to put that bomb down in the middle of the site, but then it comes down to Stinnix. Where is he coming from? Hut absolutely headshot in for survive, and it's not over just yet. Not over till that fat lady sings. And she ain't singing yet. And singing quite yet. And that was a little unfortunate for Sirson there, right? If he if you'd seen both the players right there, Process would have had the read. He could potentially have tried to he would have known how to play the 1v1. But uh, nonetheless, Force, they survive for at the very least yet another round. Now is that gonna be enough though? I'm, I'm not sure. I'm not sure either. Yeah, it's gonna have to go up against another buy here. Oh big, the one X bet. Oh, it's on your screen, certainly favoring big heavily. Eleven to one chance here for Foyce to be able to pull this one off and, and win the, the map and therefore the series so another buy for big because they have money left over they've got an instant good purchase AWP and AK is out for the squad they got a great opportunity to try and close this one out now AWP for Sears and searching for that opener outside Foyce not offering the chance you can already see the differences in the play style of big they aren't doing those instant outside smokes yep it's about leaving your 
your opponent just guessing, wondering what the play is going to be. They do go for those outside smokes now, and, and Forge have pushed a couple of players into ramp. Mm -hmm. Very mobile of Forge, Shalfi, peppering through the smoke, trying to find something. Look at Krimbo. Oh, Krimbo, is he going to get a good timing here? <sighs> Nearly. He's going to fade away back into his own smoke. Yeah, he doesn't want to stick around there and take that fight. He lost against the MP9 in the previous round, so he doesn't want to have that same scenario play out again. We had one minute left on the clock. Big are going into lower. But because of that, because he made contact with Krimbo, it's going to draw one of the players from heaven. They're going to group up together and push towards the lobby here. It's going to give them a lot of information to work with. But in the meantime, a little bomb set, just one defender. That's oh, Denix. Krimbo. He's looking for that kill on Seltzer. Flash is going to go into the lobby. Krimbo is doing a great job of just being that trying uh, deterrence while the rest of his teammates go down into the lower bomb site. Even got one player lurking at red, taps up at the control room, looking to push the buttons to get big a victory here in the series and survive the lower bracket run against fours. 25 seconds. Yeah, limited time now at this point for B. They've got to go and take that final move, their final steps into Stinex, into Shelfie. Four stepping up, not dead yet. 15 seconds here, there's not much they can do. The lower bomb side's closer business. They can head on up to the upper bomb site, but still, no two seeders lying in way. There's no time remaining. Seven seconds, need to cross on over. He can probably oh, punch the numbers, time, but, yeah. but nah. It's the dead. Bomb plant's good, and at least gets more money to big, but yeah, not able to close it in that one. Yeah, that was big, just taking a little bit too long, and I, I do like the uh, the re-aggression coming out from Forrest, right? Not being content, just just sitting down and holding on to the uh, bomb side. If they went for the double ramp push towards lobby, giving the information, it's probably going to be uh, a lower bomb hit happening, and they had a perfect crossfire being set up, and also the player inside of Squeaky ensuring that the T's don't get a free entry back up fence into the upper bomb site. So, nice couple of rounds here for Force, and they finally managed to uh, kind of whittle away the economy here for a bit. Uh, have here AK-47 for process. Let's see, you can see how the money's equalized here, Dinko. This this makes sense when you have a hero AK. Yeah, it's uh, more balanced, more considered, more intelligent. The default smoke. Yeah, wall. but this guy should be detected because they have a player out uh, at secret already here for fours. So, so they're not going to fall for this. That's going to allow uh, fours to keep the majority of players. Over. This, this is so fast. Blinded. It's a quick play indeed here from Big, but it's well handled here for fours. It looks like they've dispatched of the attack from Big. 13, uh, 12, 6 rather, about to, to ring out. Krimbo's left at squeaky door. All of his teammates gone. And, you know, it is an expected result. You don't really anticipate the Hero AK to be too successful. And fours do find six, a bit of life to make the scoreline a bit more respectable. We'll not call it a comeback just yet, but uh, it's certainly the steps in the right direction. I, I, I did kind of like what uh, Big did there, you know, just running out of the bomb side before the utility fully landed kinda as well. Kind of catch them off guard. It, it could have actually worked out, but good awareness from the uh, the upper bomb side defenders. And as you pointed out as well, the fact that one of the players was tucked in on top of secret, giving the information that, yo, you know, there's no one outside. There's no need to rotate or over rotate rather. And it can just. Uh, Allowing them to keep the majority of the players on the upper bomb site. Here we go. Fire on back again for big. Six still required from fours with zero margin for error. Yeah, just vibing out with the uh, AKs now, big. Settling into this round. Utility's gonna trickle outside, smokes up, Molotov going in. But no one's committing with it outside apart from Taps. He needs to sell that the more questions out of them really is. Spam, you'll really try and disrupt it. He's pulled a grenade out of it, but it looks like Big wanna go for the pump into the top site. Seltzer with the re-smoke at Squeaky Door. Hampson outside with the rest still focused on this top bomb site. I don't know if it's been good enough from Bay to break through yet. Back to the ramp, they'll go instead. Taps dead outside. No utility. Big getting blocked out by the utility. Big have nowhere to go. 30 seconds left. So much utility left for fours, and they've used it perfectly. Fire has to go for the top side hit. Final breakthrough through the fire and flame. So much damage. Oh, 
Oh my goodness, two of you, two off the back of all of those fights somehow. The fast flank. Yeah, fast flank is good from Samir. I think this might be the move that could win them the round and keep forwards alive with those steps. He knows the process is trying. Oh, oh my god, he goes a little premature on that. His bullet shooting out just a bit too early. And now he's got a chance, Process, to win this map. It's just Stinex left alone to keep his team in the competition, to keep his team in Sky Esports Masters. As Process is stuck back in hut. This could be it. This could be the moment to end this the long plan, and labored though. series. But the plan ain't for him. Stinex on the stick. Process on the push. And Process will eliminate fours. Big will move forward in the lower bracket. They get that matchup versus their former teammate in Keto in the ranks of OG. And we'll get to see what Big can do later on in the tournament. But fours, that might have been the last time we see that roster play. Yeah, I mean, for uh, for the side of Big, it was labored on Anubis. It was painful and ancient. But they get it done very convincingly here on Nuke. And Matt Tanier, that's got to sting. Even though it's looking very unlikely, fours to mount that comeback. 2v2, they had no idea where he was. And just a couple of shots. I think a misclick from his mouse. or so maybe nerves coming into play. And Big are going to be very happy with that. They will survive. And now that OG rematch, Dinko, it looks like a ton of cards. Yeah, I'm looking forward to seeing how that is going to go. You know, Keto versus his old teammate, Sirius, was very happy, excited to play that matchup. So that's going to be a lot of fun. Um, I think both teams aren't in, like, their tip-top shape. So I think that's going to be a really close matchup between OG and Big. And we'll, uh, we'll have to see how it shakes out. But for fours, uh, you know, obviously coming into the event, we knew this was uh, a team that weren't going to be playing for the future. I think they did better than expected they beat ants in the opening game they get big they probably should have beat big actually today as well so uh, i think fours these players obviously have a future ahead in, in other teams they but, do uh we'll see how it pans out for them in the future yeah i don't i, don't, I agree with you when you say it. like i don't think we're going to be seeing this particular lineup be together for for very long right because obviously it's a bench lineup but it's standing coming in but yeah if you're looking at silver linings they could have 2 0 big, right? They 100% could have 2 0 big considering it was a 9-3 on, on Anubis and they were looking so much better on Ancient. Uh, but little few mistakes being made is easily things they could fix looking back at that uh, at that particular map. Uh, but individually speaking, you know, I, I won't lie. I've been pretty impressed with uh, with Stinix. I think he's been really sharp. You know, Kellyan's been really good as well. You can clearly see people like Seltzer and Shalfi we've been seeing for quite a while. There is absolutely individual talent on, on the players of his team. Uh, just that maybe this particular... Concoction. Mix. This concoction ain't, 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 ain't it, you know? Sometimes you need uh, you need the right ingredient and just may maybe they're missing one. I think they need an in-game leader that kind of structures them a little better. I think it was uh, unbridled chaos for a lot of that Anubis. Yeah, and, and, and even though you might find some short-term success on it, even though you might find success on it in the, in the Tier 2, Tier 2.5, 1.5 scene, uh, when you go up against a more structured, more well-regimented Tier 1 team, which is where you're looking to get to eventually, right? You're going to be falling short right there. So yeah, um, some harsh lessons learned, but uh, it is what it is. That's the way the cookie crumbles. Yeah, we're going to relive some of this uh, this action. Obviously, big will be the majority the highlights just winning most of the rounds available. Strong first half, and, and after the first half was over, it kind of felt like any rounds that four is one were just kind of superficial. And, you know, just basically making the scoreline look a little bit more respectable when you look back on HLTV, but overall this was big dominance in taps in. That was the moment for me that really turned the tides. When you made the adaptation outside, it was just simple to move. Just, but it, it's just they couldn't figure it out after that. Like taps in was just. They're the bane of their existence outside, and once you lose outside control, like you know, and 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 and, and, and and there and there are other avenues to to kind of like counter it, right? Like you know, you can probably go for some some more uh, secret plays. You can try and go for you know, just just isolating him, just smoking at garage, going for a fast drop to its mini, for example. It, there's so many avenues available, but it did look like. The T side was very limited, uh, cerebrally speaking, which is very surprising because I was pointing out the numbers. They've they played this about 19 times in three months. Yeah, 19 times. Uh, well, that win streak has come to a close here for fours. They are out on Nuke. They are out of Sky Esports Masters. And we get to see this this like unbelievably strong CT side from Big. Fours just didn't have any answers on T side at all. Yeah. Uh, this, the good thing here for Big is when they were starting to look good, they were looking really good, right? Like yeah. the, the the second Everyone half, was the second half of Anubis looked really solid, and the once they got the momentum rolling, it just didn't seem to JC stop. JC having a good map, obviously, was really helpful. He's uh, he's going to be the MVP of this map, absolutely. So, um, you know, when you compare that to his performance on Ancient, which was really bad by his standard, he was losing most of the fights he was taking, and uh, really struggling. Here on Nuke, uh, again, if we see that JDC throughout this competition, that's the JDC where 
I think it's a great move to get him into the team. The pieces are there. Like you said, JDC over here, I talked about Krimbo on the, on the T side towards an A-bomb side uh, on Anubis, where he was just so important in the comeback being uh, being built up, built back up by, by Big, right? Uh, but I'm looking at I'm, I'm looking at Process primarily, who's uh, a little too hit or miss for my liking personally, and, and, and I know he's got a skill set, we've seen him pull up some very uh, huge rounds as well for his team, but I do want to give a shout out to Tapson. Uh, I think he was, despite the fact that some of his star players were a little hit or miss, Tapson did step up to the plate. Yeah, Tapson a really good game, even in that loss on Ancient, man, it was like 25 kills on the board, so... Yeah. Definitely a very, very good, strong, a brave heart, bragging in-game leader that's just kept it up for years. Longevity is the name of the game for Tapson. Yeah, indeed it is. And then you look at some of the, the veterans behind the team as well, talking with people like Gobby, for example. It's a lot of veterans in his team to help foster some of the young blood, like we see over here. Young John DeCastro, international man of mystery, absolutely demolishing the side of Forza on that new game and he was just everywhere he, yeah. he was such a nuisance for them yeah he deserves the standout player presented by 1x bad he's uh, 1.44 rating JDC really good to see him on this team and uh, if he can have performances like that obviously I think over time they're going to be more comfortable figuring out what system they want to go with what roles they want to give these players I think JDC is going to be a, become a big part of this team but the problem was he was he did have these maps and Maus if you remember too like when he's playing with the Maus main team he yeah. would have these really good maps but he would also go missing at times mm -hmm. and that can't afford to be the same case here in Big. This is his second chance. Yeah, um, I, I, I will say, like, you know, obviously when it came to the mouse lineup, you're looking at some of the names they had in the team, right? Uh, you have someone like Frozen, for example, in the team. Uh, obviously, the, the roles weren't necessarily, I guess, ideal for someone like him. Uh, and I feel like the way he's playing here on the, on Big, uh, considering he's one of the bigger names we've picked up here, I think it's going to set him up for more success, so to speak, which is why we are seeing him delivering more consistent, high-fragging numbers coming out from... Uh, from the young German. So yeah, um, I had my initial doubts coming in for big, you know, in this tournament as to like how shaky they look sometimes. And I will still have maintain my doubts the fact that they seem to be, uh, weirdly enough, very momentum based, right? Once it woke up in Anubis, they kept that ball rolling into to Nuke as well. But I go back to the first game they had against Bedroom, for example, where they had a stellar first map. And once things started looking bad, it just spiraled, just kept spiraling. And you could see if they don't, if they're not able to get off to a good start to a half, it's very hard for them to recover from it. Yeah. Well, here's the scores in the doors. 13-6 victory for Big. JDC topping the charts. You see that. Uh, Krimbo obviously having a very good performance right in behind him. 17 kills here. Dad's good team effort across the board. For fours, not so much. Tanir had a moment here and there, but uh, none of the fragging output on that T side. It left them struggling on the second half to find enough momentum, enough space to really build back into the game. But uh, Big will be happy to get through fours. They should be getting through fours. It wasn't the most convincing victory today, but it's a victory nonetheless. And I think if they go up against Aurora and they play the way they did today, if like Big can get through OG, for example, yeah. I just don't think they beat them. And I don't even know if they beat OG with the way they played today. Yeah, I agree. Uh, I, I just feel like we need to see more of Nuke big on all the maps, right? It, it just looks like the map will right now, it's while it seems to be on paper pretty pretty broad, it doesn't seem to be very deep, if that makes sense. It can play a lot of maps, but like look at the Ancient, for example, how flat it was. Anubis, their first half as well. So hopefully, especially a map like Anubis, which is supposed to be their, their home ground, their... their the strong fort, so to speak, and the fact that their first half, the CD side, was so non-existent, you can't afford to have that. And when you have that against fours, who play more chaos counter-strike, so to speak, and they go up against a more structured team, uh, like an Aurora, for example, or even an OG, for that matter, things can be a little grim. But grim. But I, but I do foresee, honestly, like if everything plays out the way it should be, it could be an Aurora big finals here. We have a wonderful chance to speak to John DeCastro, international man of mystery, Hell yeah. Sam on the sidelines for an interview. Hello, welcome to the post-game interview. I have JDC after a very big game. Big have made it through the lower bracket semi-finals that we'll be having very soon. How are you feeling, JDC, after winning? I'm feeling very good. It's been a very close game, but uh, very enjoyable to finish it off on a win. So I'm very happy right now. Wonderful to hear that. Now, I want to go back to the first map. You had all of it in control. Uh, but that fell out of your hands, you lost it. But then coming into the second map, it was Force who had in control, side switch, then you guys came back through, but it still got pushed to overtime. What was the feeling then at the boot camp while the players were playing and how was it for you? Well, I think first map definitely, we, we were playing very well, uh, but uh, I think I had a bad T side and we just kind of let it slip a bit, which can happen, it's just whatever. 
uh, mentally we were there always on all the three maps. I think we had very good uh, yeah, mental game today and we stayed calm even though we were losing. Uh, and we just kept believing. I think second map uh, we just had a, a tough uh, city side. Which mm -hmm. I think as well came down a bit to me having a tough start again on that map. You know, I was not playing well. Yeah. But uh, the team uh, really powered through and gave me confidence so I can recover. So I think, uh, yeah, we just came back into the flow. I mean, I think that comeback was so close to going into another overtime. Tell me about that. You decided to stick it and you didn't have a kid. 10 second defuse. You got spammed. You're about to get taken down. Yeah, uh, I think it was very cl uh, close clutch, you know, and in those m moments you don't really uh, think anymore. You just play on intuition and my feeling was just like, okay, I have to defuse and no matter what happens, happens, you know. If it's overtime again, whatever, we just win and if it's not, then I have that uh, lucky 10 seconds defuse, I would say, you know, very nice. <laughs> we call JDC was knife repellent for that. That's how it went for us. Now, coming to the last game, you were the MVP. How does it feel from going not having a great start, but you kept the mental, but now becoming the MVP, how does it feel? It uh, feels very good. Um, I think I, I need to perform to this level. This is at least what I uh, hold myself to, the standards at least. Uh, not having a good game is, sometimes it just happens, you know, that's CS. Yeah. But uh, finishing off strong is good for the mental. And I, I felt like I really helped my team out, which is what I want to do. So overall, uh, it's a great feeling, but uh, the team today is the MVP, even though I played very well on Nuke. The team made it possible because we powered through to the first two maps and I'm just very grateful that I'm in the position to be where I am at right now. Yeah, even Tapson had some insane uh, games and rounds. It was wonderful to see him even calling shot. Now, coming to the last one, your opponents are known right now, OG. They had a similar game today where they were able to clutch it. Just like how you ended the game in the last map, their second map was also, they were able to close it off easy. So, what do you yeah. think about your chances now going at? You still have two more games if you win tomorrow. Yeah, I think we just have to play, you know, just grind it out. Uh, I think confidence is pretty high on our camp, even though we are playing a lot of closed maps, you know, maybe we even lost to Bedroom, right? Mm -hmm. But I think uh, our mental is pretty good right now, and we're just trying to improve day by day and learn from all the mistakes we do in the in the games right now, in the officials. So I would say we will play our game tomorrow, full focus on what we do, and we I'm, I'm pretty confident we can beat OG. We're looking forward to seeing you in action tomorrow as well. All the best for that, JDC. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you very much, my man. Appreciate Thank you. you. Thank you very Thank much. You. All the best. Oh, it was great to hear from JDC. It was very articulate. And uh, yeah, another good interview from, from Lucifer, getting a little insight into the, the mentality of the defuse. Yeah, like, uh, and, and I agree with him, right? At that point in time, when you have no kid, it just, uh, you either stick it, and if you get it, you, you can pull off a great ninja, or not, not technically a ninja, but a great full stick. Defuse, a full stick, yeah. Right underneath the, the nose of your opponent, or it gets you over time, you can still bring it out. So, uh, also good to know that, you know, they, they also realize that they are. Uh, kind of like in a flow of getting better yeah. and better, and that's what the uh, the final aim is. And also looking confident well, against they OG. They need to be at their best to be OG, don't they? Through this lower bracket run, yeah. so big versus OG, Aurora versus Betboom. That awaits us tomorrow. I'm looking forward to seeing those uh, those two matches. I think OG and Big. That's gonna be a real barn burner. I actually think, and and obviously the Warner bracket final is obviously huge as well. Aurora versus Betboom regional matchup. We also have. That third game later today too, uh, which is going to be that lower bracket final. Yeah, it's going to be opening up, starting things off with the elimination game, right? The big OG game that should absolutely be a bond burner. But I think every game tomorrow is going to be crazy, right? Aurora, Bed Boom, uh, as well. You want to get that win. You want to just have a little bit of an off time to play, uh, to take some time off to play the to uh, wait for the grand finals, and of course, the final game of the day, as I pointed out, is going to be the winner of the OG big game versus the loser for Roar and Bed Boom to decide who's going to be playing in the best of five grand finals on Sunday, Dinko. Best of five grand finals for that digital trophy spinning around. A beautiful trophy it is as well. But uh, looking forward to that. I'm sure we can take a look at the schedule even or uh, have a look at, at how things are going to uh, shape up because, you know, we look at the, the matches tomorrow. Three best of three is quite intense. One of the teams going to have to play two games. Yeah, you don't want to do that. No, you know how you can avoid that? By winning? By winning your first game. Ding, ding, ding. Right there. You win your first game. You win the grand finals. It's sitting pretty. You're, watch you're watching You're watching. your opponents and you're preparing for it. Yep. You lose it. You maybe have like a, a half an hour break and then you have to play in the best of three. Well, we are done for the day, ladies and gentlemen. Sky Sports Masters comes to its close for another day, but tomorrow plenty of action. The most action we've had so far. Three best of threes await you. So we'll see you guys tomorrow a little earlier. 2 p.m., I believe, CST. We're going to start around that time. So I don't know thereabouts. Yeah, yeah something like that. We'll see you guys then. Yeah.